I think that may have been West Point. And if it is West Point, that isn't a good place to start at all. All right, we're in a trailer. I've actually found the trailers to not be a bad place to start at all these days. Like, they seem to just universally have okay loot. Minced meat, all right, sure. Now, problem is, I don't want to use the microwave because it's louder than hell. Think of the follow, Evizzy. Welcome to the stream. And if I mispronounce that, just let me know and I'll make the adjustment. Um, you know, that I say your name right, sorry. All you zombies see nothing, alright? There's nothing happening here. I do not want to get pushed while well, we're gone. Yeah, because we've already got three on us. By the time we do anything, there's going to be more. Okay, so where do we think we are? Um, I'm hoping we are, I don't remember the name of the town, but it's kind of in the, the west of center. That there's a group of trailers that are kind of nice. It feels like that area. Because that might not be a bad place to start, because while well, trailers, again, kind of suck. Uh, there's no, like, the windows are all exposed, but. Got a hydrate? I can do a hydrate. And I'm in good posture at the moment, so thank you for the check. Or I guess I should rephrase that. I'm not in bad posture at the moment. Alright, so that minced meat is probably going to end up spoiling in our pocket, but that's fine. So if this is where I think it is, there should be, um, it should make a loop. Uh, there'll be an entrance to the north and the east. And if that's the case, then what we do is we back out of this place, get ourselves away from the zombies, and then we might be able to push ourselves back in and start taking it. Because while there is a lot of zombies here, once these zombies bunch up, we're going to have a lot better chance of sneaking around them a bit more. And then we can poke our nose into one trailer, get a bunch of stuff, poke our nose into the next trailer, you get the idea. Alright, we do have the exit to the east, which I thought. The catch is there's quite a few trailers, so it's sometimes tricky to know where you are. Ooh, that's not where I think I am. Where I think I am doesn't have something there. Alright. So we don't know where we are. Yep. Typical. Zombies just doing zombie things. I feel like that's going into town. This is trouble. It is. It is right that we are. Dixie Mobile Homes. But what part are we in? Oh, I remember this. There's the bathroom. Um, I don't remember what that building is, but there's a couple cargo units here which will be full of weapons. <laughs> Holy crap, that population is much higher than I remember it being. That's fine.
Okay, so I believe... Yeah, so they're gonna start bunching up like this. And then they'll split off into groups of like 12 or 18 or so. Um, I think we're gonna need more to push into the Dixie Mobile Homes area. Because that's denser than I remember it. But I also know since they made the adjustments, I don't think we've been there. So it looks like they may have upped the density of zombies here, which would make sense because I did mention the loot in the mobile homes is actually pretty solid. Like, each one's okay-ish, but there's a whole lot of them, so it's like breaking into a bunch of individual, like, houses one after the other. Terrible for books, but for, like, weapons that you'd find in a kitchen and food and water and stuff like that, pretty good. Yeah, so step one for us is, did we find water? I don't believe we did. So I've got an apple that'll give us a tiny bit of thirst. But that's it. I was trying to pop the trunk, see if there's food in there or water in there, and if there was, we could spin back for it. That van looks like it's in really good shape. All right, we're going to maneuver down here, let them follow, maneuver up here, switch back, and go along the top and be safe. The problem we have right now is we basically don't have water. Like, food are okay for a little bit with that bread, but water, we're fresh out. So we're going to stroll until we see, I believe, like a farmyard or something like that. Try and break in, see if we can't solve some problems, and then we'll have to start clearing zombies. Um, looks like the trailer park might be a bust because of zombie density. Um, we could always go, if, if we're able to walk, because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, where we're at is west of center. And if that is the case, maybe we just go all the way west and try and hit the, um, the far west. It's not a truck stop, but just the, the regular stop there. And then come in from that towards the west side of Riverside. And start clearing up that area, like leapfrogging between the houses and the farms and all that. That could be tricky because Riverside normally is only a medium pop area, but medium pop and 16 times zombies is still a lot of zombies. So my fear is we won't have enough food tools in that from the, uh, the stop alone, but we'll see. At the moment, we're just being unceremoniously evicted, so... We just keep walking up the road till we find something. But uh, that way, it would solve our water problem because we can just drink directly from the river. So that would solve water, and then we just have to solve food. Potentially, if things get really rough, we could just fish. It wouldn't be good for our weight loss, but... Survival first, fitness second. I mean, honestly, as many zombies as we're going to kill, we're probably ending up going to be able to deal with even eating fish. And still losing weight. Alright, I got an off-road. There's not a mailbox right at, so it's not obviously buildings. I'm still seeing a lot of zombies, so I think we keep going. We do not want to go to Muldrow, so that makes me incorrect that we're on the west center, because Muldrow is not far west. Um, oh, I think I know where we are, so we're probably going to want to turn north.
because I believe north will take us up the um, the east side of Riverside or west side of West Point. Um, there is a cabin in the woods on a lake at uh, West Point, and potentially we might be able to set up shop there because we could fish. There would be the lake there for water, but it would mean a very tedious walk until we can get a car, and the likelihood of us getting a car, a generator, and the magazine before we're halfway through River or West Point would be pretty low. Um, I almost certainly would have to fall back onto crafted weapons, which would be, which would be pretty rough. But that is an option. Uh, getting our weight solved would be terrible in that circumstance. But hey, hey, Merry Christmas to you as well, Xmad. Yeah, because West Point would be a very difficult one to start with because that is one of the highest density zombie places. I also don't believe East Riverside is a particularly great place to push into either. We got some cop cars. They don't look like they are wrecks, though. Bunch of bodies added as well. I'm gonna see if we can't poke our nose into the trunks real fast in the walk by. Like, if we see something good, we'll loop back and try and grab it. If not, we'll leave it alone. Uh, that's pretty good. I didn't feed, see food. Oh, those actually work. Okay. Alright, so it's good to know that we got some guns and stuff there. I can't really put that to use just like the police vest I probably could, but I just saw guns and ammo. So that's something to note to self, return later kind of thing. Because right now... The water is the problem. I failed to get both those in the walk by. Hey, Fox Ma Murray Kismas to you too. Ooh, do we take the dirt road? The dirt road might mean death. But I do know we absolutely do not want to go to Muldrow because that is a bad time. I am having a lovely day. We're just going for a nice leisurely stroll through the woods uh, with a collection of fans. They're a little grabby, you gotta watch it. They, they just, they really don't have that consent thing down yet. I would say they're trying, but I, let's, I don't, I don't think they are. Okay, dirt path is looking very promising for low zombie count. Let's hope it actually leads to literally anything meaningful. All right. I'm just going to cut across here because there's more dirt path. I'm, I'm going with the we're aiming west. Because this should be a good way to ditch some zombies right here, crisscrossing through the trees. And again, the trick is you want to zigzag through the trees so that where you have that cone where you cannot see behind you, put as many zombies as you can in that cone. Uh, no, the maps are not randomly generated. Um, let's see if I can actually do this. Okay, but if you look, so we have this big giant map. Uh, we have walked almost for a day on our character, and this is all the farther we've got. And this map does absolutely go all the way from this end, all the way to that end. There are chunks like up here that don't have anything, and there's a spot down here that doesn't have anything. But to give you an idea, the map is absolutely ridiculously large. So while it's not randomly generated, there is enough of it, it will take you a long time to figure out the map. Um, on the plus side, though, while the buildings aren't randomly generated, what you find inside of them can be. 
there are events so you can find like where someone was having like a bachelor or bachelorette party that kind of thing um you can find where a house has been like burned down as opposed to the like, next time you play you go there and it might be perfectly fine so even though it's not randomly generated there is variance that you'll have between runs and then the loot is randomized like there's there's loot tables but when you open a box it's not like you can go oh this is the box i find the gun in it's no it's a box one time i found a gun in it maybe this time it'll have no weapons maybe you'll have a cooking pot maybe you'll have some canned goods this time so there, there is lots of randomization but the map is handcrafted That said, there are mods that change parts of the map. So if you do get to the point where you're like, ah, this map's getting stale, which I'm at like 800 hours in, and I feel like nowhere even close to feeling like the map's stale yet, but maybe your mileage varies. You can mod it and say, okay, where there's this big forest, well, now there's this other city. Or where there's this one city, well, now there's a different place there. Oh, yeah. See, and I know people get like really upset about that. I'm I shouldn't check this, but I'm gonna. Cuz to me this is distinctly a path into the woods, which probably has a cabin in it, which I'm really hoping has water, and if not, we might be Mm, I'm feeling less convinced it's a distinct path okay we're just gonna go because what water is my problem and if there isn't like a well or a sink well there's usually a sink at the log cabins but if it's already out of water kind of thing like the water shut off that could be problematic but i know that's a frustration point if you have like a particular place that says oh i'm going to go and use this bait shop as my home base it's one of my favorite places or i'm going to use this bar as my base i really like this and then you get there and the whole thing's burned to the ground and you're like okay I know that upsets people. I'm like, also, I like that because it's like, all right, well, I guess, I guess I'm finding somewhere else to live this round. And that's, or, and that has led me as well as the random spawn mod to setting up shop in totally different areas. And so you learn entirely different ways to do it. Because like West Riverside is easily one of my favorite places to set up shop for a base. I think for this run, my permanent base should be somewhere center map. And by that I mean actually like north center map. Oh no, this is the dead end with the two trailers, isn't it? Grr. We're walking through the woods. It's not a good idea, but... I am not walking all the way back to find another route. But as I recall, there are two trailers up here. Um, and I'm just going to keep going northwest, and we just hope we won't don't die in the woods. Yes, we just started this run. Uh, to our name, we have a loaf of bread, some meat that's going to go bad, and some vitamins, and a kitchen knife. Um, so the last main character that I actually made progress on, I died really dumbly. Um, I turned to grab a drink that was going to take me all of like 10 seconds to grab and we were sitting down and a zombie just was ready the very moment I turned my well I can't open that door safely because the zombies are right there so we're just going to check the next trailer and let them bust down that door but uh so yeah so I heard the zombie I went to turn real fast to get back up but we were just a little too slow So we died for that character having killed thousands of zombies in the most disappointing way possible. I was pretty annoyed with myself for that death. I'm also annoyed that that fridge just doesn't have food in it. Yep. Laurel died to player dumb. We, uh, we felt we were a little bit safer than we actually were, and we were punished for it.
There's no food at all. Okay, well, I'm not willing to, uh... Yep, exclamation mark, rip. We'll get you that command. It is super disappointing. Oh, if we're wearing just regular shoes... All right, hang on. Give me them sneaky sneaks. Get rid of the socks. They make us hot and sweaty for no protection. Get rid of the shoes. They're literally worthless to us right now. We got our sneaker sneaks. But yeah, that was super frustrating. And partly to blame for that was we had just found a van that we got the keys for out of the grass. It was just a hair below a full tank of gas. We had located a generator we just needed to pick up. We had already read the magazine. We had cleared out the area around the gas station and we're like, sweet. We're ready to start building our base. So I walked up to the gas station. I opened the door, house alarm. Which, because we had a helicopter not too far earlier that we drug the zombies not quite out of range of that alarm, what ended up happening was it dumped all of those zombies on, which set us back three or four full days to being able to even start the base. So I was trying to, like, kind of not rush, but I was, like, motivated to be like, I want to get to the point where we're doing our... Hey, thank you so much for the raid, uh, Dracia Morganson. If I mispronounce that, please let me know, as well as Ask uh, Askanova. Thank you so much for hopping in. Um, I will do a shout-out for that. I think we are safe, and if not, I'm going to regret this. So, uh, Dracia was also playing Project Zomboid. <coughs> uh, how was your stream, and how was your Project Zomboid runs going? I hope the only deaths were that of the zombies. And if not, I hope the deaths were at least fun and entertaining. Or at least that you were learning from your deaths. Because death is a normal part of the game, but one hopes to learn to avoid repeating them as best we can. Yep, brand new run. Uh, we are playing 16 times population, so the absolute maximum that Project Zomboid supports without modding. Uh, so we started in the Dixie Trailer Park because, uh, you know, I use Rip Pillow's random spawn. So we managed to loot a trailer, and then we got unceremoniously evicted. And then I walked into a dead end with two trailers. And rather than backtracking to certain death towards Muldrow, we we're just wandering northwest in the vagueish direction of our site. <laughs> yep. Yep, 444 is 16 times pop, and you go, but wait, that math doesn't work out. Uh, it's because peak and initial pop do not stack, so it's just four times four. The initial and peak just decide whether you get more zombies now or later. And by setting them both, you get them now. Karagum just subscribed. Hey, and we got a gifted sub from Bartek123996 for Karagum. Congrats on your gifty sub. Uh, whether you want the emotes or not, you now have them. And no problem for the shout out. Thank you for the raid. I saw your question earlier, but I get distracted with that uh, that gifty sub. Let me see what you said. I am doing good. Just finished up with the uh, the holiday stuff with the family, so got home, got a stream going. But yeah. Um, as far as these forests, yes. So it's not relevant at the moment because it's daytime, but um, <laughs> the people who frequent my channel will, under, or will know that one of the things I do is I have the, uh, the there's a filter on OBS that increases the gamma about 15, 20%. So that way as I'm wandering around in the dark and it's terrifying, you all can see what's going on. Meanwhile, I see near pitch blackness and everything is fear and terror because I can hear the zombies, and you'll often see me turning around frantically trying to figure out what direction it's coming from. Oh, so these uh, these animated emotes, they're nothing special. There's um, When you go to the animated emotes section of Twitch, if you act like you're uploading it, they actually have some, like, pre-put things where you can say, okay, I want to make it slide. 
and it's just I have a regular emote that I slid. Yeah, for, uh, well, I mean, 2 a.m. is morning in Europe. Versus me, it's 8 p.m., 9 p.m.? 8.30. 8.30. My wife has corrected me because, ah, it's way over there on the far right. Because my main screen doesn't have it. I used to have um, my old phone. I need to change settings my old or my new phone so I can just see what time it is at a glance because the screen blacks out. All right, we got an opening over here. I normally don't like wandering randomly through the woods because when you're at 16x pops, sometimes you just walk into the woods and for whatever reason, there's just hundreds of zombies everywhere and you don't understand why. Um, so it just, it can get super sketchy. Weird. It could be, I'm assuming you, well, you'd have to have affiliate to have emotes at all. Like, they don't, they don't do that until you hit affiliate, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but if you have the... What's the word I'm looking for? If you have enough sub points, whatever, where you have the, uh, the animated option, which is its own thing. Like, you'll have, like, you know, five regular emotes, and then you'll have, you know, three animated, whatever your breakdown is, it's, it changes based on your sub points. You can go to the animated ones, it'll be like upload, and then there'll be a second option. So yeah. Hey, Dr. Krieger. Merry Christmas to you as well. It could be, because some of the forests I've had problems with, like there is a forest northeast of Rosewood where we actually had one of our runs end because... I was like, all right, we're going to have a helicopter coming. I'm going to go in advance because we saw it on the radio before it actually showed up. I'm going to go in advance and we going to take all these zombies to the east because that way we've been clearing in this whole town over here on the west. If I drag them all to the east, it'll draw some of the zombies out of the area we're clearing and it won't draw new zombies into that area. So that's what I want to do. So I started going into these woods and just going, why are there zombies everywhere? And the correct choice at that point would have been, okay, you know, abort plan, this plan isn't working out the way we want. Uh, instead, I just committed to it till the helicopter showed up. Then we had all of these ridiculous number of zombies in the forest with us. Um, and I still almost made it through it, but there was a single zombie next to a tree that, like, I looked down for a second, it's like, I probably should run. And I hesitated for, like, just a second. I mean, like, a fraction of a second, but it's just, you know, I hesitate just enough that the zombie got a hold of us and with that many zombies around, you get that first hit, and even if I would have been fine from the first hit, the other, like, 30 pile on top of you and get their hits in, and, you know, it's just... When you have a horde on your tail, you can't you can't get hit at all. It just goes downhill the moment that happens, because, like, it'll hit you in the leg, and then suddenly your guy's limping, and you're like, well, now I can't get away. Interesting. I don't, I don't have to tell you because, yeah, that's, that's weird. Because all I can tell you is mine, it's just like right above where I have the still emotes. Um, I assume you already have still emotes uploaded, like you're not trying to skip directly to anime, because it could be that they want to see some still emotes go there, people use them before it opens up. Because when I first got Affiliate, like, I, I don't even know if we had animated emote slots at that point. But I got some still ones there, and there's a couple that people use quite a bit. I don't know where this road's going, but I'm just going with it's a, a gravel road. There's a good chance it's taking me to something. Because I know we're, um... I'm actually going to bring up the map. Oh no, we're still, like, center center, okay. I thought we were farther west than this. Um, I'm quickly... De we're circling back. Because um, I kind of want to keep going west. Because the reason I don't want to go this way is this way is towards West Point. Um, and with a half-broken rolling pin and a kitchen knife to my, my supply of weapons, 
if I go to West Point, I'm simply going to run out of weapons before I get any type of foothold, get pushed out of town, and then we're just going to dehydrate to death out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe we can starve to death instead if I can get to the river and start drinking from the river. For those new to the game or who just haven't heard this, because a lot of us didn't hear for it, from it forever and ever. Gotcha. Yep, I mean, I would offer to give you some pointers of that, but I have no idea to help you one way or the other, so... That is, that is a Twitch problem that you'll have to take up with Twitch, unfortunately. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the correct choice, because there's farm right here, which means there's going to be a farmhouse around here somewhere, which means possibility for water, possibility for food. Because <coughs> while if things get really desperate, I will eat a pile of raw meat. I really don't want to because food poisoning is a bad time. But what it was saying is um, a lot of people don't realize you go up to any body of water that is, you know, a lake... I, I gotta I gotta dig them up, but yeah, I would eat worms too. I mean, when you're starving, you do what you gotta do. But uh, when you look at like lakes, rivers, that kind of thing, and you put your mouth where it says, "Hey, this is tainted water. Don't drink this. It'll get you sick." Um, last I checked, which has been since the multiplayer update dropped, as long as you're going directly from the source of water. That is, you're not putting into a bottle, you're not putting into a bowl, you're not putting into a cooking pot, you just literally are right-clicking on the lake and saying drink. It is actually safe. And we've, we've had many people test that. Now granted, it is possible that someday they just update that. They'd kill half the Z Project Zomboid community who lives out in the wilderness because they just do that. But, for the time being, it's still safe. So that is one good reason why, if you don't have bottles and all that, just find a fresh body of water. Hopefully find this farmhouse soon. Because uh, our water is going to start being a problem in not too long. And that's also the reason I'm not running. Is because as we run, we get hotter. As we get hotter, we sweat. And as we sweat, we dehydrate faster. So, for seeking water, it's just better to go for a leisurely stroll. We're just enjoying the wilderness of Kentucky. And speaking of wilderness, we did see that we, um, I don't know if roadmap's the right word for it, but uh, the Project Zomboid team sat there and pointed out what the next update they're working on is, and they hope to have it soon, soon TM, without dates. Uh, will be an expansion that will actually have wildlife, like actual animals we can see out in the world, potentially hunt, stuff like that. Okay, that's a wreck I won't be able to get into, that's fine. Um, and a gun rework. I don't think they specified any details past that, but I could be wrong. So for all the individuals who are saying, it would be nice if we could hunt deer or something. That's coming. Um, I'm also hopeful because people have been talking a lot about that they would love for bows to be in the game. There's a good chance if we're talking about adding hunting to the game, you might be getting bows. Not crossbows. I doubt that. That would be very weird thematically for Project Zomboid. But bows, on the other hand. Oh, an entire combat weapon rework. Okay, I was in the impression it was just ranged weapons are getting a rework. That could be interesting. All right, there's something in the road. Looks like maybe it's a pipe. So we can get ourselves a helmet. Hopefully there's something useful in the truck. Oh, that one has a satchel. So this works out pretty well for us. The downside being we, st we still are on a time limit with water. But that said, even if we were to start walking north, like I don't feel like I'm in dire straits yet because you can actually get a pretty... Yes, please, thank you with the key. You can actually get a pretty long range walking when you start dehydrating before you actually are in danger. Yeah, no, it's potentially a jackpot. I'm not getting myself too excited just yet. Only because we don't know if it has gas.
Because if it has no gas, then it gets to sit here. But the satchel and the pipe and all that, yeah. Oh, and he has a hammer too. I already take the fact this is basically a jackpot. You're right. I I am ye of little faith. Let me actually take the yellow helmet because it's easier to see in the dark. You know, actually, I take that back. We're not going to put that in there. Even though the chances of us returning to grab a guard bag are basically zero. I'm going to toss in the back of the truck instead. Ho, oh, oh, ho, please have keys. Or, not keys, please have gas. Let's talk, truck. Let's talk about your gas tank. <sighs> no gas. And all the rest is going to stay because carry weight's going to be a problem. Have a guard. Ooh, maybe grab that. Still fairly? All right. The, re the rest is going to stay because it's going to be heavy and not something we can use immediately. So we're still in danger from the hydration side. Oh, that's going to start hurting our carry weight pretty soon. We just finished the last <coughs> of our food. No, I think we got like one tick more of bread before it's gone. I I could see drying definitely be a thing. Like I would have the mechanic drying be you have to hang up your meat. It takes three, four days, something like that being hung up. And if it rains, it potentially, you know, it's not that it outright ruins it, it basically restarts the timer. And so the danger is, if it gets rained on, the meat can just rot, because that's, that's realistic. You also have to have it out in the sun to properly dry in what we're doing here. You know, maybe you'd be allowed to drive using ovens and stuff as well. Or, or fire. But I, I could definitely see that being an option. There's, it's one of those things that you'd have to check the weather and be like, okay, I got two days, I can dry meat. Oh, I don't have two days, I cannot dry meat. Like, I want it to be something that you actually have to think about. I would also make it so you can dry meat during, like, the summer and all that. Gotcha. I was actually not sure about that. I was like, I would think with the cold it would take that much longer to dry, but yeah. Oh yeah, I have, um, and this is going back, like, right after multiplayer dropped. So right before it went main patch, that I saw some... And when I say big name streamers, we're talking in the relative. We're not talking the uh, the shrouds and all that out there. We're talking people, you know, who pretty routinely grab like one to three thousand viewers. So so that like they're upper tier, but not not sky tier. So far as their their audience, they're pulling. So we're not talking quality because, in my opinion, so many so many extremely high quality streamers just don't get their break. But seeing some of them play Project Zomboid was interesting. Because, like, some of them were like, I'm having an absolutely rough time with this, but I can see where this game is magic. But yeah, like, one of them was saying, it's like, I'm at the point where I feel frustrated, I want to quit at the same time. I know for, there's like, I know for a fact if I play for, like, you know, another week or two, I will be in love with this game. It's like, he, he recognized, like, this game is going to ruin me, but in the moment figuring it out, I am angry. <laughs> to which my answer is like, that's fair. Yeah, so we're getting thirsty enough, it's hurting our carry weight. Luckily, we see a mailbox where there's a mailbox, 
there's a place that needs mail, which means a farmhouse. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of big streamers hop in here. I don't think that's bad. I mean, the game just shot up. It was uh, third on the global Steam charts, I think, yesterday. And, like, the day or two before it was, like, fourth. So you think about this being an indie development game and, like, taking third on, like, one of the biggest holiday sale time for Steam. And then on top of that, like, one of the other games, which I think was Witcher 3 was above it, was 80% off. So it's like, okay, Indie Stone is crushing it. And we broke 30,000 concurrent players. Yeah. And so what I think is going to probably happen with that is you're going to have a whole bunch of these big streamers going to hop in. They're going to play Project Zomboid. You know, hit it, hit it while the flash pan is hot. Um, some of them will play and go, okay, this isn't for me. That's going to happen no matter what the game is, even if it's a really popular game. Um, so they'll leave. You're going to have a bunch of people who are going <coughs> to play it for a little while until it hits that point where it's not like hot, hot, hot. But where people are going, oh, no, you know, are you scared as someone who's a Project Zomboid streamer, you know? Well, I consider myself a variety streamer, even though I basically play nothing but Project Zomboid these days, but I do hop around. But um, it's like, well, no, I'm actually, that's good, because the more viewers you have showing up to a game, Project Zomboid, you know, the more hype that's driven, there's going to be more people who are like, okay, maybe I don't want to watch this 3,000-person high-energy stream. Let me try a different stream. Yep, yep, 100%. I don't disagree at all. Okay, where is this... So we had a mailbox at the beginning of this row, so it's going to go to some kind of building somewhere, because I really need that water. Thank you so much for the follow, Ocean Madness. Welcome to the stream. I feel deceived. Okay, okay, we got a building here. This looks like a tool shed. Thank you so much for the follow, Sansin21. Welcome to the stream. Okay, I wish it was daytime because I have a feeling I'm going to go to this place and like five zombies are going to spill out. Does this penalize me yet? I think this will penalize my attack speed soon. Alright, back off. Oh yeah, 100% on all sides. Like, they've been working on this game for 10 years and it's not like just no progress is made. While Indie Stone does kind of, you know, go, okay, we're going to do stuff. And then they go kind of radio silent. I actually don't think that is a bad approach. Well, I love like I love the transparency of you know knowing exactly what's going on and all that. It can be frustrating how long things take. But yeah, I'm hoping there's a sink in this tool shed. Stop pushing it and just hit it with a hammer. Great, we got keys to a place with no doors. Nope, gravel stays where exactly where it is. If I can't eat it, it can't make me food or water, it stays. Or if I can't stab a zombie with it. Wait, we're gonna have a saw. Get out of here. And not grabbing all the seeds. Um, ah, I shouldn't take the rakes. They're heavy. They're terrible. This puts us to very heavy load. All right, we don't we don't grab the rake. Well, actually, where's the meat? Get the meat out of my life. Drop that. Um, yeah, rake stay. And it'll take back the meat. Hmm. 
Yeah, no, and I and I do agree that you're going to have a number of big streamers who are going to hop in. They're not going to get past that initial the initial bump, and they'll do something else. And it's not that they'll necessarily like speak badly of the games. They'll give it a little a little while. They'll goof off with it, and then that might be the end of it. Um, you might have some who just go, "This is stupid." Move on to that's fine. It happens, and you're going to have actual players who do that that just. They don't. They can't. They don't want to. Whatever. And, and that's fine. Like that's not me being critical of any of them. You know, being a big streamer, you do end up having to bounce between some. Cool. Uh, the whole thing we're hoping is no house alarm. If there's a house alarm, we drink from the sink and we leave. Remember that time we were actually really capable of combat, and then we uh, then we died needlessly. I miss the time before the needless death, when we weren't terrible at combat. Give it a moment. See if zombies show up. That's the reason we pushed on the door. Get our little friends to come out to us. Not go in there with them. Okay, no house alarm. That is one win. Okay, so we can't cover up all the windows or anything like that. Before we go upstairs, checking to see if we have anything like generator magazines or herbalism magazines real fast before we go too far. When you're on these floors where all the doors are open, I usually just go through and quickly close the doors up to last room. That way, if there are zombies in there, I end up closing the door on the zombie's face, such that I get a little bit of time without the zombie before things go to hell. Yeah, you could. The thing is, the challenge you run into with the big name streamers is you have almost everyone wanting to, I'm going to say ride on their coattails kind of thing. Almost everyone's like, hey, big name streamer, you know, partner with me kind of thing. And for the big name streamer, the thing is, it's very difficult to tell, you know, you, you don't you don't have the time and capacity to go through and check out everyone's stream to see who's worth talking to, not from the viewership standpoint. But who is a good fit and everything. And so I do empathize, I shouldn't say empathize, sympathize with the fact that they're like, okay, is this person actually gonna help me, or are they just trying to, you know, get their get their fame off of me, and it's the whole thing. Okay, cool. We've got all this. We're not sleepy yet, we're not too far from that. Hey, not a whole lot. We uh, we started a new run. All right, in a pinch, we can eat it. We can eat that.
Gotcha. This is my first time that I can think of that I've been in this house. Um, it was an advertisement. So I found one weird thing that happens with the uh, TVs is when you're not in the area and you turn it on, even though it's supposed to be at six times, it seems like there's some logic to the game where it kind of fudges things a little bit. I haven't quite pinned down how it works, but I have noticed that a number of times. So we're still at 10. I guess I am carrying a lot in the bag. That is problematic. Oh, I never turn off the TV. Of course, I'm not super concerned about maximizing the uh, the benefit. No, nope. maybe I should be. It's just not something I do. I mean, you can already do that. Uh, you can just go into the sandbox settings and turn off the zombies. Yep, no, I gotcha. I just, I have a habit of leading the TV on for a couple different reasons. All right, so that's cooked, that's cooked, that's cooked, that's cooked. Um, one of the reasons I leave the TV on is if I'm going through an area and I notice the TVs aren't talking anymore after I've turned them all on, even before I go in and check the lights and all that kind of stuff, I know for a fact the power's gone off. Oh, antique stove. I didn't even catch this tack there's an antique stove. Okay. It is a shame we cannot carry that. Like, you physically can carry that. Our character most definitely cannot carry that. Um, it's pretty good. Like, we're at volume one, and I can be sitting back here by the couch, and it'll still count. Like, if you go outside, it won't carry very far. But, like, volume one, it's probably this whole room. Volume two, probably here-ish would be my guess, maybe around this corner. It goes pretty far. Like that's the reason the first thing I always do is I go in and I turn the TV down to one volume because realistically you never have to have it over one volume if you're doing anything related to the TV. And it just attracts zombies otherwise, you know, just don't want to do it. Hey, cooking. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, I am really not sure how to pronounce that. I'm going to give it my best guess. Um, if I get it wrong, please correct me, and I'll do better in the future. Uh, Yujab Iji Niyu? Inu? I'm sorry, that's that's gonna be a difficult one. I might just call you Jab unless that's problematic for you. Oh, we had a stretch. I didn't see that sneak in. I'll quickly do that stretch, sorry. I've, I've had day two tropical storm before where it's like you get the radio and the very first thing you do is you go, okay, what's the weather? Weather's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Tropical storm in two days, you say. Great. You're like, I guess this is just my life then. We're going to miss shows. That's just our life. Usually that's how these run. So anyways, go. I, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I didn't want to be like, oh, that's not a name or anything like that because you don't want to be insensitive because I don't speak every language. For all I know, it is a perfectly valid name. But uh, I was like, it feels like someone just made this. Oh, we still don't have a water. 
And I'm pretty sure we can't just like drink the maple syrup and use that bottle. There are some bottles you could definitely use, but I don't think that's one. So we should absolutely not be walking around at extreme heavy load, but uh, we're uh, we're gonna walk around at extreme heavy load. This is one of those I know the thing I shouldn't be doing, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh, let's check our map. So we're basically just shy of center map. Um, I'm going to go with the strategy of keep going northwest. Our foraging is zero. Actually, if we look at our skills, our skills are effectively zero with the exception of that one cooking point. Yep, we might find some wild veggies. Um, the thing is, I actually have a big old pile of meat in my pocket that we're going to keep on eating for the time being. Because, like, at the moment, food isn't the problem, it's water. And while veggies do give you water, usually you lose so much more water than you gain. Now, granted, if I could pick up, like, 20 wild onions or something, which would be probably an unreasonably large number to find, you could get water to last you a little while that way, but I don't think that's really a um, reasonable or practical solution, unless our foraging was just absolutely absurdly high, and even then... I'd probably go, eh, maybe we just go for a walk? And I'm just, like, we're overeating right now. But we are deliberately just eating meat again and again to keep knocking this from extreme heavy load to just heavy load. It's a waste of food, honestly, but... It means we can keep going with more on us. Oh yeah, when you get that, that's a different story, but I usually, for me, I haven't seen, like, I've, I've found a jar of, I can't remember, I think it may have been leeks. Um, and that's pretty awesome. But I've only found those at decent levels of foraging. And I want to say I only found those not in the streets, but um, in the quote-unquote urban tile, whatever, whatever it's called, where you actually have buildings showing up. Um, doesn't forging burn some of your stamina? I believe it wasn't bad, but you're not wrong. At the moment, I'm just dealing with stamina issues because of being overload. Yeah, it's not it's not bad stamina burn. Like, I will say that. I believe it's a stamina burn, but it's kind of like a trickle burn. So it's like where you're walking around at heavy weight as opposed to, like, very heavy weight. You know, you are losing stamina. It is going down reliably, but it's just... A teeny bit at a time. Mmm, this is dangerous. Yeah, this this is feels bad. Is it just solid trees the whole way? What is this? Like, there's sometimes you run to solid trees, but this is solid. Oh, there we go. I was like, that was just solid, solid trees. Usually it's like you'll have a line of two or three solid trees, then it'll just go away. Um, we're just about, like, we're not quite exactly center map. So we're not really at anything, just about center map. Yeah, so we're just slightly, like, this is probably center map here-ish. So we're just a little south of center map. Yes, Muldrow would probably be southeast of us, and Ekron... Yes, moving in itself, if you're not overweight, does not use stamina on a meaningful level. Like, you won't, you won't, like, you will recover even at zero fitness more stamina than you lose. 
So that, and like I'm not sure if it uses stamina, but you believe it uses stamina. Like I have I have anecdotal evidence, but I do not have like I haven't sat here and gone, oh, I have done a proper test where you know I've ditched all of my inventory and properly gone through a test. Yeah, so you're talking about 50% stamina here. That would make sense. I mean, if you're already super exhausted. We're moderately, we're moderately exerted, and that's because we, we keep sticking around very heavy and heavy load. Okay, we got a road here. Excellent. There are zombies on that road, so we are going to take a moment and sit down. This is not a particularly safe place to sit down, but I do not want to run into zombies while we're tired. Or exerted, I should say. Tired is a separate thing. Is that a duffel bag or... No, that's just their shirt. Is that the river? Are we... Is this the lake to the east of Ekron? Is that, is that what I'm going with? Is that what I'm seeing here? I think that I think that might be the lake east of Ekron. Which would be nice because that would mean we're on either the middle or north side of Ekron. Because I still do like the idea that we had from one of our previous rounds, which was just the north end of Ekron is where our long-term base goes. Because with this whole playthrough, we're gonna be basically wiping out zombies, period. Um, we're going to probably have to have like little tiny forward bases that won't have much going for them that we put everywhere. Like in each city we will have one. Maybe more than one for places like West Point and Louisville. But uh, for... Outside of that, we're going to have like one base that is the one we return to, you know, between clearing cities or when like we're pushing into a city we start running low on resources that... You know, we might have a farm at, we'll have like the rain pails, all that, or the, uh, the rain catchers, all that kind of stuff. So that way we have like a safe haven that we've got all the resources we need to keep going indefinitely. But um, we will leave that at location to go hit up different locations on a variety of time. So our first priority before anything else is to establish ourselves where we can survive. Um, in practice, what that's probably going to mean is that we have access to gas, a vehicle, a generator, and the generator magazine. Once we have that, we can actually set ourselves up a base of operations. And once we have a base of operations, you know, then, then we have long-term survival in, in where it needs to be. This is all terrible. I knew I shouldn't grab this much, but that's okay. We're just going to make it work. It'll be fine. Let's kill this zombie over here in the woods that's by himself. We're going to be very careful, try and be methodical. Kill them one by one. I'm going to use the hammer. My hope is that we break the hammer right away, if it's going to break. Because every less weapon, the better. The hammer has a weapon. Or not the hammer, the zombie has a weapon, so that is a thing. I'm hoping to decrease my weapons at the number. No, by number at the moment. The thing is, I definitely will need that weapon, which is why I grabbed it. Alright, let's try and scooch over this way. Basically, I'm looking for a small group of zombies that we can sort of... Uh, Um, if you were talking about these bars, that is a mod called Minimal Display Bars. Uh, it is giving me additional information. It doesn't give me anything that like breaks the game or whatever like that. So I can see like this little white bar. That's my stamina. So as I'm running around with too much stuff on me, it's slowly draining. Which isn't what we want, but it is the way the game works. We didn't eat the whole thing, did we? 
Was there only that much sausage left? It looked okay. Whatever. I'm not gonna ask questions. I think we accidentally ate the entire sausage in one sitting. Oh, that's not what you want to see. This is not the time for this many. We should be retreating. Why am I not retreating right now? notice remember where that backpack is or the uh the satchel i ditched it so that way we weren't extremely overburdened Okay. Yeah, I can go over the uh, the colors here in a moment. I just want to get the bag before I forget. There it is. Th then I'll go through it all. Sorry. Okay, so the big yellow bar, that is our health. Um, we only really care if it drops to basically just above zero, because otherwise I only care about, like, I've, <coughs> I don't think, other than a neck laceration, I have ever died from running out of health outside. Like, you know, it's always been... You know, zombie infection that gets me. Um, and from that is our food. That's hunger. Um, this game is weird that you can die of hunger as a separate mechanic from dying from malnutrition. So that's the one we care about. The one after that is hydration, water. The white bar here, that is stamina. Um, the yellow bar down here, a like yellowish green bar, that's basically how sleepy we are. Um, the one after that is boredom. There's nothing there at the moment, but the more bored you get, it eventually starts making you sad. The blue bar is how sad we are. We're just teeny tiny bit sad because we're eating food that's not particularly great. Um, this bar is temperature. You only care if it's particularly high or low. Right now it's just about where it should be. And then after that is calories. Think of calories in this game as, you know, nutrition. Uh, you can, you know, you can eat and still starve to death by malnutrition in the real world. So like if I ate nothing but like, you know, nutritionally devoid food, eventually I would die of malnutrition. So that's that's where it says it's a little weird that it does cover both the whole starving from hunger as well as the starving from malnutrition. Um, this is minimal display bars. And thank you so much for the follow, uh, Pankraru. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that. Um, please correct me. I do want to try and get it right. I am going to switch. Oh, cool. I have been doing a lot better with that than I thought. Like, I, I fully expected to absolutely butcher people's names. And that's probably just coming back from teacher days where I was still learning a lot of that. All right, so I want to switch to having the backpack on my back. Um, the satchel is now officially dead to me. So it's going to go over here to this zombie sitting right here. Here is your set. Okay. For a moment, it looked like it's dragging more. So there's your satchel. Thank you. Have a nice day. We're going to back off just a little bit. I'm going to sit down for a brief moment to take a breather while we potentially eat something else we shouldn't be eating to just deal with weight. And we're talking about the weight we're carrying, not the weight of us ourselves. Um, yeah, so endurance is stamina. So that's like how much I'm fighting, running, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when my endurance gets low, I can sit down and I recover endurance. Uh, fatigue is tiredness. The only ways to deal with tiredness is to sleep, drink coffee, or start choking down vitamins like they're, you know, like they're Smarties or some type of, you know, delicious candy. Okay, let's kill off these three zombies, because then we can reach the water and we can drink the water. Oh, the new map system is amazing. And I had made comments before the new map system was announced, like, I wish there was a map that, like, 
we could update that we can put between places because like you get journals and all that so I should be allowed to say draw map or something in there. So of course it is not what I envisioned because I didn't think they would do something like this but it's like look I should be able to do something. But um, a lot a lot of people wouldn't even use the in-game paper maps. I loved using the in-game paper maps because you could be like, this is a big move. We're at heavy, or really heavy load. I can tell because we slowed down. These zombies need to die. My wife has agreed the zombies need to die, and the zombies have died. And the reason we hit that is we hit the next tick on dehydration, which reduces our carry weight. <coughs> Luckily, I can just overeat a little, and my carry weight goes up. Um, so, I know they were in there for the, um, oh, back at my save build, and I've listened to them then, but, um, unless oh, it's been new-new. So here, I can demonstrate. So if you notice, if I put my mouse over, it goes, hey, this is tainted water, unsafe for drinking, sterilized by boiling in an oven over a fire. Uh, that is true with a lot of sources of water you get. However, if I drink directly from a body of water, that means <coughs> no bottle, no cup, no cooking pot, hand in water into mouth. I can drink that safely. Don't know if it's a bug, don't know if it's intended. It's been that way for a long time. But um, we have had plenty of people test it again and again and again, and that is true. And now after I've said that, it'll probably get patched and make me a liar. But for the time being, it is safe. But yeah, if I put this in a cooking pot, I have to boil the cooking pot before it's safe to drink. That's the thing that makes it weird. Um, we have had people test who deliberately dehydrated themselves, drank it to the max, dehydrated themselves, drank it to the max, dehydrated themselves, drank it to the max, and they couldn't get themselves past like the lightest type of not feeling good. All right, and that's... Oh yeah, that's that's the weird thing is when you fill it up in a bottle, it absolutely just kills you. Now, the devs have to be absolutely aware of it. Like, this is probably the main way that people get water who do wilderness characters until they get, like, Carpentry 7, which means they're drinking a heck of a lot of water out of the lake. And it's been, it's like, the the thing I joked with some of the other people who play the game and stream it and all that, it's like, it the day that they patch this, they can't just put in the patch notes. The day if they decide to patch that out, they need to have like a disclaimer that you right click, you click drink, and it goes big prompt. No, seriously, this is going to kill you. Like that'll be how severe it has to be because of how many people are depending on that in the game that we will just lose a big chunk of the Project Zomboid population all at once because people drinking from the lake. Um, so I am unemployed. The first thing I will preface is the build I am running, I do not recommend. It's not, I don't recommend it to beginners. It's not, I don't recommend it to veterans. I mean, I don't recommend it. It is objectively not a good build. That said, the negatives I have taken is I have taken weak, unfit, and obese. And to show you why I don't recommend that, let me kill this zombie. Is if we go to our skills, I have the cooking we got from TV. I start with literally nothing. Um, and fun would be subjective. I like it because I like to watch my character grow from basically nothing to something. But at the same time, I have known many people who have tried the build and gone, oh my god, this is the worst build I have ever played. I will never do that again. Because as you can tell, I am getting super tired. My carry weight is six. Six is how much I can carry before I'm overburned. So... Most characters start somewhere in the ballpark of 
12. Some higher to like 18. That zombie saw me, right? Like, where, where, where are you? Where'd you go, zombie? I'm actually a little spooked by the fact that you just disappeared in nowhere. Yeah, so that's that's one of the many reasons of like this this is not a recommended build. Yes, my character does weigh 105 kilograms as part of it. I think that takes away two fitness, which isn't carry weight, but that's part of it. Um, it's because we go weak, unfit, and obese. And then we also have slow healer, but slow healer doesn't. I don't honestly care about slow healer that much. Like, it doesn't affect anything. If you are getting injured in Project Zomboid, congratulations, you're going to die. Yeah, because we're obese. 105 pounds is like... For, for most, you know, normal builds, like 105 pounds is like, you're doing good. All right, we got another stretch. Um, <laughs> I will, you know, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're clear, and then we'll sit down and do that. And my apologies for the coughing. My wife is, uh, she's not still sick, but you know, it's like post after you've had a cold and you got to get stuff out of your system. So she's dealing with that. But I'll get that stretch going. Yeah, no, she's definitely feeling better. Like she was talking about yesterday, she feels like so far as feeling she feels completely better. It's just, you know, after you've had that and you've had a cough for a while, like there's still crap. Your body has to get get out of itself after it's beaten whatever it's fighting. Uh, other half of the stretch, give me just a moment. Um, and I do fear that this is going to be a super sketch sleep because we're nowhere near anything in that sleep. Like, I'm not running all the way back to that building because I'll never find my way back to the same place here. Which means we're probably sleeping in the woods without a tent or anything. Which is real sketch. But I don't think I have another choice here. Um, it depends. So Lightfoot and stuff will actually help with the amount of noise you make. Um, it also depends if you have stuff like Clumsy or what, what, what is the opposite of Clumsy, the, um, the quieter one. But um, they can hear you pretty close if you're making noise with stuff. Like, But they have to be close to the building or you have to be doing stuff that's loud or you have windows or doors open. If you have windows or doors open, they can hear you much easier, because there's the dampening effect for the house. Um, if you're doing TVs and radios, you want to keep the volume down to like one, maybe two notches at the absolute most, because those can carry pretty well outside. But if you crouch and just sneak around, you'll usually be pretty good for a while. Um, as far as my current objective, I believe this is the lake east of Ekron. If I am correct, I would like to get to Ekron uh, gas station. Um, I don't know if there is a difference. I've, I've never tested or heard one way or the other. I'm guessing there isn't, but I say that with very little confidence. That's, that's purely guessing. So I'm, I'm basically right now pushing to try and get into Ekron, because I believe we're there. If we're not, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. The thing that I am worried is, I don't know, I think, I think this is the part of the lake that goes through the middle, like towards the middle of Ekron near the church, which isn't where I want to be really. I want to be much closer to the, uh, to the north end. 
because if we clear out the zombies in the north end, I don't have to worry about more zombies to the north because there's a big, well, there's a big field and there's a lake. I feel like this is near the church side, which I guess is fine. Maybe I can like sleep in the tool shed or something, but I'm, I am probably going to have to sleep once out in the woods, maybe more, before we successfully make the push. These are some pretty big groups of zombies. Can I see? No. So we do want to be careful to try very carefully to pull just one or two zombies each time. Um, they do have a... Uh, I don't think roadmap is the correct word, but from what I understand, from what they have revealed, the next big, big update... Um, is intended to be wild animals, and I thought it, I had read that it was a gun rework, and I've been told it's a full-on combat weapon rework. Um, so keep in mind, gun rework is the only one I know for a fact, I verified reading, but a full-on combat rework could be in order. Yeah, we don't, we don't know what's involved in that. Like, we know they've shown a picture of a deer. And I think that's the only thing they've revealed with that. Um, I believe the major update they mentioned after that was they were going to bring back NPCs. They did have NPCs in the game once way back, um, but they went away. Um, so they're going to bring those back, and then the update after that is they're going to basically do a lot more with the NPCs. Um, it's purely a push. Unarmed. You do not kill zombies with anything except for stomping on their head. That's the reason why when it comes to fighting zombies unarmed, you can push, you can um, fight two zombies fairly safely so long as you're not heavily exerted or anything. Uh, three zombies can be done. It is really tricky because you have to line up where you're either you are standing on one zombie and the other zombie standing there or two of them are standing on each other. Or you just you manage to shove one over, shove the other one over, and then stomp on the last one real quick before they get closed in the area. It's it's doable, but it is it is tough to line up. Um, once you get more than three, your chances of lining up are really not good to the point you shouldn't like unless you get no choice, you shouldn't bother. That's a lot more than I want. Um, we're dropping the backpack. And the reason we're doing that is that way we aren't heavy load. Because heavy load slows down your movements, and we do not want slow movements when we're fighting big groups. doable like four is perfectly fine we fight much much bigger than four it's just because i've been overburdened i'm juggling loot to um try and make sure we don't put ourselves in danger Oh yeah, um, yeah, I can see that because with more strength you have a much higher chance of pushing them over, you kill them with less hits stomping on them, that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, now, having having more skills is doable. It's just one of those things that, like, two is easy peasy, lemon squeezy once you learn it. Like, you'll probably get yourself killed the first couple of times you try it till you get a feel for it. Uh, but once you get that, then you get three. Three is not terrible to deal with. Okay, where's my bag? Oh, 
Oh yeah, no, I I 100% agree. Like, there's it's been a joke that people will hop in the stream. They're like, "Why are you using a hunting knife? Knives are so terrible." It's like, no, no, you're wrong. You sir are objectively wrong. Knives are amazing. But I don't have. Well, I mean, I have the kitchen knife, but I'll I'll worry about that when I get like low stamina. Oh, yeah, hunting knives are fantastic. But you're quite regular to be like, why, why, why would you use a hunting knife? You've got, you know, like, you've got an axe on your back. I'm like, well, I'm low stamina. You're like, but, but why would you, why would you, why would you use a hunting knife? It's like, because it doesn't use stamina, so I can fight with it all day long. One more string for my axe, and I'm, I am fighting at like two thirds capacity. Like, I'll use the axe, but it's when you start getting close to, um, exerted, you back off and you use, um, short points. With the exception of the cleaver, because the cleaver uses stamina, so I treat that like a primary weapon. So, at this point, like I mentioned, I have a filter on OBS that makes the game about 15-20% higher. So if there's, like, a zombie wearing all black here, a lot of times I won't see it, which is super messy. Um, I could build my sneak skill, but right now we're working on limited food and all that. I'm more interested in trying to just get in the building, because unfortunately when you're dealing with these high levels of population, realistically sneaking about a, uh, a city is just not a thing. There's just too many eyes. Like, you might be able to, if you're really lucky, spawn in one building, creep out the window, and then immediately hop in the window right next to it. But even that usually doesn't pan out because of how many eyes there are. You know, with a few exceptions of there's like a couple of buildings like the uh, the hotels that they clear a large radius around that there's no zombies compared to a lot of the other buildings. So some of those you can get away with. Um, I could train the skill. I honestly don't don't really bother training sneaking and all that. Just because, as I mentioned, sneaking around on a real level isn't isn't feasible in this high pop. So it's kind of like I would rather just focus my energy on killing. Because also when you're creeping around, I believe you burn stamina faster, as I recall. It's probably short blunt one. Yeah, it could be wrong about the, the sneak burning that. Yeah, short blunt one. Bad. Like, I could probably sneak around this group, but I'd rather clear out a long er or a large area because I am basically going on the assumption... Uh, oh, I'm looking at my key thing. It's like, why do I have keys here? But um, I'm going by the assumption that I'm going to have to sleep in the woods, and that's just going to be the, the necessary. Because my thought is, I get to the gas station, there's certainly going to be probably four or five hordes over there. The chances that I can sneak into the gas station upstairs without being seen is slim to none. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, it's not that I will never sneak or anything, I just don't bother farming it. Like, usually what I'll do is, when I get into my home, I'll sneak around my home the entire time. Um, sometimes entering and exit, I'll sneak as well. When I do want to avoid groups, I will sneak. But right now, we're just pushing forward. It's going to be problematic just because I'm going to have to reach, like, full sleepiness before we're able to really do anything. No, jewelry has no functional use in the game unless something changed. It's purely bling to bling. I think after these two, we switch to our short blade. Alright, actually. 
actually, are we clear from that side? And that's it. Let's back off for a moment. I'm going to pull up my map. So warning, bright screen. Um, I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about NPCs, to be honest, because I think part of the thing that gives me the allure for Project Zomboid is the fact you are the lone survivor. That your world is just you, the zombies, and a bad time. So bright screen. Yeah, those are way back there. Those are way, way back there. Because, mm. like, should I walk back? And the answer is still probably I should should but not gonna ah oh, that puts us a heavy load all right we're not gonna put away the, the blade that said like i fully believe they should be in the game and i'll probably use them at their default but i more than likely i will not treat them as hostile per se, but I'm probably not going to like be basing up near them or anything like that. Like I do hope that the um they will be distrusting of you, that they will be competitive with you so far as like if there's loot in the area they won't want you around. Like they you should have to work to make them like you and be able to get anything out of them. Just the same, I also really hope that the NPCs aren't the type that, like, you go in and some of the NPCs will just pull their gun and start blasting. Because guns can be super weak. Whew, I didn't think I was going to get that push off in time. It's just hard to see in the dark. Do we walk all the way back to those those portables? The trailers? I really don't want to. But Hey, how's it going, Energy Smart? Uh, do we walk all the way back there? Sorry, I'm gonna bring up the map again. I know it's bright, I apologize. That's a hike. I hear a zombie, I don't see it, and I hate it. Um, alright, we're fighting a group again. We are gonna go into moderate exertion. We don't wanna go that way, there's more zombies that way. Yep, that is more than I want. Panicking, so that's a damage reduction. No, that's not your fault. Oh no, this is fine. But yeah, we're going to go into moderate exertion, we're going to have panics, we're going to be taking quite a few damage penalties, so these are going to die slow. The big thing is that we don't pull another group, otherwise we just have to walk away. There's moderate exhaustion. We knew that was coming. And unfortunately, we're right about to hit tired two, <coughs> which would be a third damage penalty. All right, we're not going to try and take a hit after that. They're lined up wrong. I 
They're trying to avoid fighting near the trees, just in case we don't see a zombie looming inside there, because that's a good way to get caught. Officially tired. Or I guess technically drowsy. Oh yeah, we um it's not uncommon for us to fight with like 40 or 50 zombies on us. Like they're it's probably at least, what would you say, like once a stream with like a helicopter or so that we're running around with over 400 zombies on our tail. Now granted, I probably even then still shouldn't be fighting this because we have three damage debuffs going on us right now between the panic the uh, exertion and the tire, so there's a good chance we're doing well below half damage. There was scissors, we actually want those. That one has a screwdriver in it, we want that. Screwdriver's an okay a short blade. Scissors, I think we're down on one of these two bodies, or was it one of these? Scissors, I think, down here. Okay, um, I think we're taking a sip of water from the lake. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna have to run back to the, uh, to the trailers. I really didn't want to walk that far back. But I feel like we're just gonna get ourselves killed if we don't. That I did. I got my closed captions working. It was an absolute god-awful nightmare to get them working. No, because the problem is, once you start getting drowsy, the rate you recover exertion is, uh, is much slower. So what we're doing is we're dropping back towards those trailers. Um, we're going to sleep. And then we're going to push forward. I might... If I can make the carry weight work, I might steal a stool to bring with us, or a chair, whatever they got. But, um, let's see. Alright, gonna be pulling out the map again, because I need to figure out what direction I'm going. <coughs> okay, it's east by southeast. As much as I'd love to keep pushing... Like, that's the... If I find a tarp, and I can make a tent, totally different story. Yeah, like that was the thing, like the first couple closed app captioning options I tried are only like 80% correct, which is like, oh, 80%, that sounds pretty good. Um, when you're trying to read a sentence and 20% of it's wrong, it is horrendously bad to the point of probably worse than just not even having it. And then a bunch of those wanted paid solutions and all that. It's like, but why? We have this technology. And the only reason we're not running is for all we know, we're going to bump into zombies when we get there, and we want to be able to fight a little bit. And then plus running through trees, if you smack into a tree, it can hurt you.
Anyways, how is it going, Ripping? Hope you're having a uh, lovely holiday if you celebrate, and if not, I hope you're having a lovely day in general. But yeah, this is one of the things with Project Zomboy that is almost a skill within itself, is knowing when it's time to say, all right, it's time to cut and run. Like, time, time to go. Chill time with family is not bad. This is this weird thing where we had this, like, solid density of just trees. This is the reason I didn't want to go this whole way back, is there's, like, these trees gone for a long time. Yeah, the trees are not a good time. You, you can absolutely get yourself in trouble crossing through the woods. The only saving grace I have is this area basically has pretty close to no zombies in it until you get up closer to the river. So the odds of us bumping into a zombie are pretty slim. And then the trees this thick also means that the sound's being dampened. So unless I walk directly into the zombie, it should be okay. And the zombies usually make enough noise you hear them. Alright, I'm going to have to pull up the map again and even figure out where I am. Okay, so we're a bit too far to the... Uh the west but i'm going to cut across because it looks like there's a road or some type of clearing here that we can follow oh right there's the farmland here i take the chance of running this because this will help work on our fitness as well as our sprinting Because this area I feel a little bit better because we didn't run to zombies outside the trailers or strictly inside the trailers, which is just normal for low low density areas. I say as we immediately see a group of zombies up here and are about half, a little over halfway to high exertion, which would be a bad time. Especially since we are on the second tick, where we're full on tired. Oh no, we're about to be full on tired. Like one swing will be full on tired. No. Oh, this wasn't the trailers. This is the farmhouse. That's right. I should have expected zombies out here. Yep, but now we're tired. Yeah, this isn't too bad. Like, we, we could have, like, as worried we're going to aggro that group. This one here I'm not so worried about. Like, if he shows up, we'll just beat him up and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> Why would I sleep in the chicken coop? I've got a perfectly good apart house with beds in it that we've already cleared. And we've got all the doors closed, so it's basically as safe as we can expect. Sure, I'll finish watching your cooking show. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the things. Like, clearly it's 7.40, and the cooking show is less than an hour long, and starts at 6. So there's something the game does squirrely about the, uh, the shows and all that. Where they're like they'll start or carry over when you get in range or whatever. So I haven't quite figured it out, but I'm not going to complain. Yeah, there's a really good mod for it. Well, that was a meta event, so that could be problematic. That's fine. We'll deal with it. All right, looks like we finished the steak. So food is going to be a danger. Water is a short-term danger. So we're definitely off balance at the moment. Because I don't even have a water bottle still.
and I realistically really should be killing these zombies, but I am just <coughs> I am just trying to really push into this um this town because it's where I want to actually base up and everything. And right now, with the way we're set off, we don't have a lot of food to our name. Um, so I'm trying to just kind of push through this real fast. We're going to take our chances cutting through these trees. I know there's a group of zombies right there. But my hope is that it's just right there and that we won't regret this immediately. I'm also trying to be able to cut through these little lanes you can see through the trees. Better odds of being spotted by zombies, but also better odds of making actual progress without smashing through trees the whole way. You know, I might actually take that sneak suggestion. <coughs> I might actually give it a go, because normally I don't like doing that because if things go south and you have to back out, you have to back out into all the stuff you've snuck past. But that food situation does worry me. I definitely know we're not going to be able to like sneak into the gas station. My hope is we can sneak close enough and we can just be strategic in taking out zombies to like go to sleep in the uh, in the public bathrooms near the gas station or something like that and then push from there to the gas station. Because all these trees suck. Oh yeah, we had um one time, like when I was first learning how much of an effect it did, we were inside, I can't even remember what like the little business was, and I was sneaking because you know there's so many zombies nearby and I wanted to actually get through because I think it was like a liquor store, so I was like, okay, you know, liquor isn't exactly the, uh, the most nutritious meal option, but technically calories, so you know, beggars can't be choosers, liquid lunch it is. Uh, so we're basically choosing as much as we could carry. So I was sneaking along, and I took like three steps, and I just immediately heard the level up. I'm like, what? And we were just... <coughs> sorry, we were just pacing back and forth with that level up thing going, and we were at like level three or four in like 15, 20 minutes. Like, this is absurd. Yeah, like the old, the old meta strategy for, um speed training it was to get to the high school roof and i think was it west point so they just like run up there real fast and kill a couple of zombies and then just walk back and forth on the roof and within no time at all uh, that's not good in no time at all you'd actually have like four or five levels Um, and the only thing wrong with that mods list is the um, Eris minimap mod I do not have loaded. Everything else is right. Okay, so I'm going to read the West Point map. Sorry for the blinding. I should have given you more forewarning. My apologies. But, um, yeah. Um, and I believe the command is 16x, not just exclamation mark 16. If I have that wrong, like, written in the commands list, let me know. But it should be 16x or 16x pop or something like that.
don't even know what's in the... <laughs> That's what we do here. That was the reason why it's like, sneak into the city. It's like, ah, uh, sneak into the city usually isn't really an option. It is on like, lower pops. Like, even insane sneaking is super hard to pull off in any place with any real population. Okay, so we are going to move forward where we killed those zombies. I see there's another zombie in the trees. I want to get near the water, where I only have to worry about zombies coming from one direction. Well, two directions, technically. Drink some water and sit down to get some stamina back. Oh, yeah. Um, there is a command, too many. Uh, that'll give you an example of some of the things that happen when you go through places like West Point. Uh, I wonder if it didn't work because you did a reply. I don't know how that works. Stop migrating this way. There's more of you. There's five. We'll just deal with it. We're gonna wait till they aggro and then we'll get up. All right. And we've had worse without the crashes. Like honestly, most of the time we don't crash. That was a bit of a one-off because there was a siren right there. Not all the all the times. Sometimes when we're looking for a more casual run, we'll just use Insane Pop. Uh, which is just four times population. And then when Peak Pop rolls around, it's what? um 1.5 on top of that, so that's six times population? I don't remember. Either way. Or, um, for example, one of the other runs we had that we did was pretty successful. Is we did a the really CDDA, which is just um, insane population, extremely rare loot. Starts you in the middle of the winter. Um, you start with a large piece of glass lodged in a deep wound in your groin. You are drunk as drunk can be. Uh, you have a really bad cold. You're naked. The house you are in is on fire. There's something else. There's always something else I forget. Cold, you're drunk, your house is on fire, extreme early. Either way, it's a bad time. Uh, so we have a run that the character's not even dead. We're about four months in. Yep. Oh yeah, and you're drenching wet. So like that run, the very first thing. Oh yeah, and no key ring ever, which is just infuriating. But yeah. So like that run, the very first thing is you run, you tear down a curtain, you make it into rags, and you immediately put it over, like pull the piece of glass out of your groin and wrap it. And then from everything after that, you just hope it works out. Because you have a deep wound, you will gradually bleed to death otherwise. But um, yeah, usually the way these runs go is you're able to sneak off, find like a farmhouse or a homestead or something out in the wilderness to set up in. Uh, usually take a day or two in-game to push into a town, uh, just to the edge of town. Okay, so I'm... did they see me or... okay, they're just moving. So I'm maneuvering around this group.
So the only danger with doing this is there's zombies in these trees as well. And we can just flat out face plant one of them and get ourselves killed if we're not careful. Yeah, most of the um, runs we've done where we've gone to, say, like, two months, we're usually somewhere in the area of, like, six, seven thousand zombies, give or take, uh, killed. Yes. That is one thing that you will uh, definitely notice with these runs is you can tell where I've been. As long as I've been there in like the last nine days, you can tell exactly where we've been, where we've been pushed around, like all that kind of stuff. All right, group of five. I think we just fight it and be done with it versus sneaking around it. Um, I have done some multiplayer on stream, which was uh, playing on the um, Deep Fried Brains sub server. Uh, it was fun. I didn't I didn't care much for the days being three hours long. It just makes books and everything take so incredibly long. Um, when it comes to doing multiplayer, what I'm probably going to do the most of is very small things, so not like running a server so much, as like playing with four or five friends, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, it was... I think someone timed it with Fast Reader with something like 20-something minutes to... Uh, to read a single book. And you know, so it's like one of those things that while I was playing on that, I mean I still have a character on the server, I still probably will play more on that server here and there, but um, it was literally like uh, off stream, like during like work time, I would just pull up the game, have the character sitting at their home reading books, and it would take the entire day to catch up on read all the book reading. So that, that way I didn't have to read more than just a little bit on the stream. Yeah, to me the default hour feels good. Like every I've had so many people are like, oh no no no, you, you really need to do two hour days. You can get so much more done. It's like, well yes, you are correct. In the course of a day, you can get so much more done. Um, but also reading books is an absolute atrocity. And like on multi or on single player, I can just fast forward, so not a big deal. You know, 20 minutes becomes one minute. Who cares? But on multiplayer where there's no fast forward is like, oh no, just no. And you go with the idea, well, I'll just carry the book around with me and, you know, as I get more <laughs> stamina, I'll just read it. But the problem was that specific circuit, we had a very large number of veteran players on it. So the poor zombies didn't stand a chance. Like, we were just... I I was in West Point, and we were at the West Point gas station to the south. And it took me walking all the way to the... Like, just about shy of the river, North West Point, before I found a group of about ten zombies. That's just how obliterated the zombie population was with that many people running around who knew what they were doing. So like I said, what I probably will do is I will probably, when it comes to multiplayer for what I play the most, it'll probably be one of those things where I grab like, you know, again, two, three, four, five friends, whatever, that we will just do a run where it's like, okay, here's what we're doing for this run. Let's just have a good time together doing it. Um, so I'll probably have some of them that'll do where it's like, okay, these are all beginner players. We're just, you know, lower difficulty settings since everyone's learning. We'll just have fun with, you know, People learning the ropes, that kind of stuff, because it can be a lot of fun to watch new players who are playing for the very first time, and, you know, we've all died from the same things, like, you don't know to be careful opening doors and to listen very carefully for the zombies, or that, you know, dark corners are your scary, and that stairs are the enemy, or um, just how bad fatigue is, and, like, you'll, you'll tell people, and they'll be like, okay, fatigue bad, but it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. 
Fatigue. Fatigue bad, bad. Fatigue real bad. Or where they go max speed in a car and just smash into a tree. Yeah, no, I would still say outside of level one and two, reading the books is always worth it. Like even a three hour day, it's still worth it because when you're talking about doing one fifteenth the effort or one twelfth the effort, whatever it is at the uh, the highest level, the amount of like resources and effort involved, that's very much going to win. Now for the first book, yeah, 27 minutes or whatever of reading, you can probably just level a point or two in 27 minutes. Alright, I didn't kill that zombie. Yeah, so far as, like, you've noticed I've been drinking basically just river water for about a day now, so not a problem. Yeah, and it's one of those things like, if it's one of those things that people just aren't dying, okay, maybe the reading speed is not that big a deal. But if you have any real difficulty settings where you expect, you know, the occasional player death and all, it's like, no, you, you do... Like, you need to either adjust the reading speed or something, especially since you usually will have the entire book library ready for you. It means your players, they're going to start, they're going to get to the library, and it's like, well, I'll see you all tomorrow because I'm doing nothing but reading books today. And eight hours of watching your character just go turning page by page by page is just absolute tedium. And you say, oh, well, you don't need to read all the books. It's like, yeah, but when you're leveling stuff like electrical or mechanic or first aid, I mean, you don't really worry about first aid. There's just so many useful skills. It's like, but, but leveling that is so slow without the book. Oh, yeah, and... and I find multiplayer, like, I we've been surviving perfectly fine in multiplayer, but I find it gets way sketchier way faster because I'll be fighting zombies and then suddenly they're beelining to someone else, so we're here. It may not always work out the way I want. I know what the zombies are doing. They're coming straight at me or very close to straight at me. Like, that's, that's like what makes the helicopter so dangerous a lot of times is... The zombies aren't super predictable. Sometimes the helicopter will switch directions and suddenly all the zombies just turn 45 degrees and are going in a different direction. It's so where you were worried about, you know, what's coming from your south. Suddenly you're worried about what's coming from your west and you have to immediately turn around and go, oh no, what's right next to me? So it can get, it can get a little chaotic. That said, I find it fun. Like, that that part is fun, like, going, okay, I need to take the zombies seriously. Or rather, more seriously. Because when they're acting super predictable, it's not as bad to deal with them. I wish I could see farther, just to know like how much farther I have to clear this lake. Because the pro and the con here is the pro, we're making good progress at this time. The con is it's about to be dark. And <coughs> fight Sorry, and that means we're fighting in the dark. But these are big groups, so you're seeing like as big as these groups are, I would have to cut through the trees, and you can see there's zombies in the trees as well. 
And I suspect as we get closer to um, Ekron, that'll get worse to the point that there won't be sneaking by. Oh yeah, there's a reason I didn't even bother picking up the stake. It lasts for like two hits, and it's not even that strong. Versus like a spear I'll take, because like, okay, yeah, it's only good for like two, three hits. But those two, three hits, it can wreck. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to sneak a little bit, see if there is, like, we can get away from here and just push forward. It's probably a terrible idea. I'm probably going to bump into a zombie and almost die or possibly get hit. We'll see. Because I'm also suspecting this is going to take us next to the church, which isn't a particularly great place to enter the city. Looks like there's a zombie over there, maybe? Can't tell if there's a tree or a zombie. What are you? Here's the weird bush. Okay, we're actually not running into many zombies. I expected this to be worse. I do think, though, as we get close to the buildings, this will change. But I'm trying to gauge for how much farther we have till we reach the buildings. Because if it is going to be one of those things I'm going to have to fight five or six days, then we're going to run out of food. Which means our entire effort will be in vain because we'll just have to back out. Because, you know, we'll have to find food someplace. Um, in worst case, we can go from Ekron, we can go to the south and go to the uh, ice cream place, but I would rather not have to do that because it is a ridiculously long hike, and I've had to do that on several characters so far. Yeah, we're a ways up here. I don't remember there being a lake this big in the middle of the map. I mean, it, obviously there is, but... Sorry, I thought I heard a zombie, so I was trying to zoom in real fast to check. Looks like there's some zombies. <laughs> Sorry, it looks like there's some zombies over here, which is why we went in farther. So my hope is if I can sneak to the gas station and, you know, at least clear enough that we can, like, either sneak to the second floor where there's a, a bedroom, like, sleeping place, or even if we can only get into, like, the gas station bathroom with a chair, that is, that is passable for me. All right, we got another group right here. So we're going to go around wide. Now normally I almost always run multiple helicopters as well, which that means about two, three helicopters a month uh, with the 16x pop. This particular time I turned it off, just, I don't know, I was getting tired of not the helicopters putting us in danger, because that hasn't been too big of a problem. Um, rather, effectively it was kind of resetting our progress, not really, because we were actually killing the zombies, respawn is off, so they were going down. But you get pushed back and you have to clear the same street again and again. You're like, all right, come on. And that'll happen a bit with migration, but that's that's fine. That's like a very predictable amount. Whereas the helicopter, you'd suddenly find yourself with like, you know, an another thousand zombies between you and a place you already cleared. And you're just like, all right, let's talk game. Why, why are you doing this? The one that really got me was our last death that was meaningful was just... 
we had just had a helicopter. We had pulled it off successfully. drew a whole bunch of zombies out of the area we wanted to be. We had fully cleared to the gas station we wanted to go to, which is the same one I'm aiming for right now. And, like, everything was going good. We found a van. We got its keys. It had almost a full gas tank. We had a generator we knew where it was to grab with the van. We had already read the manual. Like, everything was... Like, absolutely fantastic. And then the gas station had a house alarm, which drew all of the zomb well, a whole bunch of zombies from the helicopter event where we had dumped them off in a field and drew them all to the gas station area. And because I was kind of just trying to go fast, um, sat down, turned to grab a drink out of the fridge that's like, you know, 10 second kind of thing. And just in that time, a zombie was like waiting for my moment of weakness, started moving in on me. I turned back immediately when I heard it to try and, you know, stand up. Got about halfway up and the zombie got us. Like, it was those ones that's like, only one hit, one hit was a bite. Because you were, you know, you're sitting, your back is a zombie. Bad times. Oh, I'm, we're, there's no way we're fighting this whole way up to this, ri this river, or not river, the, um, is it, wait. I know the river ducks down quite a bit. Are we along the shore? Am I much farther north than I am? Is this not the lake to Ekron? This is just the river to Riverside? I mean, we'll know if it takes a turn to the north. If so, I'm a little annoyed why it's in the better. Okay, it looks like it it's coming to an end. So either one of two or one of three things will happen. One is we'll look over here and there will be a church. And I think it's actually up here. Two is there will be a road that goes north. Or three, there'll be a gas station. Um, if it's the church, that means we're in the middle of Acheron. If it goes north, that means we're by Riverside. All right, we got zombies quite a bit farther into the woods here. So let's duck in farther. I also saw a farm fence, which t leads me to believe we are not near Ekron. I won't know till we actually see a building of some kind, though. Yeah, there's zombies all the way, like, in this part of the forest. So we are getting to a point where the zombies are moving farther in, so we got to be careful. Like, it's fine if we aggro one or two, as long as we aggro them where I can see enough to fight. I haven't seen a north-facing road yet. I'm guessing we're close to the road that would turn north towards there's a bunch of farms and then riverside. Um, if that's the case, that's a big group of zombies, we're going to have to go in farther. If that's the case, uh, we might take that road north and uh, try and hit up some of those little farms out there. Uh, usually they actually have an okayish zombie pop where there's like actually going to be zombies you have to fight on a reasonable level. But uh, we'll see when we get there. Okay, there's a dirt road up here. This is not something I anticipated, so... Where are we? There's a building ahead. Um, I believe the tires will get damaged over time, driving through grass and all that. Suspension too, maybe. If you take it slower, they'll take way less damage. Okay, so we did find an art farm. This is excellent. Uh, I'm not seeing anything here, really, zombie-wise. So we're just going to try and sneak into this place. Have ourselves a looky, looky look. Gives us some place to sleep. Probably gives us a source of water.
All right, leather glove, let's go. Okay, we get to stay here for a little while and operate, that's cool. And we're putting this away because it's too much for us to carry right now. We woke up having a nightmare, like barely an hour after we went to sleep. Cool, that's useful. I like that it considers it tomato stir fry. We're not cooking it. It's it's just cut up tomato in a pan. I was like, nah, that's stir fry, that's fine. Alright, so let's check out these other two buildings on property real fast, since we just woke up from a nightmare anyways, it's gonna take us a little bit to get back to sleep. Might as well see what we got working for. Uh, welder mask, definitely taking that. One more tent peg, and that'll be enough for a actual tent. Cool. There's not a whole lot in the shed. Garnho's a pretty decent weapon, though. Um, I can't boil a rain uh, rain bucket easily. I th I think it won't boil at all, even. Like that. That's not one. It's like not sure if it's a bug or what it is, but it's been that way for a long time. Unless they changed it. Okay, so I need 2x, so I can have stakes or sturdy, I have to have sturdy sticks either case, but I need stakes. Okay, so we're going to put this away for the moment. 
Because if I find steaks or... Well, actually, we can make steaks, can't we? Tree branches. Okay, that'll work. So... So we want four stakes and two sturdy <laughs> sticks. I believe sturdy sticks you get from, um, we have a saw, right? Yeah, we got, oh, do we have a hammer? I don't think we need a hammer. I think we're okay without a hammer. Yes, this is the new foraging system. Um, we're super low skill at it, but as you can see, I can put my mouse over it says, okay, materials are abundant, food is common, animals are rare, medicinal plants are rare, and other is extremely rare. Because you can get some pretty exotic stuff now. Like you can just find a box of nails. I mean, as we gain skill, we'll actually identify stuff as we see it so we don't have to look at it, so we can go, oh, twigs, I don't want it, put it back in the ground. Stuff like that, but we're super low skills, so we're just basically we're looking for tree branches. Okay, two. I think we need a total of six tree branches is what's what's gonna be happening. I'm probably gonna destroy our kitchen knife doing this. Or no, I think we need four tree branches and two or a singular log. Checking. Sturdy stick requires a plank and a saw. Okay. So we, we will need to um we'll need to find a log. Or we'll need to be able to make an axe and then use it to chop down a tree for a log. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and for the record, we are taking a penalty when it comes to uh, foraging right now because it is foggy. So that reduces our ability to see stuff. So this is zero skill foraging with a penalty. Yeah, I think this fog panel is going to ruin our ability to find stuff. Found a sheet of paper. Because basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get what I need to build a tent. Because with a tent, if we get caught out in a pinch, we can actually just sleep just about anywhere with it. So like even if we just go into like a bathroom, you know, we could just in the bathroom go, okay, well we're just going to put our tent down in the corner and get a proper night's sleep on the bathroom floor. Uh, yes, I'm only at fairly heavy load. 
fairly heavy load, you can kind of get it. Like, the penalty is very, very minute. Um, it's when you reach heavy load that the penalties start to become more meaningful. A smashed bottle, lovely, love to see it. Pretty sure you can. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Yep. Um, I don't think I've ever made a cut. What does it take to make a cut? Um, is cot something you find, or is that a mod? Because I've I don't think I've seen a cot. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they're not like cots like you hang between trees. They're like the green ones that are like a metal frame with the uh, the fabric pulled across it. Like military style cot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stretcher bed. Come on, surrender me some branches. And a log. Like realistically, we'll probably end up getting um six branches. Up, up, up. All right, we've got our four branches for stakes. Yeah, I, I think it's like two or so that you can catch find a log. So my hope is that we potentially find six branches, we find a <coughs> chipstone, and that's just because branches usually come in pairs. We find a chipstone, um, I'll tear a piece of, piece of clothing from inside the house, chop down just one tree, get our log, make our sturdy branches, or sturdy sticks, Okay, could be level three. All right, I've got our six branches. So what I'm gonna do is instead of searching more in the woods, we're going to go out here towards the road more, because if it actually counts as a road, we can find stones there pretty easy. Um, I like this more because it's not 100% RNGs. Like, the new foraging system, you can actually be somewhat deterministic. Like, right now we're in an urban tile. We get entirely different stuff. I'm not taking twigs, sorry. So, like, we can see that this is an urban tile, so we have one set of loot, versus if we're in the horse, we have a different set of loot. So you can actually do a lot more with this. Now, granted, do I miss where I can just walk into a corner, hit right-click, Suddenly I'm standing on like 30 berries and my food problems are covered. Yeah, but I think that was incredibly overpowered to the point it shouldn't be a thing. Paper? Don't want it. Yep, 
And so it's like not specific about what you find, but it's like category. So it's really nice. Like I do think the new system is way better than the old system. It's just not as easy to get your mind around the new system as it is the old one. Like the old one is just right click search, stuff shows up in your pocket. On the new system it's like, okay, you need to walk around. Um, taking like walking around focused helps, you know, crouching helps, uh, fog hurts. Yeah, the problem is it doesn't seem like this road is counting as road. It's it's just counting more as oh wait there we got we've got road we got proper road. This is where we find stones. But I do I do think this is a more interesting foraging system. When it first came out, it had a lot of roughness to it, and that stunk. But um, after their first like quality of life update to it, like only a day or two after they um, they dropped it, and I will back up my save. It was alright, way better. Okay, well I don't want to push up and fight these zombies, so we're gonna back out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's no room for improvement or anything. There absolutely is. But I will say I think this is a better system than they had before. So far as like, one, it making sense. The idea of me being inside like a little square box of a wall and then standing in the corner and every single day being able to fish up like 30 berries didn't feel like it made sense. Oh yeah, like people being able to pull like actual axes and entire jars of food and nails and all sorts of stuff. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah, like I said, I think it was just being so used to where you could just go anywhere. Is that just glue? Just straight up getting glue? Alright. I've I have found crayons. I found a football. I found like a spiffo. It's really hoping to find a stone. Just one chip stone. Come on, just give it to me. Don't fight me. Come on. Oh, did you die to a server crash? Like, the server crashed, it brought you back in an unsafe spot. Um, I believe you can enter your smirk. We're gonna start working our way back. Just cause. All right, more branches, sure, whatever. Cause uh, we are starting to tire ourselves. We got too much on it. Gotcha. Yep, that was the that was the other day, and she died in a very unsatisfying way. That was one hundred percent my fault, and I knew better, and it was very disappointing. Because um, it was one of those moments where it's like, I know I should pause, but I'm not going to. And then because I didn't pause, we died, and it was dumb, and it shouldn't have happened. Okay, I appreciate all the... I appreciate all these branches, but I actually need you to not give me branches. All right, maybe what we do is we give up on trying to build a tent right now. We've got some of the ingredients we need. 
Uh, we wait till we get out to the road proper, and one of the times we'll search on our way home for a... We'll search on our way home for the chipstones we need. I think right now we're sitting on 10 branches. And I could start making them into a bunch of spears, but I don't want to. Like, if weapons get short, then yeah, we're going to make some spears, but we're not there yet. Oh yeah, you can poke like two, three zombies and suddenly it's just busted. Carpentry. And I'm moving these to the fridge because we can make these into stir fry. I actually don't think the hamburger patty we can, but the rest I believe we can make into stir fry, but they need to not be frozen for that. Okay, I think that'll do. We'll sit down in a chair. I should sit down at the couch. You know, we're going to sleep, because we're pretty close to, to tired, so we're just going to go ahead and sleep. Oh, right, we can make stir-fry, and that'll get us food for the go. Um, this is going to be a temporary thing. What we'll end up doing is we will push up from here and try and get into, like, I think we're near Akron, but I'm starting to, like, doubt myself on that. But uh, we'll end up pushing to wherever the actual, like, next city is. And once we reach that city, um, depending on the city, we'll decide where we're going to set up. Um, if we're still, I'm going to actually bring up the map while we're waiting for this to cook, because that should take a minute. Yeah, so we're still center-ish map. There's West Point. Yeah, this is the river. So river Riverside's up here. Uh, is Ekron down here then? And Muldrow's down this way? I don't remember. Basically, we're going to find someplace center map that we're going to hit first. And we'll make our long-term base in that area. The things I'm going to want to have at our base is that there's a gas station we can use. There's a body of water. No, no, we're not we're not past the riverside. So if you look at the map. So this is West Point over here. Riverside's gonna be up here-ish. 
because the river goes this way, it comes down, it comes up, it makes a big sharp turn, and then it comes back around, and then Riverside would be at that spot. So we're, we're a pretty strong hike from Riverside. Do I want advice on the map, or do I prefer working blind? I'm not sure what... Oh, you're like talking where we are relative to places? I don't mind at this point, because I have a pretty good idea my way around the map, other than like super secret locations. Like cabins in the wood kind of thing. Yep, we had the map for West Point. But yeah, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Maldro is southeast of us, and then um, Ekron is south, maybe southwest-ish of us. Like, if it is southwest, it's south by southwest, I think. I could be wrong. But I know I know Ekron is close-ish <coughs> to center map. A uh, bit off to the west, I believe. Versus Muldrow is, uh, yeah. South to road. Are you saying from where I am, like in the woods, if we just go south, we're gonna bump into Ekron, like the road to Ekron? Is that is that is that what I'm hearing? Posture check, you did catch me leaning forward. There were zombies. Okay, then my guess would be west. Okay. I mean, it would be nice to pick up where our previous character had failed, which this is a new map and all that, so it's not like it'd already be. Gotcha. So west by southwest. Hello, zombie. That wasn't behind me two seconds ago. Right, then if it's the road I'm thinking for, uh, that should bump us into the gas station, because that would mean we're on the north end of Ekron. Well, depending on your situation, hunker down or go for a walk, or go for a drive. We're going to wait to eat that until we're hungrier. That moment where you're like, I'm pretty sure I turned off the oven, but I'm also not sure I turned off the oven. So even though I'm like 99% sure it's fine, I don't want what little stuff we have to burn down. Yeah, we're good. We should drink water anyways. Uh, sorry, I missed. Does what happen in real life? Oh, hey, the, uh, for, like, did I leave the oven off? Or on? Um, I think I've only done it once in, like, my entire life, where it's like, not, like, left the oven on, but then, like, wait, did I leave the oven on? Now, I have gone back to check if the garage door is open. Nope, no bottle, no cup. 
I mean, cups one unit of one. That might be strength one. So I'm a little worried about the fact that we found zombies in these trees already, that we're looking at zombies in trees. Because um, that would suck. But we're going to check this out. Because I do, I have found I do like Ekron as a starting point for these runs. It's uh, it's not high pop, it's not low pop, it's somewhere in between. Like, like a little bit lower than middle pop. Um, it has everything we require for a start. Like the only thing that can be usually missing is the um, the generator magazine is often not there, but that's not the end of the world. But there is a gas station right next to a tiny little lake, which is perfect for our needs. But yeah, my thought then is, like I said, we would uh, we'd get in there, we'd get ourselves situated, where we can basically survive, kind of thing. Uh, you know, food, water, all that. Uh, once we have that, like we will finish wiping out Ekron, and then we can begin our campaign against the rest of the uh, area. All right, wreck in the middle of the road. We could find a water bottle in the trunk, which would make our lives way easier. Hey, Gladys here. How's it going? Empty bottle. Sure. We did gain one strength. Cool. Okay, so this is one that we wait until we are super getting hungry. Okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken by what road I believe this is, we will walk up, we'll see a little lake on this side, and then we're, uh... No, that particular one was a wreck, so there's no seats to look into. When when the car is crashing, you can usually tell by if the door is crushed in. You uh you can't get in it. Ooh, I think I'm wrong. Yeah, which means then this would go left, and then we would have Ekron, which means we might actually come up on the west side of Ekron. Which is fine. Because west to east, there's not a whole lot there. Yeah, no, I've I've been adjusting it where um, they shouldn't be posting quite as often. There's one that posts every half hour if there's enough messages, and I believe that's the thank you. Uh, there is one that posts every 45 minutes with a higher message threshold, and then there's two that post at one hour at a much higher threshold. Um, I actually don't see the highest threshold one very often. It's just, for whatever reason, you can't... I wish I could have them timered off of each other. Where it's like, it would play one message, wait 15 minutes, play one message, wait 15 minutes. But that isn't a thing. They're separate timers. I can't put multiple messages on one timer. So, it's super annoying. Because what ends up happening is you'll have like no message, no message, no message. It'll blast out three messages, no message, one message, no message, three messages. It's just like you can't. I've I've tweaked the settings and tweaked the settings, and tweaked the settings. And they can't seem to get it to do what I want. Oh, this road curves. This might still be okay. So the pro and the con here is it might take me a day or two of clearing to get us into the gas station. Maybe more. Yep, 
Yeah, latency can be a problem. But our goal is going to be basically get ourselves established in Ekron uh, at that gas station. Uh, start clearing out Ekron, all that. Yeah, I found... So, the cars are way better than they were when they first came out in the multiplayer. Like, they had some quirkiness. Um, but I still find there is weird stuff that can happen with latency with the cars. Like, I've, I've basically been in the mindset most times, like, I don't drive the car with other people most of the time. And if I do, I drive really slowly. Yeah. And it makes sense that the cars would be the difficult thing. Yep. Yeah, and no, I've seen a number of the multiplayer servers where they'll hard cap to say the max speed you can go is like 50 or 45 or 40 or something like that just because of that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, they did talk about one of the reasons that they had um, held the multiplayer as long as they did was there was some weirdness happening with desync with cars where sometimes you'd bump and it would just basically, the math would go to absolute crap and it would kill your character in high latency situation. Like the physics, just some of the numbers, whatever reason, got wrong and just death. Um, I haven't personally experienced it, but I also don't drive nearly as much as some people in multiplayer. Like, I'll I'll walk to places nearby and all that. Okay, I think we're probably getting pretty close to Akron, if I'm not mistaken. And we're not seeing many zombies, which is good, because it means we're not going to have to fight this whole way. It also means later trips, I can safely run part of the way. Well, safely, quote-unquote. Alright, so first group. And they're coming from in the woods over there. Oh, we got another group over here. Okay, so this is one of those ones we probably can't sneak around. Because there's groups on all sides of us. I'm mostly trying to scout out where Ekron's at. Not so I figured when I started seeing the big packs, so Alright.
Yeah, and I figured the road goes straight to the gas station. I'm trying to avoid having to fight the huge group. So I can sneak into the gas station. There's food, there's a place to sleep, there's all that stuff there. So my hope is sneak into the gas station, get a night's sleep. And then from there, we can start clearing, but we'll see what happens. There's a good chance I just get pushed out. I should just cleared the group on the road. Um, just quality of life, mostly just even informational, not even really stuff that even affects gameplay at all. The only gameplay affecting mod I have is Pillow's Random, Sp <coughs> Pillow's Random Spawn mod, which doesn't really give me an advantage or disadvantage, just takes away my control of choosing where I spawn. So I think I retract my plan of sneaking around in the woods and we just push straight in through the zombies. Uh, we're about to be pretty dehydrated. Um, bring up the map, it's going to be bright. In theory, I should be able to just cut across straight to the northeast and hit our cabin. The danger here is I can't see, like this screen, like now that I'm here, the screen is basically black. If I'm walking straight into a zombie, I have no idea. Because uh, like I said, I have a filter on, um, on OBS that makes it about 10, 15%, or sorry, 15, 20% brighter. Like I can start seeing this grass here and these flowers here, but this whole green field is just pitch black for me. Uh, so there's a zombie wearing all black in there. I would just basically start running because most likely I would bump into the zombie and shove them out of the way or just get away from them. And then when I got to like the grass I might turn around and try and figure out where the zombie was behind me. Okay, so the next day I think we can run a good ways here. Um, we finally do have a bottle we can put water in, which will go a long ways to keep us from having to retreat as fast. Yep, um, the first one, the, uh, the first attempt we had today, we had a day zero water turn off. 
which would be, I believe, the fifth one we've had on stream where we started it, we went to a faucet, and there was just no water already. Oh yeah, we've had it. We've had it six times on stream, and there's like three or four of them were all in the course of like one week. We had it. And it was like game. What have I done to offend you? And it wasn't like we just did a ridiculous number of restarts that week either. I think we probably had something like seven or eight restarts over the week because they're doing ridiculously hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's really possible. Zero is possible. Like, I think the worst we've ever had was, I think it was, like, day zero water turn off. is like, day two or three or four that the power got turned off. We're like, all right, so this is just, okay, we're playing a six month later. It's just spring for some reason. Oh, like a, um, the military, um, barracks. You can sometimes get lucky and find large backpacks in there. The end of the dirt road heading from the north of the road. I'm going to bring up my map again, try and figure what this out. Okay, so you're saying it's at the end of these dirt roads? Yes, yeah, so it's up here somewhere. Okay, right. good to know. I'm still going to go back here for now, but that might be a good... Because that'll prevent me from having to walk as far. Um, and usually the zombie populations at those barracks are not bad. Um, like, usually you'll find, like, 15, 20 zombies, something like that, which is way, way, way doable. I think I'm... Ru no, we're not running. I forgot, we've run into multiple groups of zombies in the trees right by that cabin. So yeah, I think we're going to go there... Um, we'll probably be a two-tripper where we go one day to clear and then sleep there, and then the next day to swing back, grab our junk, and bring it over. But uh, that'll give us a closer um, closer point so we don't have to do this hike, because the hike is the, the annoying part, is when you have to do this long walk. Uh, you don't want to run most of it, because one, it'll dehydrate you faster, and then the second thing is... You never know when you're going to run into a pack of zombies that's just wandered into your home area and you're fully exhausted by the time you get there. It can actually get you killed pretty easy. Because, like, for me especially, if I can stop walking through these woods, because there's just a chance we just walk directly into a zombie and that's just the end of our run. Like, walking through the trees in the middle of the night is not a good time. Especially at night when we cannot see anything. There's our home. For the time being. There's a zombie following us. I hear it. 
I'm just getting out in the open before I even deal with it. Zombies? So yeah, we just basically walked through a group of zombies. Oh, duffel bag zombie. Sweet. And for once, it's not using the pitch black duffel bag that you cannot see. Yep, I'll eat that. And I just scarfed down the sandwich immediately because it was already not fresh. So there's a good chance it would actually just flat out spoil soon. Another day of fog? Come on, game. Did I, did I... Did I say something to offend you? I don't think we worry about bringing anything that we don't already have. So we're just about coming up in day four. We've killed 130 zombies, so we're doing doing a little less than 50 zombies a day, which isn't surprising because we're spending so much time walking back and forth. Once we get established, though, it'll be pretty normal for us to kill two, three, four hundred zombies within the course of a day. It's just the early game is kind of a little slow because you're trying to get yourself situated. Um, a lot of times you end up breaking weapons and being without weapons, just luckily for us we did find that truck, and while the truck was useless to us, uh, it had a pretty good cache of weapons on it. So we're saying there's barracks up this way. There's dirt road over there that they merge and then there's a barrack. So my hope is that we come up this way, meet to about where those dirt roads would be leading to, and then cut over to them. Um, and then the hope would be that we get ourselves set up, because usually where there's the barracks there's like uh, 4 to 12 of the um, like little houses. Uh, it's usually pretty easy to get at least a couple of those little houses that are safe for you to, to sleep in. 
you know, as in there's like windows and doors and that protecting you from a zombie just strolling in at night. I'm a little annoyed that we have heavy fog because this is what the second or third day we've had fog out of. I think this is technically day five. Yeah, and this is heavy fog. That means we gotta watch for the very tippy top of zombie heads. Yes, yeah, so there's a zombie next to that car. We will be checking out the car. I I am far more tolerant of rain than fog. Like when you have the tropical storm rain, yeah, you can't see, but usually, ooh. All right. Ooh, and it's a land raider. And it's a little beat up, but doesn't look like it's full on wreck. All right, no keys between the two of them. Taking a quick walk around, because a lot of times when you see this one, you'll either find the keys nearby, <coughs> or one of the zombies would have the keys. Since the zombies didn't have the keys, doing a quick walk around, seeing if I see keys. They're really hard to spot, though. If they're not, like, on there. Like, you'll, you'll find them in the grass and stuff sometimes. I'm going to go with we're not going to find it. Uh, even though I've never had any luck checking the other doors. Because usually just all or none. This is disappointing. Yeah, no, it's basically the idea is there in the middle of switching out their tires. All right, this isn't in great shape. What's your gas at? Yeah, I had no gas anyway, so this wasn't going anywhere no matter what we did. Um, let me check the map. Um, I think we keep walking on the road for the time being. I do feel like we're going to have to cut through the trees, but I feel like we should go a little farther first. Well, yeah, now there's a couple of these like story things so, like that one it's missing a wheel you'll have one wheel that's destroyed next to it and then another good wheel and all the tools to switch out oh so you're saying there's a dirt road to my cell at the bend All right, we gotta stretch. Um, I'm gonna make sure there's not a zombie right here at this car, and then I will. Uh, then we'll do the stretch, and then we'll go south here. All right, it is a wreck, so we're not gonna be able to get into it. It'll be strictly if the trunk has anything for us. Well, we will not be getting into the trunk. Um, so I am gonna do a stretch, but maybe keep my hands close to the keyboard. I'm going to pause. I've learned my lesson. Okay, and I always like when I'm in the middle of streaming, I look over at the stats and I see clips, I'm like, I wonder what the clip was. Because some, some of the clips you all take are fantastic. Yeah, no, I kind of figured southwest is going to be where it is. Oh yeah, we've, we've had the Riverside main drag just a corpse field many times. 
Um, that's a big partly because before I had Pillow's Random Spawn mod, the vast majority of the time... Okay, there's the dirt road. Oh, yeah. No, I like when people are like, oh, what town should I start in? It's like, okay, your choices are basically this. If you want to be dealing with an obnoxious number of zombies, you choose Muldrow or West Point. Muldrow's loot is crap by comparison to West Point. Um, Riverside, on the other hand, has a fairly good loot, but then it also has a pretty reasonable number of zombies, where it's not too crowded, it's not empty. Oh, it's just the barracks. Okay, that's different. Yeah. This might be an okay place to stop along the midway, but if there isn't a water source here, we won't be able to use it really that well. Are you... Are you in a suit and tie in a barracks? Excellent. There's a random corpse in the grass that wasn't our doing. No, we were there um, a couple runs ago, actually. Yeah, they used to all have them. Um, not military loot, but, like, good backpacks and all that fairly regularly. This one has nothing, though. I'm gonna go around. There's one banging on that window. Just take care of that. Never mind, they're inside, so we'll just open the door. I don't know where they went. There they are. Yeah, this one to me feels more like summer camp-ish. There's not like a true barracks or something. It's just a bunch of bunk or a bunch of beds and lockers. Some picnic tables. This is like where you'd pull up your vehicle and you'd... It's not glamping, but it's also not camping. It's something in between. Because glamping is when you have, like, the super nice RV or... You know, like, you're staying at, like, a nice log cabin kind of thing with AC and all that. Alright, well, we're just going through a bunch of windows then.
So the pro and the con is <coughs> this does give us kind of like a halfway point, a little closer to a halfway point, in fact, that we can come from. The downside is there's no water here. Not unless I'm missing some like little hiding building, but I don't think we are. Uh, which means basically we can come here, rest, but we're still going to have to back out the whole way or f manage to get our, our ground enough that we can uh, get to a sink. Um, there is a lake near the gas station, so if we can get that far, we can just drink from the lake. There's literally no loot here, which is which is fine. The loot wasn't the biggest thing; it was more the staging ground. Yeah, no, I don't think there is any buildings. Like I said, this this seems to me like a campground kind of thing. I was hoping for anything. Oh no, this is perfectly fine. Like I said, this gives us a halfway staging ground. So I'm going to close this one up. Because this is one we can sleep in. The other ones, unfortunately, because they're locked and we suck at strength, I had to bust out the windows. Literally no loot. And exactly, specifically, zero loot. Alright, I'm still holding off and eating the stir fry because that hunger it deals with is amazing. Yeah, no, if I had a hammer, I might actually take these all, like all the ones that we don't need apart. Those are considered hospital beds? Okay, sure. That's fine, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming they just use the asset hospital bed. These aren't intended actually being hospital beds. Because there's no way this is like sprung up for them. Yeah, I know. I could forge for one. Um, I don't need to like get nails or carpentry yet. I'd rather find the book. So I don't particularly have a need here. But um, what I'm going to do is we're going to push on. Follow that road. Start pushing towards... Uh, Ekron, and then as we start needing water, we'll uh, backtrack back to our first location, or when we need more food. Yep, west of gas. Yep, now I got the mini-map down here, so we're just basically following these dirt roads out. And we're just going to keep clearing up this one main road. I'm not going to try and skip. Because, let me go ahead and pull up my map. Yeah, we're not too far. My assumption is we're coming up to the point where there's the field on the north and then the lake on the south, and then the gas station. If we can get as far as the lake, then my water problems are fine, because we can just go to Link and uh, drink from there. And then from there it'll be just um, probably eight or nine, maybe ten packs to uh, clear up the the um, gas station area. Right, we've got migrating zombies. this group. We'll just keep going the way we've been going.
lot of zombies migrating down here. That's a bit concerning. Ooh, that's a lot of zombies down there. Oh, do you have a nightstick? Officer, I need to talk to you about your, your equipment. You don't look like you have a nightstick, but I still want your vest. Yeah, there's so many zombies migrating down there. That is pretty alarming, actually. Yeah, I'm guessing that the um, there's another field over here, and that field is the one that's to the north of the gas station. Because we've got to be pretty close, because we're getting a bit towards the end of center map. So I still think we have to stick to the plan of keep killing zombie. It's just looking like we're going to have to kill a lot more zombie than I had anticipated. But that's... it's not an unreasonable amount for what we're doing. Yeah, because there shouldn't be too much in the way of woods. So we got to be getting close. Alright, we're getting flanked from both sides, so this is the reason I shouldn't be skipping them, honestly. Because that's what happens, is you end up getting squeezed. Granted, I don't think we have any zombies up in this tree line at all, so... At least... Oh, uh, no, I take that back. We got zombies up here. Alright, we're just gonna keep killing, I guess.
<laughs> That's always one of my fears when you load a mod and you're like not fully sure what it comes with. They're like, oh, suddenly I'm like, I feel like I've gotten something I shouldn't have my hands on. That's like un unrealistically strong or whatever. You know, walking around in the zombie apocalypse with an automatic shotgun, it's like, okay, well, this will just trivialize the zombies as long as I got bullets. So what I think is happening is we've gotten close enough to Ekron that the zombies have loaded into the cell, and because they're just too many bunched up in one spot, they keep spreading out more and more, so they're effectively pushing out of the city. So it means we're going to have to fight a decent number of them, so far as the population percent, to get our way in. And if we do try and just, like, straight push through the middle of them kind of thing, uh, realistically they collapse in behind us, just because they'll detect the open space and go, oh, it's time to move. But yeah, it wasn't until we got close enough to it that I think the um, the zombies were loaded in that the side I had to start worrying about that. All right. What I am trying to do, though, is get close enough that we can actually see where we're at. <coughs> oh, we got our dirt road over here. Let's check that out. Because if I can see my way to the gas station, we can decide what we want to commit to and what we don't. Oh, yeah. The the vanilla shotguns, you can you can absolutely wreck. I did a... um. The other day, I took our, our character who has, like, no aim skill and everything, and we did the accumulator. And I was like, okay, clearly the accumulator was designed without the buffed shotgun in mind. Because we got to, like, wave 11 or 12, where it's just... We were ending each wave with, like, 30 more shotgun shells than we ended with by just buying more. I shouldn't be skipping all these groups, but looking like we're going to have an absolute slog getting in here, which, you know, that's kind of par for the course for this kind of thing. I'm just trying to verify the exact position of the gas station to know where I'm clearing to, and that's not like, I shouldn't be doing it, there's no need I like to do it. It doesn't really benefit me anyway. I still have to clear. Alright, we've aggroed. I'm just walking till we find the stupid gas station. <coughs> uh, then we can just drag the zombies someplace, someplace and ditch them. And then they'll spread out from wherever I ditch them. Ah, uh, are you sure I've gone too far? My, my assumption is I'm going to cut across here and I should be lined up pretty close to it is what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking. So we're just on the other side of that dirt road. So I'm cutting south here. There's a bunch of pre-existing zombie corpses. Okay, that will be probably the main drag with the gas station right next to it. Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, this is what I figure is going to be the case, is we're going to be absolutely loaded with zombies out here. And again, me finding the location of this gas station is not something I should have done. 
so far is I should have just kept clearing up that road, killing the packs, moving up, that kind of thing. But I was just like, look, I want to know how far I have to clear. <coughs> this gas station is where I'm intending on making my base. Yeah, this is where I figure I'm going to make my base. There's a lake right down beneath me. There's the gas station. You can forage nearby with a couple of different biomes. Um, there's a whole city south of us. It's vaguely center map. You know, we had someone who did the math of how many zombies they figured were Ekron on the settings we're using. And their estimate was somewhere in the area of, I believe, 5,100. I very much believe them. Because what do you figure that ball is? Like, Because it goes down here more as well. Probably two, three hundred zombies. Yeah, 5,100. Because the base population was what? Like... 300 or 400 something? And then you multiply it by 16 times? I don't remember, like, they, they actually, like, sent me a message in, um... With like the Reddit post that they estimated the population. Now, granted, that was before multiplayer, so all those numbers could possibly be just not even remotely correct anymore. But it's the best information we have at this point, because no one's had the chance to do all the numbers and all the math and all the testing since multiplayer came out. Uh, just this one city of Ekron, which is normally a lowish pop city. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're going to kill probably more. Yeah, but Rosewood, Rosewood is both, like, higher population density than Ekron. And I would say, what, three, three times the size, four times the size? I'm talking, like, physical size. So yeah, since I've aggroed all this crap, um, like when we came in here, I'm basically intentionally aggroing it to try and draw a bunch of the hordes away from the gas station. So we're going to have a little bit of a dangerous spot here because I'm cutting through the trees. Oh yeah. Now for us, the way we're going to be dealing with this... Um, the entire plan for clearing this is what I should have done in the first place and not walked all the way over there. Is basically just kill zombie and keep killing zombie in this direction until no more zombie. 
which means we're probably talking five or six hundred zombie kills until we even get to set foot near the gas station, barring whatever we do with the helicopter. Realistically, what I'll probably do with the helicopter is we're going to go down to something like this giant field down here, do a little dance, and then, uh, and then ditch the zombies here. Now, you'll notice I'm not bothering running at all. Running is almost completely unnecessary for 99% of the situations. About the only time you'll see me run, and the only time you need to run, is if you watch, like when I see like a horde here and a horde here, and they're both moving into like an intercept, then I will run through the middle. You know, just to get ahead of their intercept, then I'll stop. And that's because we are faster than the zombies walking, so I am actively losing the zombies right now. That big horde, eat my dust. Well, what I'll probably do is I'll keep walking in this direction up until the point I see a tree line or anything. We'll line of sight using the tree line, and then we'll change directions. Um, any zombies that happen to see us entering the tree line will more than likely just see us hit the tree line, and then they'll come here and they'll go, don't know which way he went, George. And then they'll stand around, then they'll start grouping up and spreading out and doing the regular zombie routine. So we got plenty of trees to lose them with, so what I'll do is I'll just cut across here, and I'll put the shadow behind us facing where the zombies are, as best we can. And I'll do that for about two or three rows of trees, and then we change direction. <coughs> and now we have completely lost the horde. You know, barring me just walking directly into another one, which is unfortunately, as you can see from that zombie aggroing us right there, always a possibility. I think that's just a loner zombie. We're just going to keep cutting up because I don't think the zombies will be able to hear that one because we're probably too far ahead. But um, if we do get two or three stragglers that manage to keep pace with us, some fa fast shamblers, we'll just kill them and then that's not a problem anymore. Yeah, I think it's just the one. Okay, so the new plan is we use that um that I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it a campground. I don't know what it actually is supposed to be. Bear with me. Ah, that's bright. So we're gonna use this campground as our base of ops for pushing into the base. The downside is because of the situation with water at the campground, uh, we are gonna do a thing where basically we'll probably Clear two days, then back all the way up to the other shed place. Okay, that's annoying. Clear all the way back up to the shed thing that we, we started at. Get our water, sort that out, and then we'll push two days, rinse and repeat. Like, that's, that's probably what's going to have to be since there's just no water at that campground. We are going to have to be careful with all these zombies trying to spread out. There is a chance they will start pushing out towards the campground. If that happens, we just, we just again, strategy is we just keep walking towards our destination, kill any zombie we see along the way. Rinse and repeat until we're out of weapons or they're out of zombies. Uh, if we run out of weapons, we got to forage. The good news is we're already sitting on a pretty healthy stack of branches back at the other location. We just need stones to make them into actual weapons. Because uh, more than likely I'll make them into stone axes and stone hammers. Man, when the helicopter does show up, that big open field we saw, I think I'll draw the zombies there. Because um, I believe that should be about the right range to draw the zombies away from the gas station without drawing too much to the gas station, or through it as it were. Uh, we'll see, it's, all right. it's always hard to guess the range. Alright, we got zombies right there, that's not great.
zombies up here, that's potentially problematic. Um, if the hordes are moving here, we might get pushed all the way back to our place and all the information I just said can go die in a fire, I guess. I'm trying to, like, run parallel to them. I feel like that's going to be an us tomorrow problem if I can help it. All right. Oh, someone see me? I think they're just flat out leaving. Like they're going somewhere. Oh, don't you, like, we have this whole area, don't you smash the one place you got a door. I believe that's migration. I don't know why it's migrating that way the way it is, but I don't also understand. Hey, hey, stop it. Nothing got your attention inside there. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, yes. So if they destroyed that cabin, I'd just go back a row, but I'd rather be in the front row. Okay. Yeah, I'm just surprised they're going that far. Okay, a hydrate? I can do that. Actually, I have a whole lot drink, and I've learned my lesson from the last time. I'm going to finish this drink. And then when I go to retrieve the next one, I'm pausing. Um, I didn't hear a meta event. Not saying it's not, but um, usually when a meta event happens, you have bunches of groups moving around. That was just one group doing its thing. And I understand they're moving to open spaces, but usually the um, there's sort of a battle between where they want to focus on urban versus fill up empty spaces. So, it does, I do find it weird that they went past all of this open space and just wandered somewhere to the north. They're not trying to skip any zombies that are anywhere even remotely close to us. We kill them all. Everyone must die. to use it but that means one more branch for us to make weapons with versus the tent the tent we may never need but we might as well make because I mean why not Um, if zombies find me sleeping in a tent, I probably die. 
Uh, they'll run up to the tent. Usually you'll wake up as they reach the tent, and so you'll wake up to your character starting to stand up and then hearing awful crunching noises. So while you technically usually don't die in your sleep, you are made to die in your sleep. It's the same that happens like if you leave your window open and a zombie climbs in, sometimes they'll just get right next to you before you wake up and then it's just... It, it doesn't matter that you woke up, you're just already getting hit as you become aware. Like there's... While the screen is still black, the zombie is moving in to do the kill. So we don't want to use a tent, except for in a pinch. Yep, yeah, that happens. Zombie sneaks up on you and you're like, don't even realize you're in danger, and then suddenly it's too late. We've had that happen before. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've definitely had at times where the game is loaded and I'm already hearing all the crunch from many zombies to the point, like, you start hearing the screams even before you're aware you're past that. But yeah. The danger of stuff like being inside the house, for example, though, is you go to run and because there's nowhere to run, your character just bumps a zombie, runs to the corner, and then they just get gobbled up. I mean, by all means, hit shift and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, there is a reason why the way this almost always starts is you start out, you loot most if not all of a building, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, it's just one of those things like, uh, just don't leave the window open, if you, if you cannot secure the place, you just don't sleep there. I honestly would rather wander around, like, pass out tired, than sleep in a bed than, like, okay, there's um, there be zombies, let me just sleep in this completely insecure place. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, there's times where in a pinch where you're like, I am maximum exertion, maximum sleeps, barely managed to get away into a building, they don't see me, I'm in the room, the window's busted, they are like, well, if I walk outside, I'm just gonna die. Like, I, I get those things happen. But that's usually you go to sleep and you're also dead, but you just cross your fingers and hope and pray. Um, there's a good chance if you drank the bleach, you may not have already died, but death may be coming for you. Oh yeah, I, I am entirely down with bathroom sleeps. I have done that one so many times. Bedroom's not safe, go into the bathroom. Like, especially a lot of times I'll go to the bathroom because, like, the bathroom won't have a window. I'm like, this is perfect. You know, the odds of the zombies just randomly deciding to attack your door are fairly negligible unless they physically see you go in there. 
Oh yeah. No, the uh, the garden hose are solid. Their durability is not amazing, but it's it's pretty good. The damage is decent enough. The range is excellent. They got pretty good knockdown too. Like the garden hose is just generally all around solid weapon. The downside is we're getting low on weapons, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of zombies with weapons for us to use. Like, Garnho does have fairly slow swing speed, which is a downer, but with the range you can get away with a lot, especially with the knockdown. It does have pretty awful stamina consumption, though. It's not it's not objectively bad but it's it's significant enough okay this time because i'm grabbing my drink and i don't want to die grab my drink be right back because for those of you who missed i believe it was the thursday stream we died in a very upsetting way, where basically I did this, where I was like, okay, I think we're relatively safe. And just the time it took me to turn around and do that, a zombie strolled in and got us. <laughs> we'll see how long it sticks, though. That's that's the question. Learning your lesson and, lesson and then doing what you're supposed to immediately after and continuing to do its different things. Nah. Sorry, I was saying goodnight to my wife. So they're shifting around. I'm going to wait till they stop, and then we're going to aggro them. Well, some of them. The, the, I want between one and four is what I aim for. Once we get actually decent weapon skills and decent weapons on standby, then like I don't mind running up to the pack and be like, give me, give me all of it. Okay, if we don't reach the gas station before the power's out, that's fine. Like, because we'll, we'll figure out the generator thing. Like, because I'm not going to need gas for a while, but I will want to have the generator and all that. Yep, that she is. I told her no more coughing. So, like, you know, she's still sick tomorrow. She's just, she's just not listening. No, <laughs> it's just one of the many, ins like, not inside jokes, but just teasing things they do. Yeah. 
like we also jokingly say it's like it's against the rules for the other one to like die or whatever so you know Alright, so tonight when we're in, in character, yeah. So tonight we're probably going to run back to the um, the cabin where we actually have food and we can get water and all that because by the time we're done here, our water bottle is going to be spent, which means the next day we'll end up thirsty. And then we just finished our food we had on hand, so we'll need to restock that. Imagine when you get your long blunt weapon up that these garden hose probably wreck. Because you can, like, even at like zero, you can two, three shot most zombies, and then the knockdown is there as well. And the range is so long. Like, the only thing that doesn't make them amazing is that swing speed's a bit too slow to do anything, like, really spectacular with. Like, it's not going to do anything like the katana can, where you just. Pop through zombies like no one's been. All right. You got a nightstick for me? It doesn't look like you do. You got a shotgun. Um, I'm probably not going to carry the shotgun itself because they're super heavy and I don't have the carry space. But the shells I will take. Yeah, I think they both have the rain I range. I believe the sh... I could oh no he does have a nightstick. Alright, let's talk. Yeah, I I personally am still a really big fan of the crowbar. I know like when you're talking damage and all that, it's just objectively not great. But the durability is just nice. Yeah, for me it's um when you're talking about so like one of the problems I run into with these runs is basically I care about how long I can make a weapon last before I find another weapon. So the longer the weapon lasts, and that's like kills per weapon kind of thing, the better. So a crowbar will get me through a lot of zombies before it fails me. Yeah, in my head that's always um, unjam. And I need to get over it, but yeah. Thank you for the reminder. Hopefully actually, oh, oh we had a stutter there. I need, I need to get better about actually doing it. Um, so if you think it's basically like chambering or unchambering around. Yep, it also unjams your gun. Which is which is the only like my mind only goes to X for unchambering or unjamming my gun because once you take like a couple hits in condition, guns can get pretty obnoxious with how often they'll jam. It also works out because a lot of times when you're in the middle of a gunfight, you'll think your gun like when your gun jams, you'll think you need to reload. Especially if you're dealing with a gun with like a pretty big magazine like the nine millimeters. Oh yeah, no, the crowbar is definitely a solid weapon. It's just in the um 
when it comes to like a DPS perspective, so like number of zombies you kill within time frame, it's not great. But when it comes to the number of zombies per weapon, it's really good because the durability is so absurdly high. Um, the only the only weapons I'd argue probably compete with it would be some of the stuff like. Uh... Oh, I've used like so last couple of runs we haven't had the opportunity to use guns much. I definitely use guns. Usually when it comes to using guns, what I'll do is I'll wait till there's a helicopter. I'll uh, grab whatever gun I've got the most bullets for, and I'll bring it with me. And then when the helicopter shows up, we start blasting until I'm out of bullets. And then, you know, then usually, unless it's a very rare gun, I'll just dump it on the ground. Or dump it on a body and wait till we get another one. Or if it's got really good mods, like one time I had a 9mm with both like the uh, red dot and laser sight, and I'm like, okay, let's go. So that gun I didn't drop on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it's the crowbar just has better durability than the lead pipe. Uh, the lead pipe he has less fatigue and more da I think the lead pipe actually has better damage output. Yeah, now that and that was like honestly not that many bullets. I think we had what was it like thirty something bullets? There's times we've gone out with a shotgun where we were walking around with sixty plus bullets and just helicopter showed up and we just started blasting and blasting. And you still got forced off because of the sheer population, but you know. We called the zombie horde down by 100, 200 bullets in the course of a day just because, you know, going nuts with a shotgun. Maybe. I... I don't honestly know. I do know I like it for working on gaining maintenance just because it sticks around so long. I would argue it's probably more maintenance per weapon kind of thing, but not more maintenance per swing kind of thing. Like that's what that's I feel like almost all of the um, statistics working in favor of the crowbar is it's you know X per weapon as opposed to X per time. Yep, that's the way it rolls. Um, usually we end up, like on here, we usually end up having the nightstick be one of our highest ranking weapons. You know, it'll be something between the nightstick and our hunting knives are usually the ones that get up the highest because nightsticks I find the most frequently of the uh, the long or short blunt. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that, because the screwdriver has decent durability. Another one that could be a competitor would be the uh, the claw hammer. It's not quite as fast hitting, but it's got really good durability. I, I feel like all those ones with pretty okay-ish durability, the good durability that have at least relatively okay swing speed are pretty good. Nightstick is definitely another one I would say is probably a good one for getting maintenance on. Because it's, it's got a pretty solid swing speed. I think that one you'd probably want. Yeah, I like the nightstick. Like, for the longest time, I'd say my favorite weapon is the crowbar, then the nightstick. But at this point, I would say the hunting knife has overcome the nightstick for me. That said, nightstick still is probably top three. Garnho's definitely up there with the uh, the others as well. Like I know the shovel is probably better, but I feel like the shovel's swing speed is much slower than the Garnho, and it's pretty hard to get me on board with really, really slow swing speed weapons. Good. Well, I hope you have a very good run where the only deaths are the zombies. Or at least however long will uh, set yourself a new benchmark. Oh, zombie behind, zombie behind always goes first.
We had um one of our runs, not yesterday because I didn't stream yesterday, but the day before that. We uh we spawned at this farmhouse and I really wanted to get a bag off someone. And so we're trying to just systematically kill the zombies. And we did get through as something like 15, 20 zombies barehanded. You know, before then, you know, eventually we pulled too many. It's like, all right, well, the jig's up. It's time to go. Like, it tried to do a thing where I kited them around into a circle to just try and single out the one with the large backpack we want. But unfortunately, large backpack was the one who lost aggro first and stayed with the group and then consolidated. Yeah, it's super hard, though, when you're talking about 16x pop, because we'll aggro one, they'll start making noise as they move towards you, which then draws others, and it just becomes this whole train in no time. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, press face against zombie. See who has more more will. Like I usually refer to it as the meat grinder, with good reason. And that's one of the reasons I usually don't sneak around too much in this mode, because. It's so impossible to sneak around anywhere. Like, you can sneak around in the woods fine, but once you get anywhere meaningful, there's just too many zombies to sneak until you've cleared it out a bunch. And then usually when you're clearing it out, you don't want to sneak. You want to drop the zombies. Like, I'll, I'll joke when we're in, like, the mode where we're just fighting stuff. is like, oh, we aggroed something. Great, that's fine. We'll just kill more. Like, great, they're coming to me. It may not be on the schedule I want, but it's fine. They're technically making it faster. All right, we need to back off and sit down. Um, I don't believe we have more food on us. That's okay for now. Oh, I should put that in my back. I'm going to kill this one next cuz kind of, like kind of my priority is anything behind me when I'm clearing goes first cuz you never want to be pinned in. Cuz then you aggro this group, you end up backing up, you aggro the next group and now you're in a problem. Otherwise then I'm just kind of rotating and pushing our way through, not like trying to narrow focus. Okay, that's actually a pretty sizable group up there like all that was hiding behind that tree. Before I forget, thank you for everyone who's been tuning in, who's been chatting, who's been lurking, who's been following, doing the bits, doing the donos, subscribing, hosting, rating, all of that good stuff. It all helps, and I really do appreciate it. I do hope you are enjoying the stream, eh? Don't you consolidate at me. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Styori Samaritan? I'm not sure I pronounced that right. Like, I feel like there's a second word there that I'm just not catching where the break is. Um, and congratulations, Weird Smirk, or sorry, Weird Smirk. Integer Smirk, Weird Flex is best, Flex. Um, when we have the helicopter show up, we will do a prediction, and that's the moment we become aware of it. Uh, if it becomes aware by means of the helicopter just showing up, which is actually probably not a thing of the fact we don't have an emergency station. Like, I don't know, because that, that one I feel like the, the first few seconds is usually, like your circumstances then, is usually one of the major factors on, okay, 
how bad is the helicopter going to be? Because you catch it before it even shows up, and you can get into position where you're safest. The helicopter can be completely non-eventful. Or, when I should say non-eventful, you can have the entire situation under control start to finish. Versus when you don't know when it is, and it just shows up and you're in the middle of fighting a whole bunch of zombies, then it becomes a very eventful situation. Even worse, like, if you're in the middle, like, you're trying to clear to the bookstore or something in Riverside, and you're in the middle of, like, this one road you've cleared and you haven't cleared around, and you're really in there fighting, and then you hear the helicopter show up and you're like, oh, F. Because the entire population of the city closes in from all sides. Yeah, these zombies keep getting pushed out, which is fine. We just keep killing and eventually they'll stop having zombies to push each other out with. The answer is death. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm along an edge, so they keep kind of pushing to the edge. But yeah, that's the reason I'm not just pushing straight in for the gas station, is we'd absolutely create a black hole where the zombies would keep wanting to collapse into that point because it keeps going, oh, where's an opening I need to move zombies to? Oh, hey, there's a big opening with a big giant pile of corpses in it. Um, and where it's taking us this long to kill the zombies, this is going to pick up speed a lot. As time goes on, um, it's just right now we have kind of okay-ish weapons. Like the nightstick is nothing to be upset about, but uh, the stamina and strength situation really kind of makes it take forever to fight because we have to keep backing off and sitting down. Now, if I get my hands in a couple of hunting knives, we'll just fight late into the night. Okay, and there's... Oh yeah. And usually in practice what I found is we actually will um, unfit, weak, and obese. We'll all start getting close to going away at the same time. Obese is usually the first one I can fully get rid of. And I mean, when I say get rid of, get back to the healthy stat, not just overweight stat. Um, then it's usually strength and then fitness. And that's just because once you start shedding weight, unless you're forced to eat a bunch of ice cream and that just to survive, you can just burn the weight fast. Um, no, literally if you actually watch me when I create the character is I just start with whatever the character is, male, female. It just seems to end up that, for whatever reason, a bunch of our female runs tend to do better. But it's not been exclusively that. Like, one of our longest runs was um, Long Prather, who was a dude. is that I don't take the time to differentiate between the genders at all when it comes to the characters I play. Like, I don't name them, I don't change their cosmetics, I don't do anything. Just set the skills, go. And part of that is when you're doing these kind of ridiculous pop runs, you're going to have false starts. Is that actually a mechanic in the game? 
I don't think there's the game differentiates between the genders in any way, shape, or form. So far as like stats, mechanics, or anything like that. All right, we're going to go ahead and back off at this point. We're not sleepy yet, but we're going to get sleepy on the way home. The reason we're backing off is we're right about to hit the second tick in hunger, which you take a strength penalty when that happens. Weird. That would be a very strange choice for them to make. Like, that, that would be the very first thing... I understood, like, I've heard them having any type of difference between the genders. Oh, there's walking away. I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to head back to our cabin. Um, does that, is that mentioned anywhere in like the wiki or any, any, um, any resource that, yeah, so that, that's, so that's the thing. There is more that ties into that. Like how much I'm fighting every time I'm swinging my weapon, it's burning some calories. Um, anytime I run, I'm burning some calories. Anytime I climb a fence, I'm burning some calories. Like that, that reduces your calorie bar and all that. So you can have a significant difference depending on how active your character is. But I, I would like to see more than someone saying, hey, my character was faster, like male to female, like this is faster than that. I, I would like to see, you know, like the wiki say, hey, we've done, you know, people have done testing to do this. Or, you know, someone who sits there and says, hey, here is a video that we've gone through and tested again and again and again and again. You know, and all that. Yeah, I'd say if someone who... Go off someone of what someone who code died. Like, if, if they could show me that, I would absolutely be like, hey, you know, prove it to me. I would I would love to see that. But that's one of those things like, mm, they've avoided making the genders different on so many things. It'd be so weird for weight gain and hydration to be the place they're like, yeah, let's make them different. I'm trying to remember the exact direction we want to go. Um, okay, so about, about to the T and then we turn. According to Igna, Enigma Gray of um, the Indie, the Indie Stone, which so he's he's an actual developer. Gender has no effect beyond the appearance of character model, and we have no plans to change this. And that post was as of eight months ago. So yeah, there is there is no gender difference. And you don't get much of a better source than one of the actual devs. I actually don't know if he's a dev. He just works for the company, so... I, I don't know what his role at the company is, one way or the other. But yeah, so, so we have word of mouth from the company itself that gender is purely cosmetic. And that wasn't me trying to go, let me prove you wrong. It was... Like, I hear this and I want to make sure the information that is going out is correct. Did I already skip at the T? What, where, where are we are? No, we're not at the T yet. Okay. And for the record, if you look that up, there was a Reddit post about 10 months ago on that... You know, because I was just searching as we were walking. 
that they put up that someone said, hey, does the genders make any difference? And the very first response that was upvoted was from the devs saying, no, it doesn't. So yeah, so play whichever gender you'd like. It makes no difference other than how your model looks. No hitbox sizes difference. No, um, no nothing. Because doing that kind of stuff gets you really bad PR these days really fast. But, but that's what I'm saying, is you're saying that someone did a code dive and they found it, and I'm saying the developers themselves came out and said it wasn't the case. And I'm going to trust the developers over pretty much any other source unless someone can, like, absolutely prove it and I mean like them recording you know several samples of having a character that they just stand this character still and go okay we've created a character it's female they're going to stand perfectly still and we're going to wait till they dehydrate time it repeat that with the male character repeat it several times you know set the temperature to a specific temperature using debug like that type of testing is like okay if you can get that but the problem with code dives is there's tricks, especially since a lot of the code dives that they've been using have been on them. I don't know if they have the latest code with the code dives. Because I know, I know the code got leaked a long time ago. Like, and it, and it put the project on pause for a little while. But I mean, an official response from Indie Stone to me is about the, the best response you can get so far as the way their game works. Right. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, they had, I, as I recall, wasn't the history that someone like broke in and stole their computers or whatever? But yeah, the, the point was the code got out. Not by not by intended means. The code got by got out. You know, someone stole it. Whatever. Yeah, and that was I want to say a really long time ago that happened. Yeah, and that's another thing that can happen. You can have functions that exist in code that aren't called anywhere in there. Yeah. Now, like, if that was a post from the dev saying no and we don't have plans to go and it was five years ago, it's like, all right, you know, that might be outdated information. But it's like, okay, this was basically before multiplayer, of course, but that that to me, it's almost like things like, no, you don't like hydration between men and women. Why would you make that mechanic that's different? Like, that makes no sense to me. Because then you'd objectively make one of the genders, quote-unquote, better than the other gender in-game, and that gets to be a whole animal you just do not want to touch.
Yeah, looking into this more, they say there was um. They've been talked about different metabolism and push power between the genders, and the person responded, that is just something coded early on during the research phase, but was never implemented or used. So yeah, it's it's code that is present there, but it's basically, it was just, it's leftover code that's not implemented. So we're going to eat the meat patty first, because when it cools off, it's going to become a negative happiness for us. <laughs> oh, and that's totally fine. Yep, that's like, and that's all the things like the the choice between obese and underweight, like those kind of things. Underweight, you eat lots of fish and stuff, and goes up. And, and I agree, like, I would rather them have, for the individual characters, we get a lot more selections of what we can do with them than be like, okay, gender matters. Because then also, the danger is when you get into the genders, it's very easy to quickly get yourself into the area of harmful stereotypes. Most of which are based on bad science. Now, granted, there are some based on good science, but most of the, um, the stereotyping is just not good. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's, and like, I want to say you get a harsher penalty for fitness than that with um, obese, but I could be wrong because I couldn't tell you the last time I went underweight. But like, if you have a high availability of food, yeah, underweight is a very solvable problem very easily. Especially if like, if you can get just to water to fish. Like, just every time your character gets anything beyond, I think it's, it's not the highest one absolute stuff, it's like one below that that you're able to eat again, you just shove fish in your mouth as fast as you possibly can and you will gain weight. Versus like, there isn't an amount of berries you can realistically eat because the time it takes to acquire the berries, you will lose weight. So 
surprisingly, cabbage is a really good way to gain weight too. If you're growing a whole lot of cabbage and eating it, you will you will balloon. Yep. Now you get a little bit more out of it. It's just you'd have to be sitting there having someone basically pass you berries at all time while you just shove them in your mouth as quickly as possible. gonna run a little bit because we can stop and sit down at some point um, if you're talking about without respawns it's you just basically keep killing and circling an area um, eventually the zombies will stop coming because you just keep knocking their populations down um, that's also fairly true yeah Yes. So um, that's also fairly true when you're dealing with respawns, so long as you're staying away from areas that are really, really high pop. So like, what you can actually do is if I'm, say, on the west end of Riverside, as long as I take the time, you know, each kind of morning or whatever, I walk outside my base and I do a lap around my base and I kill any zombie in sight from like maximum range of my base. I'll go and I'll kill them all deliberately. And so the advantage with that is as you're doing that, you'll just keep them from pushing in on you. You're never truly safe with respawn, though. I mean, you can expand that circle out farther as well. Uh, but then what you can actually do is, you know, as you build your base and you start making walls and you do all sorts of stuff, it's pretty much anywhere visible from my base. So if I go to the corner wall of my base and I look out in that direction, you know, whatever direction that corner's in, if I can see a zombie... They're required to die if I, I'm not, like, in a bad spot or whatever, like, I'm exhausted or whatever. Because as long as you're doing that, the number of zombies you'll have just randomly roam up to your, your location are fairly low. You know, outside of helicopter and stuff like that, which will drag zombies to you no matter where you are. I shouldn't say that. That's not entirely true. There are areas in the map that are just so away from everything, you won't see many zombies. Yeah, that has been one that's been discussed a lot. One of the things you have to take into consideration is not all of the zombies on the map are moving at any given point. Like, these cells are effectively being loaded and unloaded as you move around. So zombies that are off the cells, like you haven't explored, they're like nowhere near you. They're not really active, it's just saying how many zombies are supposed to be here, that kind of stuff. Like, it'll, it'll remember where zombie positions were. But it does do, um... Buffoonery isn't what I want to say. Like, it's it's doing stuff. But it's not doing as precision stuff as, like, the tiles nearby you are. And that's just a practicality thing. Like, if they were, you know, dealing with the artificial intelligence of every zombie everywhere on the map at the same time, you're, like, it doesn't matter what computer you're running, you would just fall over dead. Now, it said, I couldn't see a mod that does something like every n amount of time it just goes to each cell and says, okay, your population's supposed to be this, and then using kind of like the spawn respawn mechanics to bring the population up to that amount. But that isn't really migration as to bringing zombies into existence. And maybe they could make a, a mod that does that. But my fear would be is because they're manipulating zombies all over the map that are nowhere near you, 
you'd risk having serious performance issues on a very regular basis. Like that's that's one of the things that's actually really amazing about how well done Project Zomboid is. You're talking I you know, you saw like earlier I had on the screen like six or seven hundred zombies following us. Like some ridiculous number of zombies on our tail. And it was fine. The game, like, you know, we had a couple frame drops and all that, but the game was going fine. And when you think about it, that's six or seven hundred zombies who each have are dealing with like pathfinding and do I hear you? Do I see you? That kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, there's there's buffoonery they're doing behind the scenes where they probably are clumping zombies into a group and saying, okay, these zombies are moving as a unit. So they see and hear you as a group to reduce the processor load and all that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like, there's there's definitely times at the respawn, it's like, okay, you have this stairwell that the zombies keep spawning in the stairwell for whatever reason. So you're ending up with this ridiculous population of zombies underneath a set of stairs. And we've, we've had people on the stream who said, oh yeah, I heard a bunch of zombies under stairs, and I want to get rid of them, so I sledgehammer, and they got completely overrun because there's like 30 zombies that are there so they like physically got pushed out by the sheer number of bodies like that's that stuff I mean that's an extreme example of course but you know where you've gone and meticulously cleared a bathroom and you're like all right this house you know I've cleared it all the doors and windows are intact there should be no zombies inside this building and then you go in later and a zombie gets in there and just kills you because it's spawned in there like, I, I definitely get that annoyance, concern, frustration. Like, out in the wild, I don't care if they just appear. If, like, as they're appearing out of sight, it's like, okay, I can just pretend we didn't see the zombie in the trees, because that actually happens a lot. Like, I do wish the, um, the scene area mechanic was stickier, if you will. Because, for one, we realized it was based on the chunk, not the cell. So the idea is a 10 by 10 square. If you've passed through it, I think it's like 72 hours or something like that. Or it may not be that long, but there's a period of time that that chunk is disallowed to, you know, have zombies spawn in it. And then once you've been outside of it enough, then the spawn timer begins for that cell. Or, or chunk. Versus if it was cell, it's 300 by 300, which is, you know like a city block kind of size maybe a little bit bigger because we were trying to use that to basically make it so we had no respawns nearby but when we left an area we get there but when we realized it's a chunk it's like oh that's just too small to be meaningful i would have to like zigzag through an entire area as a regular thing just to disable the spawns there and it's not really, like, it's not I want to make my character have to cheese it kind of thing. It's I want it to naturally be that the area I'm operating is not respawning, but areas I leave are on a, on a larger scale. Like, you know, west side of West Point, if I'm operating there, most of the spawns are disabled, and then the east side probably still turned on. That kind of thing. That's just not how it works. Or if it does work that way, it's not. It's described incorrectly. Yeah, and there's that's that's part of how the might like if I'm not mistaken, the zombies can move across cells as part of migration. I could be wrong about that, because they definitely had where I've been fighting in a cell, clearing a cell, without the respawns, and the zombies absolutely seem to keep moving in. So I'm pretty sure that is a thing. Where it says, oh, this cell is supposed to have 2,000 zombies, that cell is supposed to have 1,000 zombie. My, you know, 2,000 zombie cell has only 500, my 1,000 is maxed out. Okay, send, send the zombies. But I, I don't know all the inner workings. I haven't, like, studied migration how it works in the game. Because it doesn't change the fact that I just murder all the zombies. If they're dead, they can't show up. But 
but I'm sure they actually have a lot of logic we don't know about that goes into how do the zombies move, how do they spawn, how they respawn, all that stuff. Like, that's some of the stuff I, um, it'd be nice to see documented, but I also understand, like, having that documentation would probably allow you to cheese it way more. And that's also the kind of stuff that they would very easily, you know, go, okay, well, we're going to make a change to improve this, and then, you know, the documentation's bad two seconds later. And there is a cost to keeping up documentation so far as human power. It's why in software dev you always have problems where quite often you'll find documentation in libraries way behind. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I've done definitely lots of dev with, like... Ours was an SDKs, it was more in APIs and all that. Um, now, I work with um, stuff like .NET and um, ASP, a bunch of stuff like that, or ASP.NET, .NET Core, which is now no longer called .NET Core, and all that stuff. And the good news is, Microsoft, because of just how popular that platform is and how heavily it's used, the documentation of that is usually pretty solid. I can't speak for what the, in other languages, but usually it's pretty solid. Now, some of the stuff like the testing frameworks that we use, that uh, that gets dicey as hell sometimes. Or also, a bunch of the um, the front-end stuff gets to be an absolute mixed bag sometimes, too. Thanks so much for the follow, uh, Pan Santiro. Welcome to the stream. Ah, going to bed? Well, I hope you have a good sleep and that you've had a good weekend so far. You take care. Yeah, so I definitely have done plenty of time with Legacy, and like for example the company I worked for we had what we called the, the Monolith, so that was our Legacy stuff, and it was still .NET, but it was like old .NET, you know, back when .NET was Windows only and all that. That was dangerous, I shouldn't have done that, but that's okay, it worked out. Yeah, I actually... When it came to the dev side, like I teach nowadays, and I still do a lot of dev work as part of that teaching, like it's not just I write a course and that's it. I actually write software that students have to, you know, implement the features I ask them to implement, and then I have to build out unit tests that, even if their code doesn't compile, will still return results. You know, usually the result is, hey, you, uh, you jack something up, it's not compiling. That kind of thing, It'll, like give you a little bit more details than that, because usually when you get to that point, we'll start checking the uh, the AST, or we'll just have it like in really bad cases, we'll just regex the code if the AST doesn't even work right. So there's lots of dev work. It's just very, very weird dev work. Like usually, usually when you unit test, you don't care what's inside the code so much as did it produce the results you wanted, versus when you're teaching someone like. Okay, here's how you use if, here's how you use else, here's how you use if else, here's how you use case switch. You know, your test, you want to go, hey, 
they got the right result. Did they use case switch though to get the right result? And fail the unit test if they use the wrong thing, which is just not the way you write unit tests. Education is where uh, best practices go to die. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've definitely done my fair share of dealing with stuff written in C. Oh, but I didn't have to deal with COBOL or PTEL. Uh, what else? It, like, I've dealt with stuff written in really old Visual Basic. I've dealt with stuff written in like really, really old PHP. But none of, none of the older, older languages. Like C is the oldest language I've probably dealt with on a professional level. Now, just randomly tinkering, I've dealt with assembly in that, but I wouldn't say I did anything meaningful in it. It's mostly, how does this work? Let me poke at it. The job the devs love to hate. So are you, uh, you a middle manager? I'm teasing, but yeah. Usually when I hear devs upset about anyone, it's almost always the middle manager, or it is, um... Oh no, most of the devs I know love QA. Like, QA is some of my favorite people. They keep me from working the weekends. Yeah, it's like, break... break absolutely wreck my stuff. I want you to find every bug before it goes into production, because when it goes into production, it is a bad time for everyone around. But usually, most of the devs that I've worked with, the, uh, the people they don't like dealing with is they don't like dealing with, you know, middle management kind of persons. Um, and that's not universally true, but some of the middle management persons are the ones who go, Okay, I need, you know, I'm gonna set this deadline, and the devs will go, Well, okay, so we told you it needs 40 hours and you're giving us 20. Well, yeah, but you need to do it anyways. And you're just like, that's not what, that's not what I'm telling you. Like, you, you can't just wave your hand and it takes half the time. There's going to be sacrifices. Either one, I'm going to actually still put in the 40 hours, but it's going to be outside of working hours. Two, we're going to cut some crap and the quality's going to suffer horribly because we're not going to have the time to properly QA it. Or it's like three, you're going to throw more bodies at it. And then half the time, they try and throw the bodies at it like last second when you're going to blow the deadline. You're like, yeah, that's not how this works. The bodies need to be involved at step one. Me taking the time to catch these people up to where the project is now is going to take more time than for me to finish it. Or you get into Mythical Man Month stuff where, you know, they go, okay, well, we need this project done in two months like well yeah it's a year-long project it's like yeah but okay we'll just throw more people it's like right but there's diminishing returns on that you know in the classic argument you always have you know with the boss like all right i want a baby in one month well you can't throw nine women at it that's not how it works it takes nine months that's the only time it takes is nine months no matter how much you want it <laughs> Yep. Alright, meta event. We'll see where the zombies go. Oh yeah, I've had that one a number of times. Or it'll be one of those things like... Well, I mean, and especially right now, that is one thing that I am very fortunate in the type of projects I'm working on right now, the, the type of projects where I do my piece and then I put it on the table and I go, okay, that's your problem now. Like, it's it's not coordinating on the dev side so much. It's like, I do the dev side. And then it's coordinating with, okay, one of the camera people going to be ready for us to uh, to film. 
okay, when are the designer people going to be ready to do the graphics? And so I don't have to, like, the only coordination I have to do with them is like, okay, you're going to have a camera person ready in two weeks. Okay, I will, you know, one week and six days, I'll go get my hair cut, get everything set up so that I'm ready to record. And I'll be there. But um, the thing we've been running into where our stuff keeps sliding is just you'll have the person in charge of a project and they'll just leave the company. And that's like, okay, who's organizing this? And everyone looks at each other, it's like, well, yeah, that person's not here anymore. It's like, well, someone needs to be organizing this. But yeah, with the amount of turnover we're having, like, I mean, not just the company I work for, in, in not, I mean, like, the, the turnover's everywhere, but in the software space, it's like, okay, you lost a person, how long is it going to take you to spin up the next one? Oh, like, three months? Alright, well, just take that expected time to be done and just roll that back. Yeah. Well, and I went through that a while back. Um, I had worked a very un unnecessarily stressful job. Like there was nothing to create urgency in the company for any of this. It was it was all one hundred percent self created urgency. Um, but it got to the point that like it was actually like affecting my health. The amount of stress we were being put under from like the boss breathing down our neck, always shifting priorities. Everything was priority one. Like trying to pressure us into working more hours and all that kind of crap. You know, all, all the stuff you hear from nightmare jobs. And I eventually burned out and just said, you know what, forget it. I'm, like, I'm out. Like, I, I put in the notice and everything, but without me in between people, like, a whole bunch of people just bailed at that point. Because they're like, no, I'm not interfacing with this person directly. Not, not without this cushion between us. And I was like, all right, I'm going to public education. Like, that that was my plan. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This work is unfulfilling. It's, you know, it's stressful and all that. At least public education, at the end of the day, I feel good about what, you know, what was done. Because I, I had worked education before. Um, luckily, the way things worked out was I got picked up by the company for now that was teaching tech and all that. So I got to keep the use of all my experience without all that and like I I didn't even want to write software I was so burned out from that job like and that was after over 10 years in the industry but um it took a while working that new job to get me like really back into actually loving what I do again No, no, I, I totally understand that, Coherent Dreams. But that's that's what you don't get about half of these companies that's like, okay, well, you know, this person wants to make an extra five bucks an hour. Hey, I'm doing good. How about yourself? And then you're like, okay, so this person's asking for like a 2% raise. And you're going to beat them up over it. Like that raise is barely going to be keeping up with inflation and cost of living changes. So they're basically asking to be paid what they're already being paid so far as value. Just, you know, accommodating inflation. And you're going to tell them no?
that always blew my mind. It's like, what, what do you think it costs to replace a person? Like, when, when you lose someone in a technical role and all that, you're costing yourself $25,000, dollars $35,000, if not more, just in the time it takes to spin up the new hire. Like, they want to come and they want to ask for 2000 bucks, Done. That's it? Done? Sure. Go. Save the company money. Just save the company, like, $26,000. And especially with nowadays, so many teams, they'll be like skeleton staff, like you really need 10 developers and they'll give you a 9. And of course when you have 1 leave, usually like 3 leave. I don't like these groups being like right on top of each other. That is annoying me. Because it's making pulling them dangerous, which is why I'm kind of going this way. Hmm. We have these big groups everywhere, and this is annoying. That's fine. We, we have to deal with it. That's just the way it is. Right, we got a hand axe over here, so this is a good group to pick on, because we might get a, an additional weapon out of it before we break this one. Quality of weapon I'm using has dropped dramatically in a couple of last seconds. Oh yeah. No, I know. And we definitely have a bunch of branches already set aside. The problem is spears are also heavy. So the issue is I can only carry a couple spears with us. I have no carpentry to speak of, which means my spears durability is going to be absolute garbage. So like they're good and like each one will kill a couple of zombies, but then it's going to break. And so that's 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 the problem there. Yes, yeah, spheres wreck face. It's just outside of the uh, the garden fort. The durability is absolutely garbage. Yeah, I believe, I believe it's um. Carpentry that helps spear durability. Alright, that's bigger than I wanted. Hey, hydrate. Um, it could be maintenance. I just know there's skills that are matter. The point is, I don't have either of the skills that matter. <laughs> I don't have carpentry, I don't have maintenance worth anything. Which means when I make spears, they're really, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know maintenance is involved in repairs. It's the making it I'm not confident on what's involved. Okay, until I until I have skills to make better craft weapons, usually I'll go for the um I mean, data science is definitely a strong place. I couldn't tell you how the IBM certifications work. Like, I, I don't know, unfortunately. Uh, big data is not really my strong place. Like, I know I know a bunch of machine learning stuff and all that, but it's not not knowing the health of the market. I know big data is huge. I know um, Python and Java are pretty popular languages for dealing in big data. Like, I know Python right now is really big for big data, big data stuff. All right, we got a stretch. This works out. Actually, if you bear with me for a moment, I'm going to pause because I need to use a restroom and I'm going to get something that I can have as like just a little bit of a snack kind of thing real quick because I'm feeling a little bit peckish in real life but what I'll do is I'll use the restroom grab that snack and then I'll stretch so I'm gonna put up my away screen I'll be back in just a minute in the meantime make sure you're eating drinking stretching and taking care of yourselves I'll be right back Okay, I am back. I'm just going to do my stretches real fast, and then we're going to be going to go to continue.
Okay. Now oh, we should sit down and recover our stamina for a minute, which works out because then I can open this box of chocolates and totally misbehave on what I'm eating. Because I was good for most of Christmas, and now I'm not going to be so good. Because I got the munchies. Right, we want to go to this group up here because they have a hand axe for us. Which would be good because we're getting down to really garbage weapons here. There's the hand axe and that guy. Or girl, I can't really tell. that nimble? Yes! Oh yeah, hand axe is a pretty nice weapon. I, I won't complain about hand axe. It's better than getting the hand axe, honestly, is getting that point in nimble. Nimble is easily the most powerful skill in the game. Like, not even... there's not even a competition there. So we are at almost 50 zombies a day at this point that we're killing, on average. Nimble is us moving like this. So it is extremely powerful for being able to fight multiple zombies at a time and fighting longer because it lets you get away with a lot of stuff you otherwise cannot get away with. Like if I... If with no Nimble, you miss with a slower weapon and the zombie's close, you're just... You're, you're taking a hit. Whether or not it kills you is one thing, but you are absolutely going to take a hit. With a good couple points in Nimble, though, a lot of times when they go for like a grab or whatever, you're fast enough that even though you totally botched a swing, you can just scooch out of range while they're making their attack. Like with two Nimble, you can practically just backpedal and the zombies can never grab you kind of thing, as long as they don't get to the sides of you. No, a nimble is just movement speed. It's just, as you're backing up, because I'm faster, I'm getting my hits in and then backing up out of range, and it keeps the zombies being able to like Congo line them where you can just keep poking them before they can close the gap on you. So your attack speed's the same, it's just between your attacks you get a little bit more distance. Oh yeah, Nimble 3 is excellent. 
You can actually get to the point where Nimble gets a little annoying if you're using a really fastening weapon where you're moving so fast you're getting out of range of the zombie too quick for your own attacks. Because then you have to kind of kind of stutter step. And that can be a little bit annoying to deal with. But it's, it's still... I would rather have that issue all day long than just... You miss time of swing. You poke it and then you die just because... One swing was mistimed and the zombie just closed the gap on you and finished the job. And there is no amazing trick to uh, leveling nimble, it's just... Moving around in combat stance gives you a little teeny tiny bit of XP as you do it, and that eventually adds up to more levels. Uh, so kind of the trick is, are you fighting a bunch? Congratulations, you're going to gain more nimble because you're running around in combat stance fighting a lot. Oh, we kill this zombie, then we head back because we're getting sleepy. So, Laro died to me being dumb. Uh, the TLDR, we were clearing out zombies. Um, I had gotten myself not frustrated, but in a hurry. And the reason for it was we had basically got ourselves set up with a van that was almost in mint condition. Nearly a full tank of gas. Um, we had the generator. We knew where it was. We had the connection magazine. We had a base location that we were just about ready to start building a base. I walked inside the gas station and an alarm went off. So I was annoyed because it drug a whole bunch of zombies from a helicopter we had previously dumped off to the side. So it set us back like three or four in-game days from being able to start working on our base, which means probably a whole another helicopter. So it's like kind of trying to go fast type situation. Um... And as such, we were burning ourselves out of stamina much quicker. I went to sit down, you know, take two seconds, and I turned to grab a drink. And that half a second that, uh... Yeah. And so, like, that, that just couple seconds that I turned to grab the drink, a zombie came up to us while we were sitting down. Like, and I immediately hit the button to, like, stand the character back up, but it was just too slow. So the zombie just strolled up, got a bite on us, and even though he got up and, ever, like, successfully and everything, it's just we already were bitten, you know, game over. So she, she died because I was not at the helm for a couple of seconds. I knew I should have paused. I even deliberately thought in my head, it's like, oh, yeah, I should probably pause for this. But it's like, ah, you know... Yeah, there's a bunch of zombies ahead of us, but we've cleared here. We're probably okay. And we weren't. That was the short, like, shortest rain ever. And I was, like, that one was very, very frustrating because it's not like the game did anything wrong. It's just, I knew better than that. But I still did it. And I was punished. And it wouldn't have been so bad if it was like early run, but it's like we had just gotten to points like we're set up. We're ready to make this go. Yeah, no, I did wrong. I did the dumb. 100% it was on me. I did the dumb. And I ate crow for my hubris. But uh, it's um, exclamation mark rip is the... Um, the clip of it and you can like see me right at the end it's like no it's not how this run's supposed to end this sucks i can't see anything and it's a dirt road so i can't see zombies on it if they're wearing all black so i'm gonna try and get out to the road i don't want to i'm probably gonna have to clear extra hordes because of it like i know there's one there i can't even clear, clear out the road 
There's zombies down here. Well, we'll just try and make it work. But yeah, like, I, we got bit. It's like, no, this isn't how this run's supposed to end. It's like, everything was great. Oh, no, and 100%, the reason all those runs after that were just garbage was I was impatient. I wasn't, like, full-on frustrated. Like, I was, I was in that fence, I was, like, annoyed with myself kind of thing. And just, that's not the right mindset to be in for, for starting these kinds of runs. So, you know, it just put me off balance for like the entire rest of the evening stream. <laughs> yeah, we killed a lot of characters after Laurel. We killed a lot, a lot of characters. That's a Rosewood map, and we haven't read one of those, so in a second I'm going to grab that and I'm going to read it. So here's your probably 10-20 second warning. You're about to get a bright screen. It's coming. Just warning you. It's going to be here any minute. All right, if you haven't, you know, averted your eyes or whatever you're going to do to prepare, you're too late. Yeah, so like that one behind her, if he wasn't wearing shoes, I wouldn't notice him until he started moving, and only a little bit. Versus where we have the, uh, the filter on OBS, I'm sure he stands out really well. Thank you for the follow, IROCTV. Welcome to the stream. The zombies are all moving around again, and that's the one thing I'm being careful about, because when they move around, that's where you can very easily accidentally aggro way more new ones. So let's kill these four, get rid of the smaller pack. But yeah, now the way I avoid that death is very simple. If you're not going to be looking at your game for even a couple seconds, and you're not in a safe that's like 100% safe, or, or as reasonably close to 100% safe as you can be, you pause the game. 
if you're playing a multiplayer, that's a different story. You just have to deal with that fate. But that is the plausible outcome at times that a zombie will just stroll up and be like, oh, snack. Yeah, that's definitely a feels bad death. I wish we knew what the emergency broadcast channel was and that I had a radio at this point. Because the helicopter isn't too far away. It's probably not today. Probably not tomorrow, but a good chance it'll be the day after. We'll see. Um, and I mentioned this before. I don't want to get this close. Come on. I need one of you. I'm backing up. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see the one. Like, yeah, that one in all black there. I would. Only, I only noticed it because, man, even even seeing that it's there, it's super hard for me to see. part I hate when you can't see and you gotta sit down and recover your stamina. Sure, any time. I hope you have a good uh, good morning or evening or whatever time of day it is for you. Oh, are we getting a second hand deck? Thank you so much for the follow, Sparhawk87. Welcome to the stream. That'll be probably X1. Maybe fit this one, probably X1. No, fitness one. Okay. I'd much rather have fitness one than axe one. Fitness one is fitness is much harder. You go have yourself a fantastic nap. And I hope when you wake up you feel all rejuvenated and ready to go about whatever it is you want to go about doing. Those points in fitness go an incredibly long way when you've got a character with zero fitness. Don't push me out of finishing this group off. I shouldn't be pulling this group anymore. I should just back off and start pulling the other groups.
I say we deal with this group down here before the group up there. Or never mind the group down here. Because we're basically just trying to keep ourselves as much room to work and keep the route back home as clear as possible. Um, but it will seem like we're making no progress. Um, keep in mind we did the estimate previously that we believe the population of the city we're trying to force our way into is 5,100 zombies. And it's a decent size. Like, it's, it's two main roads. Um, one road that's got all the businesses, the other road's got most of the residential, not quite all of it. Um, so you will end up killing probably in the area of maybe 900 to 1,000 zombies, and then suddenly we'll be able to just start really pressuring our way in. Because we'll have depleted the population enough that they won't be filling in the gaps nearly as aggressively. But until that happens, we keep killing zombies. And eventually we'll start getting our weapon skills up to like four and five and have strength of four and fitness of three and maintenance of four. At that's the point that you just start absolutely thrashing zombies. But it is a slow start. But the big thing for us is we want to push in to get to that very first building, which is the gas station for us, which is ideal, you know, where we want to build our base as well, which works out perfect. Because once we get our foothold there, then we can start pivot to attacking the entire rest. But this isn't a bad op place for us to be operating in because um, there is a really nice bookstore. Not quite the south end of town. It's like one third of the way from the south end of the town. Uh, some of the houses on the western side of town have the possibility to have a generator. There's a church which has a shed which can have a generator. Then there's some farmhouses in the areas that can also have a generator within a short walking distance. So you have a pretty decent chance of getting yourself the generator and the magazine. Now granted, if it's not in the bookstore, getting the magazine can be pretty sketch at times, but sometimes you get lucky. Uh, last time we did it right, we didn't find it in the bookstore, but it was one of the houses I believe we found it in. And that's the good news, is most of the houses have a, um, a bookshelf.
It's one of the nice things, if we can get into the uh, gas station right away and set up our base, then I don't mind, you know, taking electronics and dragging them back so we have to repair our generator, like stockpiling stuff. Versus when I don't have a base yet, it's like, ah, uh, I don't want to grab too much stuff. Because then I get a haul it all. And that's been a way we've gotten ourselves in trouble, is the greed of dragging everything around all the time. It also means I haul it once. That'll be Axe one. I really eat, need to eat soon. Getting pretty close to debuff territory. Thinking there's no chairs in the barracks we saw because with the with the other run what we did was we ended up because we were over at the uh, the ice cream parlor at the south end of town. Um, there are three bar stools, so we take the one bar stool to sleep on, and the other two we strategically dropped along the route to and from the um, from town. And so what we'd do is we'd just stop at the bar stool, sit down, rest, and recover our stamina. We don't really got that option from here because we just don't have chairs that I can think of. Maybe there's a chair in the, uh... We should check if there's a chair in the shed the next time we're back up that way. It'll be heavy to drag this far, but... I can leave it in this field as a means to rest, because when you rest you gain stamina much faster than just sitting on the ground by itself. That group keeps moving around and it concerns me. Because the more they move around, the more likely they are to just walk into you. Maintenance. Always good to get points in maintenance. It just equates to our weapons last longer. Uh, one more, then we should sit down and recover.
Alright, this will be another horde down. group of two up here and kill this group of four and one of the good news is like a lot of these giant groups were from where we pulled all those zombies together so they they formed the giant bundles um versus a lot of the other ones are gonna be more spread out so as we kill these giant groups off we're gonna get more and more not giant groups we'll still hit the occasional like 18 or and all that that you know bundle up for whatever reason Right, we should back up and recover again. <laughs> your timing! Always your timing. <laughs> And there's not nothing here. There's corpses. Somewhere in the area of 300 of them. <laughs> uh, we're just barely northwest of the gas station for Ekron. So basically where uh, Laurel was trying to take over. We're, uh, we're doing that same location. We're just coming from the other side just because that's where we spawned. We just had this weird setup where um, there's a couple of barracks up here that don't have water or anything, but they do have beds. So we're using that as kind of a, a jumping point. But um, every couple days we have to back up all the way to a, uh, a cottage in the woods kind of thing because I need to be able to get water and that's the closest place I can go without fighting through the sea of zombies. I think most of the time it's because you catch us when we're like in the middle of a new run or trying to take a new territory and fields are really good places to fight zombies because they're big wide and open and if you aggro extra you can just do more loops and circles and get around it all cool we got some loners let's kill them all It's going to be a shame when we go back to poking them with hand forks and screwdrivers. Yeah, so it's nice that we're gotten, we've gotten past those waves with the really big groups and we're getting a bunch of these little ones that are able to pick off real quick. We'll probably have more big groups kind of um, south of us. And the reason for that is because that was like the far east we took these, um, yeah, the far east we took these packs. But you can notice there's some smaller ones over here. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep bullying the little groups as much as we can, and then we run our little groups for killing big ones. Yep. Yep, we just don't get the advantage of being able to literally roll over them with tanks. Like, the moment you get the tanks in Factorio up until the, the uh, biters get really up -teched. You can just be, how am I going to assume? I'm driving right into it. Straight on, right on through. We'll let the drones repair it on the other side. And before that, it's I have grenades. I will just pummel it all with grenades. Goodbye, coal and iron. I'm not seeing if there's any weapons that stood out in that group. Um, I probably should back out and kill some of these other groups, but I really want to kill that group if I had the choice. Mmm, that's probably being spicy. Let's 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 do the safe thing.
You know, maybe tie it to like deforestation, that kind of thing. So the more trees you cut down, the worse it gets. Or the more fires you do, the more, like, all that kind of stuff. Oh, you have a nightstick, don't you? Do you have a nightstick? I can't tell. There's a police officer there and he has something. And something means weapon, and weapon means I want it. And you can tell Marissa also wants it, because I mentioned it and she saw it, she immediately one-shot a zombie. I could, like, I could see interesting modes where it's, you know, as you do stuff, it does gradually upscale the Zeds, whether it's, you know, it makes them stronger and or higher quantity or, like, whatever it does. I could, I could certainly see having that. Because then it becomes, like, not only are you trying to survive and all that, you're trying to continue to level your character and all that such that you stay ahead of their, effectively, you know, quote-unquote, evolution curve. Okay, we did anger the police officer. It doesn't look like she has a weapon, and I'm going to be pretty disappointed if that's the case, because this axe is about spent, and then we have to poke people with screwdrivers again. And it works, but I'd much rather kill stuff faster. After this one, we need to sit down again. Unless the axe breaks, at which point we're switching to screwdrivers and that anyway, so we don't need to sit down. to break out the letter openers just because I know each one is only good for two or three hits. Just burn through them all real fast. At this point, we don't care about stamina anymore. We're just down to nothing but short blades, so we start poking. Okay, so it looks like the next day is another day we have to um, back out to our, our our back base, whatever you want to call it, the, the far back one. Because uh, we're about to run out of our water bottle, and we just ran out of food. Oh yeah, Queasy's fine. 
We're just sitting among a pile of corpses. I keep wanting to skip through and kill that group because it's so small, and I keep knowing the moment I do that, I'm going to aggro one of these giant groups in whole. And then we're going to actually have a dangerous fight on our hands. I'm, just, I'm wanting to get to that gas station, because when I get to the gas station, things are going to get a lot easier for us in the short term. We also got to be careful, because we're coming up pretty close to due for our helicopter. Okay, just let them shift around, get themselves settled, and we'll kill some more. don't have a shotgun. I mean the police officer does but I don't. I got a couple of shotgun shells though. Just didn't take it because the shotgun was too heavy so I took the bullets.
my uh, weapon situation is quickly getting worse. Not made to the gas station yet. We are killing a lot of zombies though. Our weapon situation on the other hand is getting really not great. Uh, we've gone to the point of scissors and hand forks. Correction, no more scissors. <laughs> we'll get the oh okay that's not what I wanted but that's fine we can deal with this all right we're not quite too drowsy yet so no damage penalties quite yet Yep, Aroma de Corpse. back out at this point our water bottle's empty we're out of food um stamina is just about to drop below the point that we would go into exertion and we're just about to be tired so no point in staying in this fight so this one we do need to back up all the way to our uh our farther back location um we're probably getting really close to do for the helicopter um, we have passed the point that we have definitely killed more than 50 zombies per day on average already. Because we're coming up on... we're a little bit shy of day 8 and we're not quite at 400 kills. There's a good chance I'll have to kill a couple of zombies on the way back, unfortunately. I'm going to be pulling up my map. We can almost go straight this way. It's like slightly south of where this would take us. Or east, depending on how you look at it. Let's start running a little bit. I don't want to push it, but we do want to start getting our sprinting and our stamina up as best we can. Ah, 
All right, there's your skills. So we are at fitness one, strength two. We got our first point nimbled. Uh, short blunt is coming along well. Axe is okay. Uh, maintenance is coming along pretty well, and that's about it. But I mean, we're early on. This is usually how it rolls. Um, don't mind the loss of carbs, but you are correct, it makes noise, and it does tire us out. So those are the things I care about. Carbs I don't care about at all. Uh, we, we are obese. We could, uh, we could use a loss of carbs. Whoo, that was close. But yeah, right now we are at 103 kilograms, which is obese, just flat out obese. Um, checking the map again, seeing where we are relative to where we're going. We're north too far. So we can cut a little ways down here, and then we'll go cutting straight across. But yeah, now generally running isn't a great idea. The thing we're running into is I'm making a fairly long commute each time I have to go back here. So I'm trying to work on my fitness and my sprinting a little bit. But yeah, I don't want to push into high exertion if I can help it. Because we could bump into a couple of zombies just back out here doing something. And that could get us in trouble. The other danger is we're coming up pretty close to due for the helicopter and our hydration is down. Um, and running doesn't help that. I'm really hoping we don't have to cut through these woods many more times. Not that we'll have a reason to come back here too many more times. Uh, pretty soon we're going to run out of... Well, no, we got some canned stuff back here. But food's going to be a problem pretty soon, so we do want to actually make it to the gas station soon. The good news is we got a bunch of seeds here. So if we do make it to the gas station and we can get something to water the plants... We could genuinely start planting stuff right away and have stuff we grow to eat. So when the refrigeration fails, we can still actually have good food for them. For continuing to shed weight while also not dying of hunger. That's not what you want to see. Because at this point we got some damage penalties going on. Go a little more open space to work with, that's what I'm looking for. Ow. 
Come on, you need to die now. Okay, and there's one more in that group that we have lost track of, which is never a good thing. There's where we're going. Thank you, thank you, Energy Your Smoke. Hope you have a good day. So we got metal plates and all that. I can't remember if one of these had some extra weapons like rakes. I think we may have had two rakes in here. Maybe that was earlier we saw those. Oh well. I notice there's no chairs in any of that, which is fine. So we get here, get ourselves some food sorted, top off our water. All that good stuff. Okay, where did I get the can over on me? Um, still a little over our weight limit. Um, not yet I want to. The problem is I got actually clear there. I don't think I can do anything with that yet. No, we don't. I'll need to get some stones for those. I'm going to leave them behind because they're heavy. 
We can leave all that behind, actually. All right, that's what we're dealing with right now. I mean, the only thing that keeps us attached here right now is water. Because I don't have a, like, I have a single water bottle. I don't have a means farther up to get water. So if I grab the tarp, I can always find more branches later. So I, th I think we leave the, the branches behind. And I'm not worried about fire so much. Because I have a lighter, that's fine for us to leave that behind. I can also leave the stake behind here. Because I'm also expecting the helicopter, so I'm kind of just going by the assumptions like, okay, helicopter's about to be here. We'll just um plan for the helicopter to interrupt us and deal with when we deal with it. And part of the reason I'm watching right here is I'm actually killing time that's a little light, um, and we're going to eat some of that ice cream on the way out. Because then we don't even have to think about it. We're basically only coming back here for water. And if I can clear up enough to reach the lake, then I can use the lake as my water source for just drinking for the time being. But we are on borrowed time with food and a bunch of the other stuff now. Yeah, we'll finish it, just be done with it. Um, the problem with these chairs is they're heavy. 7.5, so that's, that's even for a chair that's heavy, and that one's going to be way higher. Let's take a look around, see if we have any, any lighter chairs. No, unfortunately. Oh, hey, the cooking show's still on. I thought it would have been done by now. Oh, right. I think this is the last one. Like, those chairs at 5 would be rough, but they're 7.5. So we, even if we reduce it down, it's going to be like 3, 4 weight? Maybe. Let's, let's see how much overloaded we get if we grab the chair. If it's not heavy load or more, we'll take it. I think it's going to be, though. We have room in our duffel bag, I assume? Yeah, we got room in our duffel bag. We just pick it up then. Yeah, heavy load's a little much. Um, something we should really ditch, maybe? Not really. I mean, we could get rid of the tarp if we don't want to do the tent, but... Hmm. Maybe we bring it. We'll, we'll we'll try it. It might be a mistake, but we're going for it. We're owning our mistake. Because my plan is to just get it up to where we have um have been clearing, and just chuck it on the ground there. Just like in that field anywhere. Um, if we hit the hear the helicopter, though, I am dumping the chair. Even if it's in the middle of the freaking woods, the chair is gone. Because we're at that point, the helicopter can happen at any time, and we don't have a radio to give us forewarning. Um, I'm okay if the zombie even sees us, so long as we get a chance to react. As long as we get a chance to react, we can fight and kill the zombie pretty easily. Like, a zombie with... um. With heavy load, it's fine. It's when you get a group of zombies, I have to get rid of it. And realistically, we should drop our backpack and fight, which is really kind of concerning in the middle of the woods because we may not be able, like, we might just not see it anymore and not be able to find it back.
And because I'm expecting the helicopter any time now, I'm not running today. Not, not until we have the helicopter situation sorted. Yeah, so there's a good chance that place we're just done with, because the only thing we left behind was a bunch of sticks. Uh, we can just forage for new ones. Thank you, thank you, Whistlepeak. I hope you have yourself a good sleep, and thank you for the lurk. Thank you, you too. I hope it was a good one. Okay, and just working our way back to where the barracks were. We're not going to stop there. We're just going to go right back to our killing field, plunk the chair down just in enough from the tree line that we don't have to worry about a zombie just sneaking up behind us and killing us. Uh, that'll let us get back into the fight faster between getting exhausted kind of thing. Because we can sit down next to the chair, choose rest, and we will recover stamina way faster. Um, the big concern right now, though, is the helicopters do any time now. So we definitely don't want to over push ourselves. The other concern we have is we're starting to get to the point that we actually are able to carry all of our food that we have left, which is never a good indicator. Because we do run out of food, we run into the situation where we have to make a choice. One, we back out and try looking for a farm to restock, which may not be a bad choice. Or B, if we think we've cleared enough, we try and sneak into town to, you know, get into a building, get some food, all that kind of stuff. The danger there is you can very easily get yourself overwhelmed. Helicopter. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much for the follow, Teal High Cloud. Welcome to the stream. So I'm just going to plunk this chair down right here where I can find it. And then we're going south. Because what we want to do is we want to try and draw the zombies away from that area. So unfortunately we're not in position for where we should be. Uh, my goal is to try and draw the zombies from the gas station east, and we're kind of pulling them northeast, which drags them right across the barracks we've been staying, which is nowhere near what we want. I'm going to avoid running because we don't know how many zombies we're going to see. I'm expecting a decent number. Yeah, there's the barracks. So we dropped our chair north of the barracks. It's okay if we never come back for that chair. Like, if if we opportunity arises, great. If not, it can just stay there. It's not important. The chair's pretty 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 close to nothing in our book. be going farther east. This isn't what we want. Alright, so we're starting to see the zombies, so let's cut east farther. Because I definitely want to draw them as much as we can away from the barracks and away from where we've been fighting. I am hoping this helicopter is a nice long, like, three-passer. Something that's going to be here a while. Because the longer it's here, the more likely it will draw the zombies away from where we want them to where we're taking them. And unlike past runs where we've had the helicopters constantly showing up, this time it is just the one helicopter. Um, I just didn't like the fact that the helicopter, it's like we kept clearing the same area, kept drawing the zombies. It's like, okay, we're going to make progress eventually, but, you know, it was just, it was annoying to re-clear the same area again and again. Like, more so than we already were. I don't like that the zombies are going west. West is the only direction I am absolutely not okay with. Like, north sucks. West is worse. Everywhere else is fine. East, south, cool. Do it. Because west is preventing progress forward, and then north would be basically denying us where we were going to rest between, between fights. Cool, we got another pass. Love it. Bring me the zombies. I want them all. Here we go. Got the zombies heading our way. as far west as we go. Keep ourselves all in the maneuvering room we can. Med event. Um, looks like it's pulling them north, which sucks. Don't like it. 
good news is the helicopter's still going, so there's a good chance the helicopter will just overrule the melee event by still making noise. Alright, here we go. These are zombies being pulled out of, um... I'm suddenly never forgetting the name of the town. It's like Engson or Exen or something like that. Doesn't matter. It's gonna be dead is what it's gonna be. But we are pulling the zombies out of the town now. Which is good. I could actually go for one more pass helicopter if you're uh, willing to oblige. It's okay if you're not. I can work with what you gave me. Ooh, this is a bad idea. Alright, bad idea averted. Excellent, excellent. Getting another pass. Just what we wanted. Because that should be able to rally more and more of these zombies along. Yeah, so we're getting a whole lot of the, uh, the zombies from the city over here. Which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to draw them into this field. Get them away from the town. that way we can potentially get our footing and then as the zombies start to spread out again we can just kill them off as they show up Alright, helicopter, I think you have done enough passes now, so whenever you choose to uh, leave stage left, uh, preferably to the south if you do not mind. South is good. East is acceptable. Coming back for a fourth path helicopter? Don't have that very often. At least not without messing up the uh, the day length. Yeah, four passes. All right. Helicopter says, "I am not done. I am bringing you more zombies." 
That's fine, we've hit the size of a horde where no matter how much we try to keep them bundled up, we have some peel off because they get too far away. There's just no safety way, safe way to keep them balled up. So the plan of what we got here is we're trying to group all these zombies as grouped up as we can over in this field that's away from where we're operating. Uh, we'll keep trying to draw them down. Once the helicopter does go away, there's plenty of tree lines and all here that I can go ahead and drop these zombies off on. Um, enough zombies have been pulled into the area that we're not seeing a whole lot of new zombies enter, which is good. But uh, we'll dump the zombies off somewhere, we'll back out, we'll play it safe, go back to where our barracks is, make sure we're all in the clear there, and once we feel comfortable there, we'll start pushing back out and see what progress we can make. Because usually when you manage to pull this off properly, you draw most of the zombies away from where you're trying to work, at least in the short term, which is a good way to get your footing down and then, you know, mop up whatever starts moving back in. Uh, we do have a ridiculously large ball of zombies, though, so these zombies are going to spread out a lot. Because what they're going to want to do is split up into groups of 12 to 18, and then those groups are going to want to get away from each other. So you'll kind of have this thing where they clump up and they move and they clump up and they move and they clump up and they move. Alright, going against the current, not good. We definitely don't want to be doing this. And that's the reason we save our stamina, because we needed to run a whole lot there, because I turned into the current. Don't do it. It's a bad time. Like, I mean, you, can do, you do what you gotta do. Like, if there's a wall or something, you turn into the current, but just know it is far more dangerous than trying to go with the current. Because these zombies won't turn around until I get really close, much closer to them, and it gives me more time to react, whereas when you're going into the current, you know, you're 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 walking in the zombies. You're getting them on you faster. <laughs> oh my god, the the frame skip when I turn is is really rough. Like you turn, it just jumps. Oh yeah. Okay, helicopter. You legit gone now? Um, I'm doing this because of the helicopter. We heard the helicopter show up, so we found a nice open field, let it bring us all the zombies. Um, the open field lets us walk around very safely, and now that the helicopter is gone, we're just going to ditch the zombies. And you'll notice I don't need to run, no rush, we're perfectly fine, we walk fast in the zombies, we just put as many of them in the, uh, the shadow behind the trees as possible. They lose sight of us, they go away. Just zigzag through some trees for a little while with a nice strong lead ahead of them. And then once we feel comfortably away where we don't think any of them are still on our tail. We just go a different direction. And we never speak of those zombies again. Realistically though, those zombies, because of how much we balled them up over there, uh, like I said, they will break off into groups of like 12 to 18 zombies. Those groups all want to separate out, and so they'll spread out. And some of those will end up spreading out in the way of where we're working. But in reality, we've probably pulled five to six, maybe 700 zombies away from where we were clearing for at least the midterm. But yeah, so there are uh, a couple different strats for dealing with the helicopter. My preferred strat, honestly, when I can get based up and cleared an area, is just hunker down in a bathroom or a bedroom where they can't see me and all that. The helicopter doesn't find you. So just kind of draw some zombies in random directions. Maybe they bump into your house, maybe they don't. If you're properly secured, not that big a deal. Um, you just make sure you have an exit planned where if the zombies do start banging on your front door, you just run away. 
Um, in that case, not really. With how much we have been circling around and all the uh, helicopter have been drawing all the zombies from the nearby area, the likelihood of there being much in the way of zombies left in those trees is fairly low. Um, the other good news is those trees had a lot of visibility between them. So unless I went in there and I started seeing that there was a bunch of zombies in there, I'm actually not too worried about running into a zombie because I stay away from the trees a little bit. If a zombie cuts me off, I just sprint for just a second to shove the zombie out of the way and we're good to go. Now, if the, the population density of zombies is pretty decent in the trees, then yeah, that gets sketchy as I'll get out. Um, and even worse is when you're in the trees in the dark at night where you may not see the zombie intercepting you at all until it's grabbing you and that's a fast way to die. But um, then I was going to say the other way to deal with that, which is usually what you do if the helicopter spots you or if you're just caught out in the open. Or I'm sorry, if you're caught out in the open or you don't have a base that's cleared or all that, is you just kind of find an open area away from where you want to be. And you just kind of start walking circles, just staying safe with the zombies, but trying to keep the zombies on your tail till the helicopter goes away. And then when the helicopter goes away, you just ditch them like I did back there. And like you can see, they're they're gone. We got rid of them. Um, the helicopter event is not good. The helicopter is not your friend. Uh, the way to think of it is think of the helicopter as possibly like I don't think there's a um official what the helicopter is, but. It's assumed it's like a news reporter or whatever, that you are in the exclusion zone, the military is telling them one thing, and they want to know more. So they fly a helicopter over to take a look, they see you wandering around, so they start recording you. Helicopter is super loud, so all the zombies want the helicopter, so they start following it. It's following you, and there before, indirectly, the zombies are all following you. So the helicopter just brings the zombies to you if it sees you. If it doesn't see you, it flies, does like flybys over you, um, which will draw some zombies into colliding into the places you are, but nowhere near as bad as if it follows. So strategies are lay low, hope nothing bumps into you, or the other strategy is to basically deliberately, you know, basically point at the helicopter and say, hey, come get me. And then just kind of control the crowd in a way that's safe. And I say safe in a very relative. Um, and I'm going up here because I had a chair when the helicopter showed up. There it is. Yeah, so we were standing here when the helicopter showed up. So we dropped the chair because the chair is heavy. And we ran down to that field. field. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the helicopter is what's known as a meta event. Um, it only happens once by default. You can set it to happen multiple times. And normally I actually do run with it multiple times. This particular time we are not. But, um, yeah, generally, and the other meta events are like gunshots in the distance, which that's basically, if there's a gunshot up here, a bunch of zombies will start moving that way because they heard it. Um, and then after a little while they'll lose interest and in where they land, they land kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, as, as, Coherent Dreams mentioned, it's like, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Okay, so we want to... We want to be careful, because this is where we have our, um... Our place that we can sleep out here. And there's a pretty big group of zombies here, so... We want to get rid of them. I don't have much in the way of weapons, unfortunately. We're... Getting a little, a little light on the whole weapons department. Because this, this cabin here, the window and the door are intact, so we can sleep there relatively safely. But my hope with what we did with the helicopter is that we'll have drawn a bunch of zombies away from the gas station we're trying to get to. Um, the only mods I'm currently running 
that affect gameplay is there's ones called Pillows Random Spawn Mod. Uh, so we didn't get to choose, oh, I want to be in Rosewood or Riverside. It said, I am going to dump you where I dump you, and you're just going to have to like that. Um, so where did it dump us? I don't even remember where it dumped us to begin with. Either way, um, so the way that basically works is, you know, you get the random spawn. You don't get control of it. Um, all the other mods I am running do not affect gameplay in any way. They just give me information, so I have like minimal display bars, just gives me information. Weapon condition indicator gives me information. Uh, has been read gives me information. But um, there's no additional custom maps, there's no custom items, no special vehicles, uh, no quality of life to food or anything like that. Nope. Nothing like that. I believe I actually may have list off literally every mod currently loaded. Like, if you do exclamation mark mods, it lists all the mods. It still says Eris minimap mod, but I don't actually have that loaded. I need to update the command, but otherwise it's up to date. But I'm generally I run pretty close to vanilla. What? Let's. I'm not punching. I have a screwdriver in my hand. It's a kind of crap weapon, but beggars can't be choosers. When you're doing 16 times population you are going to break most if not all of your weapons so any weapon you can get your hands on that does damage that's like better than a spoon you use and in desperate times you use the spoon too yeah now i got you Like, if there is a mod that- I mean, sure, there's probably- I'm almost certain there's a mod that lets you punch the zombies. I would argue that if you punch the zombies, you risk getting the zombie infection if you, like, accidentally cut yourself on the zombie kind of thing. Weapons getting real scarce. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I don't believe you can, but I believe it can hurt your feet. I don't I don't know if like zombie infection is a concern. I don't believe it is though. Usually stuff like that you'd you'd hear about. Okay, so we killed the pack that was over by, like, this is the room we're going to sleep in. Um, and we still will probably, if we don't manage to reach the lake, we still probably will have to back out occasionally. And go all the way back to that cabin. Because we don't have a source of water that's any close in that cabin. I'm trying to avoid that. I would like to just keep pushing forward. But unfortunately, I have just the one water bottle and there's no toilets or baths or sinks or anything out here. There's no plumbing. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to follow the road and if we do run to a big whore I'm just going to chuck the duffel bag on the ground so I can fight. Versus trying to break out the uh, break the chair out of the bag and then put it down. Um, they just cause them to move around. They don't attract them to a specific side. Which, like, is, is good and bad. So I find I would rather know what the zombies are doing, even if what the zombies are doing is not something I want. Versus when they wander around at random and you, like, get up the next morning, you're like, alright, we don't know where to expect trouble, so just expect trouble.
Like with a gunshot, you just kind of look over the zombies and go, okay, the zombies are going north. All right, so just watch the south side of the building because that's where the zombies will go. Yeah, the reason I grabbed that chair is it takes us quite a bit to recover stamina because our fitness is so terrible. Um, but with a chair, you can rest, and the rest will actually help. I'm just trying to build up my, um, my weapon skills. I understand I can get the weapons to last me longer if I don't do it, but if I run out of weapons, my plan is just to back off, forge, make new weapons. Like, there's definitely an argument to be made to try and make the, uh, the prolong the weapons, but these are kind of crap weapons anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so let's go retrieve our duffel bag. You know, put the chair up here somewhere where it's not nearby the trees, just that way when we're sitting next to it, we don't have to worry about a zombie sneaking up behind us. So like I said, my hope is... Because we were close enough that the zombies in this field and everything should have heard the helicopter, that we just drew all the zombies away from where we're going. And no matter what, there'll be stragglers and stuff we'll have to deal with. But if we were successful, we might be able to just flat out walk to the lake, be able to get water, and then get into the gas station. Or close to it. We're going to actually try and circumvent some of these zombies. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to drop the chair here. I think there's a good place for the chair to be. So in a pinch, that's where we rest. But I'm going to try and circumvent the zombies, see how close we can get to lake. If it's just still completely overcrowded, then that's actually pretty bad, honestly. Hmm, this is looking pretty bad. I was really hoping we had drawn the zombies away from here. Um, it's probably, I have probably a higher resolution. Having a very high resolution lets you not actually, like, it's, it, it's a little more zoomed out just because it can kind of fit more on the screen. I'm gonna kill these two. Because I'm trying to see if we can't sneak past them. Maybe this is just the first wave of zombies that got ditched by a helicopter. Okay, I believe this road is very close to where we want to be. Ooh, no. Yep, we did not draw the zombies away from here. So we gotta keep clearing. That's not great. Wonder if I can swing by the south. No, the south side of the lake, we drew a bunch of zombies there already. Crap. We get to keep clearing. And the big problem is going to be food. Because I got some canned goods and stuff on us, and I was hoping to get over that lake, because one, the gas station there will have food for us, and two, then we can actually start like planting cabbage in that to give us at least something in the interim. But that's not going to work out. Oh, we're pretty close to sleepy, too. That sucks. I mean, it was a helicopter day, and that is how helicopter days roll. Yeah, now I'm, I'm running at a pretty high resolution, something like 2400-something by 1400-something. Yeah, 
Like, I can look up the exact setting, but it's high. Some short break. Yep, short blade. Cool. I like extra damage. Alright, let's look at some of these next packs and see if any of them have a weapon we can spot. Because we're down to like two screwdrivers, unless we start really digging. And then we're out of weapons entirely. Well, I can forge for stuff I really don't want to. So I'm not seeing any weapons in that group. Uh, let's see if we can't sneak down this way. Alright, so these ones are migrating that's dangerous let's back out we got a big group migrating you know we're close to sleepy they migrate we go home we go to sleep we come back out see what the situation is in the morning there's also zombies all up in these trees which is a problem because they're not easy to see, and I'm not going to start yelling to draw them out quite yet. But they'll end up wandering out of the paths and all that stuff, and we'll kill them when that happens. Should probably run a little bit, because... Well, no, maybe not, because that'll dehydrate us faster. It kind of stinks because really the thing that's holding us back is that water. And that I have just the one water bottle. If we either had more water bottles, we could stay out here fighting longer. You know, so far as days in a row. Or if there was, like, water here, we'd be in good shape. But we don't have either such situation. Basically, until we reach that lake, we have to keep stopping and starting each time the water gets low. At this point, we don't have to go back for food, though, because... We, we have it all on us. There's no more food to go back for, which is a curse and a blessing. Um, and just as a reminder to everyone, I have a filter on OBS that makes the gamma about 15-20% higher than what I see. So when I say night is dark, night is really freaking dark. Um, I can barely see, like if there was a zombie wearing black in this path, I, I just wouldn't see it. 
would walk up, give it a hug, and die. So it looks like I'm looking around paranoid and I'm jumping at my shadow. It's because I can't see very well at night. And that's my intention. Like, the game, night is supposed to be scary. Like, that's, that's what it's supposed to be. I know I can just turn up the brightness and pretend night's not a thing that means anything, but I prefer to keep the games actually forcing you to make decisions like, do you want cat's eye and that kind of thing. The good news is I have one in-game hour, and then uh, then I'll start to brighten up again. All right, I can't see particularly well in this field, but I also know I cannot see through trees even more. So, lesser of evils. Where's my chair? Is that a zombie or is that a corpse? I think it's a zombie? I can't I can't tell. It's not moving. Oh no, that's my chair. It's got a big ball of zombies there that I see. What I'm trying to do, and it's probably not going to happen in the dark, is I'm trying to see if I can't get a good eye on some zombies that have anything I can use. You know, meat cleaver, machete, crowbar, like literally anything weapon -like. like I mean, honestly, at this point, I'll even take hand forks and screwdrivers. Like, we're, we're, we're tapped. Yeah, I can't see any of the weapons. We're just going to have to kill and hope it works out. I like going after smaller groups first when I have the chance. It means I can wipe out a group and get them out of here. Oh, we got at least a zombie down there. I can't see if he's got friends or not. Yeah, it's, it's pretty worth it's like, I can sneak, like, if there's a group and I go, okay, I'm trying to get away, like, that time sneaking can be useful, but, like, sneaking into places, there's just too many eyeballs. You just, you can't realistically get between them kind of thing. Which is funny, because you can train sneaking and light-footed absurdly fast with the number of zombies around. It's just... It's not particularly helpful, and then grinding it is just tedious, and honestly, like, dealing with your limited food, water, all that kind of stuff, your time is better spent getting yourself stabilized, and you know, maybe try and grind it later if you actually care. Alright, that group's moving away, I'm okay with that. No one moving this way? Cool. Ah, uh, no weapons that I'm seeing in any of these, that sucks. Starting to reach that point where it's like, no, really, weapons are getting desperate. I, I do need to try and preserve my weapons a little bit. No sign of weapons there, so we'll leave them alone. Not seeing any weapons at all. That is not good.
I hate having to grab letter openers. Anyone there? No axes, no crowbars, no anything I'm seeing. That's fine. Whatever. Aggroed from behind, not always what you want to see. Back off, figure out what we've got on us before we get too froggy here. Okay, four is fine. We can probably deal with four with just the screwdrivers. kill them because they're too close to the path. We'll keep aggroing them on accident. Or rather, we will aggro them on accident, so we should just get rid of them, call it a day with that. And we have to back out and forage, you have to back out and forage, it'll just be our life. Now that zombie down there is a replacement screwdriver, but it'll probably cost me a screwdriver to get it. Not that that's necessarily a bad trade, since it means less zombies for the same weapons. I should say less remaining zombies with the same weapons. Really don't want. Okay, we got just the one. Alright, we got our friendship bracelet on.
Not seeing any weapons. Those are all the ones I dumped from the helicopter. So let's not get too involved in that. Because they might just stay down there. Because I do need to locate weapons. Because I've got the screwdriver on me. I've got one spare, the letter opener, and I think a single hand fork. Which is terrible. Yeah, the thing that sucks so much about pushing to kill instead of the weapons is I'm not gaining maintenance skill, I'm not gaining weapon skill or anything like that. So I really would like to be using the weapons, but I don't have any extras. So if I actually pull more than I want, I do want to be able to fight that. Because otherwise I just have to run away, which, you know, isn't the end of the world, honestly. They've got a hand fork. Um, West Point is really rough. I mean, basically with the 16 times population, no matter what city you go to, step one is you loot whatever building you're in, and if you're lucky, you get through the whole thing. Uh, step two is you're unceremoniously evicted from the city, and you just take a stroll directly out of the city with hundreds of zombies on your tail. Um, after that, you would find whatever building you can that you can get into safely, whether it's just there's not a lot of zombies there, or there's a lot of places that just don't have zombies, barring maybe inside the building. Um, so you go there, you get a little food, you get a little water, maybe you're lucky you get a weapon or two. And then you turn around and say, okay, where am I pushing into city-wise? Um, and after that, it's just... Fight zombie till you're in the city. Killing this many zombies by hand. You migrate into me. I don't got the weapons for this. I'm just picking away at you. But yeah, like you, you cannot 
hold your ground in most places. The closest I've come is um one time with because of Pill's random spawn mod, I uh, spawned inside the uh, Rosewood Fire Department where all the axes and everything are. And we went, yeah, it's probably not a good idea, but I'm going to try and hold my ground. And we made it four something days. We were several hundred kills in and all that. Uh, and it got to the point that there was so many bodies in the area, like in the top floor, bottom floor, like everywhere around the fire department, because just that's what it took to fight them all, that we were getting not just a little sick, but like severely ill to the point we really just couldn't fight anymore. We were taking just too much of a penalty. And then, you know, eventually we became just overcome by the zombies. But it was a lot of fun doing it. Like, I, I want to do that thing where it's just the zombies have such absurd numbers that, you know, making it work is difficult. Alright, we need to rest soon. We're getting... And physically worn out. Ooh, you've got something on your back. Yeah, so we should cover stamina a lot faster with this than we were previous. Oh, this kind of sucks position now that these guys are closing in. So we want to wipe out this one, move on to this one, keep going, try and clear out the area to keep where we're resting safe. They're moving. We don't want to be here. This is going to be a problem soon if I don't get through more zombies faster. Like, one of them needs to give me a crowbar or an axe or claw hammer or something. Like a legitimate weapon. Overpulled, so we're actually using a weapon this time. Um, you can kill three pretty reasonably with just uh, pushing and stomping, but it's just safer for us to actually use a weapon in this. Well, that's another pack killed. getting queasy from the bodies, that's nothing new or surprising. Mm -hmm. 
pulled too many again, but I kind of figured that was going to happen with as bunched up as they were. Stop panicking. You've killed plenty of these to not worry about this. It happens, you'll go through a dry spell, and then you get like a crowbar followed by a machete or something, and then you just wreck a whole bunch of zombies, get a whole bunch of stuff. That's usually what it usually kind of boils down to, is it'll go until you find like one or two really decent weapons. And then you have a really good run, and once you get to like maintenance three and four, then you don't have to worry nearly as much. Like, I'll stop having to use letter openers and crap like that. I brought the chair to sit on, the zombies have moved up enough that I can't realistically sit on it. Alright, I'm going to pause for two seconds while I grab myself a drink because I learned my lesson from not doing that on a previous run and dying for it. So I'll be right back in two seconds. And actually, I'm going to make that like a full minute break because I'm going to go use a restroom and everything. So I will be back in a minute. In the meantime, make sure you're eating, drinking, stretching, and taking care of yourself. I'll be right back. Okay, and I am back. And I shouldn't be this close to the trees. I'm kind of just trying to make it work. Because danger is, for example, if a zombie comes right along this route, I won't know till they get to this tree. Um, I may or may not have enough time to stand up before it's already on top of us. We've definitely seen some zombies wander back into the trees.
Um, the last time we were doing a long run like this, we had really good luck. Hey, how's it going, uh, Danjato? Not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but nice seeing you. We're making zombies dead uh, and having a desperately low weapon situation. I cleared that spot and those zombies started moving up. Yeah, the moment we get like a competent weapon, we're going down and killing that group specifically so we can get back to our chair. I drug that chair out so we could actually sit at to recover our um our stamina in a reasonable space. And they just bullied us off of it because we don't have weapons to fight fast. I guess he might actually go down and fight them right now because this group may be off on their own but these ones are more of a threat. I'd, I'd like to kill this one but my fear is I will bump into that one dealing with it. Now, let's see, I should be able to pull this one little by little. That's the plan at least. Alright, so weapons time, because that's six. Um, we don't have too much from the way of weapons, but we should be okay to do six. I mean, worst case, if we kill four, we can beat up the other two without weapons, but I feel pretty okay with this. I'm sorry, I believe the command is 16x. If I have it in the uh, the about section and that's wrong, I need to change it.
any time. And thank you for tuning in. Oh, this weapon situation is getting bad. Thank you for the follow. Killer of the Gems, 1765. Welcome to the stream. check the one guy with the helmet because sometimes they will have yeah nope not this time sometimes they'll have like a uh, yes forging has been reworked um that's what this is the investigation mode um so if i were to turn it on which i will just to show you it dims the area around us if we look around for a minute you'll see like a little eye eye kind of appear above my head when we see something nearby. My character currently sucks at forging, so it's probably not gonna go particularly well. Yeah, we might not find anything at all, actually, because I don't wanna be forging into where we got a bunch of zombies. Yep. Yeah, what'll end up happening is you'll see like a little eyeball up here and they'll kind of like point you in the direction of whatever the thing is, and they can find it. Um, so I would say it's a more active way of doing it. And so in a lot of ways, it is harder in the sense that the old one you just said, pick up stuff and your person would go through and they would lose a bunch of stamina. So it's not as bad on like just burning up your stamina or anything like that. But it requires a little more effort. But one of the major things that's beneficial is the things you can find are way better. You can like just flat out find like entire jars of leeks. Uh, like you can just find weapons laying on the ground. Um, you can find boxes of nails, all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, the downside being if you just wanted to like forge for berries specifically, you're going to be a little disappointed because effectively because they added all the other stuff it somewhat diluted the loot you get so you get a lot more stuff across the board but not necessarily the individual things that you previously got like you'll still get some berries some branches some stones all that kind of stuff and there is stuff you can do to increase the odds of getting certain things but it's not like the other one where it's you know you could tick the berries checkbox wait and then suddenly you'd have 30 berries Oh, and also in the new forging system, it's not safe to do the uh, the berry juggle. Any berry, like graphically, can be poisonous, so you cannot isolate which berries are poisonous anymore without having the herbalist trait or the uh, the book. Um, not so much rolling the dice now, because there's things you can do to target a little bit. So, like, if you look down here. You see there's just a couple of trees and I put my mouse over it says okay materials are common, foods are common, animals are common, other is rare, medicinal plants are rare. So there's different distributions depending on what environment I'm in. I can go into the city and I can actually forage in the city and I'll find more stuff like nails, water bottles, tools, stuff like that. I'm out here I'll find more berries, medicinal plants, branches, stuff like that. Um, if I go to the road I'll find mostly like stones. So it's actually, you can be a little bit more more targeted, more deterministic now than you used to be able to. But at the same time, like all of those, there's more stuff in the loot table. So you can't just, you know, again, you can't just say, I want only berries and just get only berries. Um, You just, you wander around, you'll eventually find stuff. 
it's like you don't just stand there and search one area. It is about strolling around and looking, which makes more sense when you think about foraging. You're not going to sit there and stare at the ground at one place for like 30 minutes and then go, Oh, I found berries. Like you're, you're going to wander around and be like, Oh, there's a berry bush over there. So I do think it is a better system, both from the fact that it's active and from the fact that like feels like it makes more sense from a gameplay standpoint. It's just the old system was extremely powerful and you lost parts of that power. Like you got different really, really powerful things. But where if you were overweight you could best effectively negate food for like two and a half months by just foraging for berries. That's not as reliable a thing to do anymore. Because you might just get a bunch of other stuff and not berries in one one time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, when you sit there and just like, oh, it just gave me an axe. Alright. Axe me. Yeah, and it's not bad. Like, if you um forge in, like, woods woods, so where you saw, like, I had just a couple trees, if you go to denser parts of woods, you'll still get a few tree branches. Oh, no, the, the branches, or the spears are actually really, really solid. Like, the durability is absolute garbage. And, like, that's their big drawback. But they do wreck face. Like, they are objectively powerful. There is a reason why the uh, the garden or the garden fork is so powerful. It's basically a spear with its primary drawback, just not a thing. Because the garden garden fork actually has okay durability, so you can just chop through an entire horde of zombies and not even worry about it. Ooh, that almost got me in trouble. That context menu on accident. Alright, we'll circle back because that first zombie we killed, I believe, was the one that had the screwdriver in the shoulder. Like, we're probably to the point that we really should be forging to get weapons happening, but... I just want to fight and I want weapons. Up, oh, because a big group of zombies down there. a bunch more um, which it is okay we did find ourselves in our screwdriver which should be enough to get us through this it's just we've been we've been really hurting on a weapon supply for a while we need our point or two in maintenance I don't do burns in general. Like, you can, you can still do burns. Like, they work. I just, I personally don't do burns. It's not like any moral objection or anything like that. I just don't like the way the terrain gets absolutely demolished by it, and it's so easy for them to get out of control where it spreads and destroys buildings and loot and all that. Yeah, that's fine. There's a lot of people who like doing the burns. That's fine. Like I, said, I don't have a problem with burns. I just personally don't do them. 
Like, if I get to the point I need to do burns, I'll just lower the zombie population. I've seen so many people who, they're like, I'm so excited to go into prison, we're going to draw out all these zombies, we're going to do a burn, and then one of the zombies just walks back to the prison, it's like, well, the prison's on fire, we're just going to leave because the prison's, the prison's done. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff you can do. It's just, like I said, it's very easy for fire to get out of control very easily. Yep. Alright, I think we're being forced to back out at this point. We're getting pretty close to tired. I need to rest. These stupid zombies have pushed us away from resting in our chair. Um... I'm probably going to have to forage for weapons. Oh, we got a group of zombies starting to move up towards these barracks we've been staying at. I'm just hoping we don't get in a position that we're forced to, um, to back out of what we're doing here and over to another set of houses. Like, if it happens, it happens. But it would be inconvenient because it'd more than likely delay us from being able to push into town. Well, one of the things you got to watch is so many of the warehouses don't even have tools anymore. So many of the warehouses just have um, a whole bunch of food in them. I, we, we should kill this group here. Like, you don't want to spend time killing this group, but they're like, we're sleeping here, they're right there. We really should just get rid of them to be on the safe side. Let's check the other side of the building just since we see them wandering around the area. Make sure we don't have, like, we go in there and then they smash through the window and then we don't have a safe place to sleep. Um, the range on the alarms is pretty small to being he heard, as I recall. So it's not like it doesn't work, it's just, it's tricky to get it to do anything particularly meaningful. Um, but I do believe the engineering and all that, you can actually make like proper alarm clocks and all that that are much louder. Oh, Medivent, don't you dare screw me right now. Uh, we're going to have to potentially reposition back to 
where we were previously because I'm out of water again and we can't get water here. We're doing that now actually. And the reason I went through that is I'm expecting zombies to come from this direction potentially with a gunshot. Um, we probably shouldn't be doing this the way I'm doing it, but we are going back tonight because my hope is we'll get there, it'll be kind of late-ish, we'll go to sleep, and we'll wake up, it'll be sun. You know, like sunny and all that again. Um, I'm gonna pull up my map, give me one moment. Okay, we just keep going northeast. Um, and those maps are not mods, that's the base game now. And we are concerning our stamina because we've been running into zombies a lot of times when we're going this way. Just a couple here and there. Um, enough we don't want to find ourselves like heavily exerted and then getting into a fight. Not so much that's like big packs of 10 causing us problems. Um, I'm a little concerned about that meta event. I don't know where it's dragged the zombies, which direction it does. So we'll figure that out. Thank you so much for the follow, Debeat Cooper. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, pull out the map again, see if we're far enough east yet. Just a little farther east, and then we can cut northeast. I got a zombie down here, strolling off somewhere. Oh yeah, it has been super super hype watching just how many people are getting into the game now you're seeing a lot of big name streamers and all that streaming it as well it's like it's gonna do nothing but good for the community okay so it looks like the meta event is drawing the zombies southeast which works out for us because that should take it away from pretty much all the places we want it Hmm. So the issue I have as a concern right now is we don't have a good position with water to help us out. We're burning out of our food fast. We can't carry much water with us at the moment. And all of that is concerning. So part of me feels like, not that we give up the push that we're making on Akron, but rather we try and find ourselves another location to base from for pushing in Akron, because the barracks don't have water. And while they're close, they don't have water. So maybe we backtrack, follow the road, see if we can't find a farmhouse or two, get ourselves some more food, maybe some more weapons, um, and then we start pushing on Akron again. 
Right, we got a couple zombies on this field. I'm going to go ahead and kill them because this is too close to home. Alright, I'm um, going to be bringing up my map one more time, so bright screen coming, just as a forewarning. Okay, so we're a little far north still, or, or west. So we're going to keep going a little bit farther east, and then we're going to cut into all these trees. Um, this is going to be a dangerous night, because we are cutting through these trees in the dark. Which, during the day, in a pinch I can just shove the zombies out of the way because I'll see them coming. Um, I do have a filter on OBS that makes the gamma about 15-20% brighter for the stream than it is for me, which means night is freaking dark for me. So there is a good chance if a zombie is wearing like all black, I will just face plant right into them and die in the forest. So this kind of sucks and is kind of worrying, but I mean, we're dehydrating. We need to get home and to sleep. You never know when the next meta event is going to drag stuff on us, so we're just Gonna try and make it work as best we can. And we know we've ditched at least one zombie in here after we ran to a group in here previously. We killed three of them, and there were four, and we never did figure out what happened to the fourth. Okay, we're almost back home, and this is the point where we have to start really being careful about the zombie we ditched. So we're just listening, and if we hear it, we just run and hope we just shove it out of the way. Cool. We are basically here. Doesn't mean we're home free. There could be a zombie looming in the area. We have been through here a lot. All right, we officially have the water turned off, so that sucks. Okay, so... I guess we go west, because we came from east originally. Yeah, we're already, we've almost already knocked out that whole sink, so... We're at that point we're going to have to reposition and then we'll push for Ekron when we can. Really? A bunch of zombies on this dirt road now? Well, I mean, it's not a bunch, it's two. Ah! <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a thought. I'm down to like canned veggies, which don't do much for hunger. Now, I do believe there's a couple of buildings over here somewhere. We didn't kill the zombie. This is a pre-existing corpse. We'll peek at it. Sometimes you can find good stuff on them. Usually it's garbage. Garbage. But um, if I recall, there's fields to the north, a farmhouse to the west, and then southwest there might be another building. Like, like, we'll go west, and then there'll be a road that goes southwest. So I think we keep going west and see if that farmhouse has anything for us. Because my hope is, again, we'll find, like, you know, a couple of shovels or, or something we can fight with. Because right now we are we are dying for weapons here. We got a hand fork, a screwdriver, a pan I've been saving, and a backup screwdriver and a pair of scissors. So technically five weapons, but really the pan's probably technically the best weapon and it's pretty garbage. Oh, there's water right there. Huh. It's not the river, I don't think. Is this the river? Am I just confused where we are now? This looks like the river. Yeah, it sure looks like the river. I think I'm completely disoriented where I am on the map. We're going to check these cars and then I'm going to pull up my map and see what's going on. I think I'm farther north than I thought I was. reading in our map. Just for future reference, do these have any gas? Gas and you. 
Yeah, I'm way north of where I think I am. This is not the way we want to go. Three, three units of gas there. Anything up there we care about? Nope. Yeah, because that's going to lead us directly to Riverside. Um, we don't have the weapons for that, so we don't want to go this way. Um, which just kind of sucks because we're definitely going to be cutting right through some woods and fields and all that, so I'm hoping it's mostly fields. Because I thought, oh, I was thinking from the barracks location, not from this this farmhouse cabin thing in the middle of the woods. Yeah, so we want to cut back across this way, and then try and uh, try and find our way to some of these farmhouses and all that. Because the issue, as I recall, is those farmhouses to the north by Riverside, while well, they're pretty okay, there was a crap ton of zombies there the last time I rolled through. Not not like high pop crap ton of zombies, but non-insignificant number of zombies. Now, like, if I found a car with gas and all that, that'd just solve all our problems. Oh, I should be checking these cars' radios for the emergency channel. I keep forgetting to do that. That's actually important. It is getting a little late for me, but what I think I'm probably going to do is I'm going to keep going up until we get to, like, into a place we can sleep again. Just, just till we get safe. Because these are the types of journeys that can potentially get ourselves killed. <laughs> oh, so what you're telling me is your character is having a, uh, a complete, complete colossal meltdown? Because that, to me, sounds like a complete colossal meltdown. About the only thing worse you could uh, you could add in there is that they're you know claustrophobic and or um, it's not xenophobic. What is the other one? Oh, I, should, I keep forgetting the name of it. Where where you're scared of open areas? Agoraphobic. Well, no, because the two things you're dealing with right there are a constant burden. So even if you solve your happiness, like, read a comic book and get your happiness back for a few seconds, it's just going to keep burning it off until you satisfy those needs. Yep, no, that's that's it, because it's, you know, you think about it, it's like, okay, this person's having a bad time, they read a book, it gives them, like, the tiniest pause in their fear and anguish, and then they look down at their shirt and they go, yep, still covered in blood, still, still need a little bit of smoky smokes. Welp. Yeah, I haven't, so I I don't know how much, like, because I don't take smoker, I never really have. No particular reason. I'm trying to remember, like, how often do you actually need to smoke a smoker? Like, how, like, how many cigarettes do you go through in a typical day keeping your character happy? Because I would say, generally speaking, I probably see 40 or so cigarettes on corpses a day. 
when we're killing a little over uh, 50 zombies a day. Three, maybe four? Okay. Yeah, so with the populations I'm fighting, it doesn't seem like either the lighters or the cigarettes would be a problem particularly. That said, this is not conducive of a normal run a person would do. Yeah, now lighters and matches are more rare than they were previously. But I do typically see, you know, at least two lighters and or matches probably a day. You know, well, I'll say one. But I do see them frequently enough that's like, okay, you know, we're probably fine. But again, my, my run I'm doing is not conducive of what I consider like normal behavior, like playing an apocalypse, because... We're getting so many zombies that, you know, we're, we're right about at the point where we're at 50 zombies a day on average, and we spend so much time wandering, yet we're still maintaining those numbers. Okay, here's Road. The question is, what part of the road are we even on at this point? Gonna just kill this zombie, then I'm gonna check my map again to try and get a figure of where we are. Because I have started, thanks to Pillow's Random Spawn Mod, I have started learning this middle area of the map at least a little bit. Okay, if this is where I think it is, there's, um... To the north, there's a couple of fields that have, like, the gravel-style roads to it. Don't want those. Don't care about those. Uh, and a really long hike from here, there is, um... I don't, I don't know if it's a barn? Like, there's, there's like, a farm property off of Gravel Road to the, uh, to the south? But I might check that out. And my hope is there won't be too many zombies between us. I'm also just hoping for some luck with some cars having at least either decent stuff in it or for the car to just plain be usable. If, if we can find a usable car, that would be absolutely amazing. Even if it's kind of a crap car. Alright, so these should lead to fields. That's just a satchel. I don't care about it. We are seeing groups here. Not big groups, but groups. Yeah, I want to say these just go to fields. I'm going to check because I'm not confident on that. It's been a while. Yeah, I think those are just field roads, if memory serves me correctly. So I want to deal with a bunch of zombies to not get anything as a reward on the other side. Oh, come on, don't have a bunch of zombies up here. This is the middle of freaking nowhere. 
Well, you don't mind fighting, but I want a reward at the end. Oh, 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 we got a reward. There's a reward right there. That guy, that guy right there, that guy right there. He's got a reward. Let's go. I'm, I'm just trying to pull him to not aggro more if we can help it, which is not going well because we're definitely just aggroing more. I'll just keep going this way. Drag him with us. Hmm, this is a lot of mistakes. Um, all right. Okay, you you seem to be a fast shuffler, so let's let's have you fast shuffle right on over into my life. Don't want to fight all the zombies. Like, why Why are there so many zombies walking this way? Like, there's migrations, but damn. Oh, crowbar. I'm going to miss you. I want that crowbar. But I don't want to fight 50 zombies for that crowbar. So I'm hoping I can just ditch these zombies, circle back, find them with the crowbar, kill it. You know, even if I have to kill a couple, that's fine. But where we got a whole bunch of stuff on it, I don't want that. Maybe we'll get lucky and only the zombies that were close behind us find. Think of the follow! Um, Astari, welcome to the stream. There's the crowbar. Uh, let's see if we can't get lucky and pull just the crowbar, one or two of them away. The guy in the gray sweater. Oh, do we have him? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Legendary pull right there. And let's be honest, it's mostly luck. But still, it's it's what I was hoping to make happen. Because now I get a good weapon. Well, I get a decent weapon. I didn't have to fight through a whole army of zombies to get it. Get on my back. Now, I don't really know where we are, so we're going to just uh, avoid that group and then go back to the southwest till we find the road. Actually... Northwest? Southwest? I don't know. I'm disoriented. We're going to just wander until we find something. You know, and slowly just dehydrate in the middle of nowhere. Maybe starve.
There's a big open area. I'm hoping a farm butts up to it. I don't know of many places on the map that there's a big open area this size that doesn't have farmland either on it or near it or attached to it or something like that. Uh, we got something over here. Um, okay, we have... Tool shed, maybe? Not seeing any zombies, which is always a good time. That dirt road probably just goes out to the fields, would be my guess. Yeah. That's still my guess, so I'm just going to go with it. I'll check the other direction, because if there's a tool shed here, I assume there's more than just a tool shed here. Okay, pickaxe, good time. Leaf rake, good time. Trowel, yes, I will have it. Don't care about that crap. Okay, still good. I'm switching the leaf rate because it's probably going to break super fast. Uh, okay, we got a really tiny house. But I want to check the car first. Okay, there's more fenced off up here. Grill over there, all right. Cool. No way impossible. Like, no way I can carry that. And it's a wreck, so it's not worth looking for the key for it. All right, so we have ourselves a house here. Before we get too excited, let's make sure it's clear of zombies. And we have a zombie patrolling directly at us, so let's just deal with it now. group. I find it interesting how much the zombies are moving out here, around here because there's nothing here. for beginners is a good read. 
We can eat the pear right away. Ooh, excellent. We'll eat that ice cream right away too. No emergency channel, bummer. Grab our bowl. If I can make this, wait, we can probably make the saucepans work. All right, we're overweight now, but we got a book on us, so that's easily solved. Yep, as your uh, as your maintenance and strength and fitness and all that get up and your weapon skills get up, you'll end up just wiping through zombies much faster. The challenge is honestly, the only reason you have difficulty finding it is because you won't be able to loot all the bodies realistically. Not unless you're clever in how you deal with it to make it a little more manageable. That was weird that wasn't letting me grab that. Yep, and just trying to juggle and figure it all out. Yeah, I don't need to kill everything here. I just want to keep moving to the different houses. See what we can secure for ourselves. Yeah, so we got a house there. There's a dead end up here, so we can check out this house. And like, I really should go to bed already. And I probably should go to bed in real life already. But I want to just keep checking the houses until we're right about tired and then we'll stop or if we get too much stuff oh that cot we can bring that cot with us places to sleep that'd be good
All right, zombie. Go ahead and break the window. Your time to shine. Meanwhile, I guess I'll just try and go through this window. Um, generally speaking, I find the sawed-off are better in the sense of doing more damage, but they are much louder. So just one thing to keep in mind. I, I can't realistically carry those bullets with me. I want to carry those bullets with me, but I can't realistically do so. Grab the pen to mark my map. Well, this house is a bust. Let's see if I can just walk around and not fight them. Because I don't want to stop for stamina. I have a feeling if I pull out my, um, hand fork then uh we'll just be you know big heavily overburned because of the pickaxe um and i looked at the cots as like oh i should take that as like right we're basically already on the cusp of overburned to a unsafe level maybe we just we'll deal without it Finishing out this group, might as well. Alright, we got an actual garage here. Uh, I don't see anything we want. We got zo we're, Okay, we're gonna have to kill zombies here from the looks of it. We got a bunch of groups swarm around here. Um. Hmm. So the possibility is that garage might hold a generator for us. And then, you know, the house is a house. It can have all sorts of good stuff.
All right, they spread out a bit. We might be able to sneak in here again. We don't know what's up here, though, so we might just be walking into a group. All right, there is a group up front. I want to break that door down. I think we start killing this group over here. Okay, they do have a fire pit. That would be nice. I was actually thinking, don't I have the tools to just take apart the door between the welding mask and all that? We should keep clearing. Let's not let's not be greedy and get ourselves killed for no reason. We're, we're not in a rush. We don't need to go in there immediately. We can kill the zombies, do it safe, do it sound, do it correctly. Just trying to clear out this group, and then I hope we can just sneak in here. Uh, we'll probably call it night at that point, because we're getting tired. And then I am IRL getting tired, so getting ready to wrap up. Once we do wrap up, what I'll do is I'll find someone for us to raid. Uh, someone else playing Project Zomboid, keep moving forward. Don't jump both fences. That puts you guys closer together. I want you all split up super far apart.
don't have a house alarm. It's a dangerous window for us to do the thing because there's zombies real close to it. Okay, there's still that big group of zombies directly outside, but I think we're okay for the moment. Let's sleep in the other room. Let's not sleep in this room where we can hear the zombies. Let's sleep in this little teeny tiny room away from them. Don't hear any exploding windows. Right, we are having a nightmare, which is fine. Um, so I do think this is where we're going to stop, so I'm going to pause.